In this video, we'll discuss about uh, how to write comment lines in uh, C language. So when we discuss about comment lines, there are two types of comment lines. One is uh, single line comment. The other one is multi line comments. So we have to use a double slash whenever you want to write a single line comment. Okay. For example, I'm just giving this is a single line comment. Okay. But whenever you want to write multi line comments, so then you have to use like this slash star. Okay. And here this is a multi line comment. Okay. Again, you have to close using star slash. So any text that you write in between uh, slash star and star slash will be ignored by the compiler. Okay. So let me give you an example with the program. Okay. So first I'm including the header file stdio.h and inside the main function I'm just uh, giving an example to display. Okay. So I'm trying to display hello world. Okay. So to display as output, we have to use a printf statement. Okay, printf. Now I'll display hello space world. Okay. So let's run this code and see the result. You can see same hello world is produced as output. Okay. So this is the single line comment that will describe what action that we are performing. Okay. So here I'm trying to display hello world, the same thing I have written here. So you have to basically use comment lines in such a way that whenever you want to explain about one particular function or functionality, then you can start expressing the same with the help of comment lines. Okay. So let us suppose I'm trying to use uh, multi line comments. Okay. So in that case, how I can write the same example is, uh, for example, okay, the below code will display text, okay, and it's hello world, okay. So this is how you can write multi-line comments. For example, if you're trying to use only double slash for writing a multi-line comments, uh, then compiler will throw an error here. Okay. Why? Because uh, this is not considered as part of the comment line. That is multi-line comment line. So for multi-line comment line, you use slash star and write out the text and then followed by star slash. Okay. Now, whenever I execute this, you will see this result like this. Okay. Now let us discuss about uh, variables in C. So generally, whenever you want to store some data, okay, you will start creating some variables in programming, right? So let us suppose uh, I want to store an integer value. So let us create uh, an integer variable and store that data, for example, uh, 100. Okay. Now let us display the same data here. X is equal to percentage D is the control string associated with integer. And then I'm displaying X value. So what this exactly perform is uh, first, I'm creating a variable called X and storing a value of 100 inside this X and then displaying X value. Okay, so let's execute this and see the result. You can see x is equal to 100. For example, if I want to display the address of x, you can also display the address of the x. Because every variable will have a memory location and the memory location will have an address. Okay, so percentage u slash n address of x. So ampersand is the symbol used for representing address. 
so address of x let's execute this you can observe x is a variable and its value is 100 and this address of x is this one okay now similarly whenever you want to create uh, a floating point variable you can create let us suppose uh, float y is equal to okay suppose 7.86 so whenever you want to store uh, this decimal values you have to make use of uh, floating point variable and store it okay so y is the floating point variable and I am storing 7.86 inside this variable y. Okay. So let us display this y value. For example, printf y is equal to. So for floating point values, uh, we have to use control string as percentage f. Okay. And then display this y value. Later, now you can use address to display its corresponding address so address of y is equal to percentage u slash n address of y okay so let's run this code and see the result so you can observe x is equal to 100 address of x is this one and then y is equal to 7.86 uh, double zero double zero address of y is uh, okay this one so this is how you can access address and the content of the variable directly. Okay. Now, for example, if I want to store a character, then I can store with the help of uh, character data type and create a variable under character data type and start storing any character. Let us suppose a uh, capital A is the character that I wanted to store. Now, similarly, I will display this particular character. Okay saying that uh, ch is equal to and the control string associated with the uh, character data type is percentage c and start displaying this one ch okay now you can display the address of ch address of ch is equal to percentage u slash n address of ch now let's run this code and see the result. So you can observe uh, this is x value, then address of x is displayed, later y value, address of y is displayed and then ch is equal to a and then address of ch is displayed. Okay. So this is how it will work. Okay. Now let us see the process of uh, installing dev c++. Uh, so enter install dev c++ in Google search bar and you will get to see this type of links available and you can click on one of these links for example dev c++ download from sourceforge.net so just click on that link and you will see this okay and you can start downloading now your download is going to start so you can see here and once it comes you can double click and install i have already installed so i'm stopping this process okay in this video we'll discuss about uh, conditional statements in c so first let me classify what are different conditional statements available in C? So first one is uh, if statement and second one is uh, if else statement then comes uh, third one which is nested if statement And next else if ladder this is else if ladder and finally switch statement okay so else if ladder and switch statement are considered as multi-way selection statements 
so these are all multi way selection statements okay and if else is considered as two way selection statement so this is a two way selection statement okay and nested if uh, it depends on how many conditions that you are writing okay and in if statement uh, generally there is only one way so if the condition is true then block of statements will be executed otherwise not okay so let's see in detail about uh, these statements uh, starting with the if statement so let us consider if statement corresponding syntax okay so first you have to consider if followed by conditional expression so if this conditional expression is evaluated to true then statement block will be executed suppose if this conditional expression is evaluated to false then control will not transfer inside the block it will it will be directly executing statement x over here okay so let us generate a flow chart for this you can see first conditional expression is evaluated okay and this conditional expression can be evaluated to either true or false so let us suppose if this condition expression is evaluated to true then statement block will be executed so statement block will be executed so after executing statement block now the control is transferred to execute statement x so control will be executing statement x let us suppose if the conditional expression is evaluated to false then control is directly transferred to execute this statement x okay so let me show you an example here so let us suppose uh, i am writing a sample program here first uh, include the header file hash include stdio.h and then inside the main function let us consider uh, block of statements uh, okay so consider uh, int n is equal to 5 okay now let me write this uh, if condition here if n greater than 0 associated statement i am writing here okay so you can start opening block like this and writing printf n value is positive okay so this is the block now let's see how this block of statements will be executed here so first it will create a variable called n and it will store value of 5 inside it and then we are checking the conditional expression 5 greater than 0 condition is evaluated to true so control is transferred inside this if block and it will execute this statement so in the output it will display n value is positive n value is positive okay just like this okay so now let us consider the next one which is a if else statement in case of if else uh, we have two blocks either of this block will be executed so let me write the syntax of if else statement okay so if conditional expression now this is statement block 1 if this condition is false it will go to the else block it is statement block 2 okay So let's see 
how this if else statement is going to work. First, it will check the conditional expression. If suppose this conditional expression is evaluated to true, in that case, statement block 1 will be executed and later control is transferred to execute statement x. For example, if this conditional expression is evaluated to false, okay, in that case, control is transferred directly to execute the else block containing statement block 2. After executing either of these blocks, control is transferred to execute statement x. Okay. So let me show you its corresponding uh, flow chart here. First, it will execute this conditional expression. And this conditional expression can be either true or false. For example, if this conditional expression is evaluated to true, then statement block 1 will be executed. Statement block 1 will be executed. If suppose this conditional expression is evaluated to false, then statement block 2 will be executed. So after executing either of these blocks, control is transferred to execute statement x. Okay. So after executing either of these blocks, control is transferred directly to execute statement x. So you can see the flow here like this. Okay. Now let us uh, consider a sample program here in order to check whether the given number is even or odd using if else block. Okay. So first, uh, include the header file and then consider uh, main function. So inside the main function, let us uh, take a variable and its value as 7, for example. Now in order to check uh, whether n value is uh, even or odd, we can write if else condition here. If n mod 2 double equal to 0, in that case, uh, you can print even. Okay. So print f even. Else, if the number is not even number, then obviously it is odd number. So in the else block, you can write uh, odd. Okay. So whenever there is a single statement inside a block, you don't need to keep a start of block, end of block to write one statement. By default, one statement will be supported as part of the block. Okay. So let's see how this program is going to work. First, we are creating a variable called n and its value is 7. n is a variable and its value is 7. Now we are checking whether n is even or odd that is 7 mod 2 double equal to 0 condition true or false so this condition is false okay so obviously it will enter into the else block since this condition expression is evaluated to false it will move the control inside the else block and inside the else block there is a printf statement to print odd so in the output it will display odd Okay, so this is how it will work. In this video, I'll explain how to write nested if statement. So let me give you the general syntax of the nested if statement. So first we write the condition like uh, if conditional expression 1. Okay, and corresponding statement block. So inside this statement block, you can write another conditional expression. If this is true, again, you can have another block of statements to be executed. Okay. So this is writing an if statement inside another if statement considered as nested if statement. And we can also call it as uh, nested if else if you are including else block. 
okay let us suppose you want to write else block also here so this is a else block and again now in the inner if block okay so you are adding else to it so then uh, it looks like uh, nested if else okay so let's see an example quickly related to nested if else or nested if statement so let's try to find maximum among three given numbers maximum among three given numbers okay so first uh, we have to consider a uh, header file now inside the main function let us take uh, three variables like uh, x comma y comma z now we will prompt the user to enter any three values so that we can find out maximum among these three numbers okay so let us prompt saying enter any three values okay and using scanner statement you can read these values like percentage d percentage d percentage d address of x comma address of y comma address of z so like this we can read all these three values now in order to find out the maximum among three given numbers i'll take a sample variable called max in order to place the maximum value inside this variable called max so let us write this condition if x greater than y if x greater than y also if suppose x is greater than z so this clearly indicates uh, x is greater than y as well as x is greater than z so you can write max is equal to x you can write max is equal to x if suppose this condition is evaluated to false then inside the else block you can write max is equal to z so what does this exactly represents when x is greater than y and also x is greater than z you are saying max is equal to x suppose if x is greater than y but x is greater than z is false in that case it will go to the else block it represents z is greater than x which means max is equal to z okay now we will consider the else block here inside the else block again we can check so this is an else block representing y is greater than x okay so inside this else block we can write the if condition as uh, y is greater than z okay so this represents max is equal to y suppose if this condition is false uh, then you can write max is equal to z so y greater than z is false which means z is greater than y okay it represents max is equal to z so finally after obtaining this maximum value you can just print this maximum value okay saying that maximum value is okay percentage d slash n you can display max value here now let's run this code and see the result enter any three values i am entering three values here 18 okay 15 and then 17 so you can see maximum value is 18 here so in the same way i'll change uh, the maximum value position like 17 15 18 now you can see again maximum value is 18 okay so let us suppose i want to include some negative values and also zero and positive value so i'll write like this 0 minus 5 8 you can see maximum value is 8 so this is how you can obtain the maximum value from this code and this is an example of uh, nested if nested if else related okay next one is else if ladder so in case of uh, else if ladder 
you have to include clearly multiple conditions okay so how do you write multiple conditions one after the other just like a ladder you can build multiple conditions for example this is if conditional expression one you will write some block of statements inside it now you have another conditional expression to be checked so in that case you can write else if conditional expression two again corresponding block of statements okay and similarly we can write multiple conditions here if you have one more condition you can write else if conditional expression 3 again corresponding statement block and finally you can write uh, an else block here if suppose all these above conditional expressions are evaluated to false then control directly enters and executes the code inside this else block okay for example if the conditional expression one is evaluated to true then the block of statements which are written here gets executed okay suppose if this conditional expression is evaluated to false and uh, control will be immediately transferred to execute conditional expression two suppose if this is evaluated to true then this block of statements will be executed okay suppose if this is evaluated to false then control is transferred to execute condition expression 3 and if suppose this is evaluated to true then this block of statements will be executed okay let us consider if all the conditional expressions are evaluated to false in that case it will execute else block okay so let us see an example which is uh, finding the maximum among three given numbers with the help of else if ladder okay first i am reading uh, x y z values now i'll implement the same concept of finding maximum among three given numbers with the help of uh, else if ladder okay so first we'll write the condition saying that x is greater than y also x is greater than z okay if x is greater than y logical end x is greater than z if these two conditions are evaluated to true then x should be placed inside variable called max so max is equal to x okay for example if this condition is evaluated to false then it will go to the else if condition where you can check this y is greater than z logical end y greater than x okay then you can write max is equal to y and finally in the else block you can directly specify max is equal to z because if x is greater than y and x greater than z is false also y greater than z and y greater than x is false then it represents maximum value is z so once you obtain the maximum value you can display this maximum value with the help of a printf statement okay so maximum value is percentage d slash n max okay we're displaying the maximum value here so let's run this code and see the result enter any three values i'm entering different values like 90 50 70 you can see maximum value is 90. let's execute again so this time I have given 65, 43, 78. Maximum value is 78. Okay. So similarly, I'll take uh, 65. This time uh, 99 and then 33. Maximum value is 99. So like this, it will always identify the maximum value because we have implemented finding maximum value with the help of uh, else if ladder by writing correct conditions here okay so whenever x is greater than other two numbers you are taking max equal to x if suppose y is greater than other two numbers then max is equal to y if suppose x is not greater and y is not greater compared to other two numbers then obviously z will be the maximum value right and that is taken into max variable and we are printing max value okay 
In this video, we'll discuss about while loop in C. So first, uh, let us consider the basic syntax of writing a while loop. So its corresponding syntax will be just like this. While conditional expression just before the conditional expression, you will be specifying the initial value of the loop variable, or you can say it as uh, initialization. And this is a uh, statement block. Okay. Or you can write a uh, list of statements here. And then followed by the update statement. So this is the while loop, okay? And we can call this while loop as a entry control loop because it will check the conditional expression first. If the condition is satisfied or condition is true, then only it will allow the control to execute this block of statements containing one of the statement as update statement, okay? Now let us see its corresponding uh, flow chart. Okay. So first it should be initialization according to the flow of execution. You can see initialization is done. And after the initialization it should be conditional expression and this is going to evaluate this conditional expression so if this conditional expression is evaluated to true then the block of statements will be executed so you can observe the statements one by one will be executed and after that, update statement will be executed. Update statement. And after execution of the update statement, now control will be transferred back to this conditional expression. Okay. Suppose if you are considering a statement X, which is outside this uh, while loop, let us consider this is a statement X. So once this conditional expression is evaluated to false, then the control comes out of this loop and it will execute this statement X. It will execute statement X. Okay. So this is how it will execute isn't it? So whenever conditional expression is evaluated to false, then directly it will go out of this while loop and executes a statement X. Okay. So let me consider an example here. Suppose I'm considering a int i is equal to five. And writing this while loop i less than or equal to 10 printf percentage d slash t i value and also incrementing value of i by 1. If you see statements like this while writing a while loop programs so primarily you can observe uh, this is actually representing the initialization part okay so this is indicating initialization of the loop variable and this is representing the conditional expression okay so if this conditional expression is evaluated to true, then only the block of statements will be executed. And inside this while loop, we have multiple statements here. 
okay so this statement is one of the statement or okay you can write a sequence of statements inside the while loop but if you consider this statement it is going to update or modify the loop variable so this comes under update statement it comes under update statement inside this while loop okay now let us consider quickly uh, what will be the output produced by this particular program okay so first uh, initialization is done so then what happens so once the initialization is done then uh, it will consider a memory location and it will store value of i as 5 inside this memory location now we are writing the while conditional expression here while i less than or equal to 10 which is uh, 5 less than or equal to 10 condition will be evaluated to true so immediately it is going to print value of i value of i is how much 5 will be displayed and after that i plus plus so in the next iteration i value will be incremented by 1 so i value will become 6 and if you look at the conditional expression it will be 6 less than or equal to 10 condition is again evaluated to true and it will display value of i as 6 and then i plus plus so this time i value will become 7 okay now in the next iteration you can see 7 less than or equal to 10 again condition is evaluated to true it will display value of i as 7 and then i plus plus so i value gets modified to 8 here and again if you look at the conditional expression 8 less than or equal to 10 condition becomes true so it will display value of i and then i plus plus so this time i value gets modified to 9 and now look at the conditional expression 9 less than or equal to 10 condition will be evaluated to true and it will display value of i as 9 and then i plus plus i value will become 10 here 10 less than or equal to 10 condition will become true and it will display 10 also then i plus plus i value okay you can see already current value of i is 10 and we are able to display i value as 10 then i plus plus i value will become 11 11 less than or equal to 10 condition will become false so the block of statements will not be executed and finally the output will be 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so this is how it will display the output okay now let me give you a program okay so you just find out this uh, code snippet what is the output produced by this particular code snippet so consider i is equal to one, 5 here okay and look at the condition while i greater than 1 printf percentage d slash t i and then i minus minus okay so if you consider this particular code snippet then let's see how this is going to work i is equal to 5 and you can observe uh, variable i containing value will be how much 5 now writing the conditional expression i greater than 1 that is 5 greater than 1 condition true or false condition becomes true and it will display value of i okay so in the output you will see value of i 5 will be displayed and later i minus minus value of i will be decremented by 1 which means i value will become 4 now we can see 4 greater than 1 condition becomes true and it will display value of i as 4 then i minus minus again value of i gets decremented by 1 so i value becomes 3 now 3 greater than 1 condition becomes true and it will display value of i as 3 then again i minus minus so this time i value becomes 2 now condition will be 2 greater than 1 which is again true okay so it will display 2 in the next iteration uh, i value okay you can see 
i value becomes 1 right one greater than one condition will become false so control will come out of this while loop and the final output will be 5 4 3 2 clear so this is how we tend to write uh, programs using while loop in this video we'll write an example for while loop in c so let us consider uh, printing numbers from 1 to 10 using while loop a simple example primarily so let's get started first we have to include the respective header file stdio.h and inside the main function first we need to consider a loop variable in order to iterate through different loop iterations so for this purpose i am taking a loop variable called i and let us iterate this loop variable starting from 1 to 10 okay so let us consider i is equal to 1 you can observe in this statement i have taken a loop variable called i and also performed initialization of that variable i is equal to 1 now let us iterate and print this value of i in each iteration i less than or equal to 10 we can print value of i here so this is going to be i is equal to percentage d slash n i and then i plus plus we are incrementing value of i here okay now let us run this code and see the result So you can observe here, uh, it is going to produce result printing i values from 1 to 10, i equal to 1, i equal to 2, i equal to 3 and so on, i equal to 10. So for example, if you want to print all these values in a single line, then you can write percentage %d slash t and you can display these values uh, just like this. Okay. You can also make use of percentage uh, WD concept. Okay. So, which is uh, I'm using here percentage uh, 4D. It will create four spaces, and uh, in that, one space is occupied by the digit. Okay. So, you can observe just like this. Okay. Now let us suppose uh, if I modify this value to 100 instead of 10 then you can observe the result starting from 1 to 100, 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 100 it is going to display. Okay. For example, if I want to display only even numbers in the range of 1 to 100. Okay. So in that case, I'll write a if condition here. If i mod to w equal to 0, then I'll display only even numbers, right? Okay. So let's run this code and see the result. You can see 2 is divisible by 2, 4 is divisible by 2, which is representing all even numbers 2 to 100. Okay just like this now we'll write another program using while loop uh, in order to find out the sum of digits in the given number so let us suppose the given number is taken in a variable called n and i want to extract digit by digit and i'll basically store that digit uh, in variable called d okay and then now uh, finding the sum is done with the help of variable called sum initially i'll consider variable sum equal to zero okay now let us prompt the user to enter value of n okay enter value of n so once user enters the value of n 
then we can actually store this value okay percentage the address of n okay now we can check whether this value is uh, greater than 0 or not if the value of n is greater than 0 then you can start extracting the last digit from the given number so this can be written as d is equal to n mod 10 so once you extract the last digit then you add this particular digit to the sum which is initially 0 you can write it as sum is equal to sum plus d then remove the last digit from the number okay so because you have already added that last digit to the sum so now you have to remove removal can be done with the help of uh, division with 10 okay so consider the same number and divide it with 10 because this is an integer division it will remove the last digit okay so once value of n becomes 0 it will come out of this while loop isn't it okay so finally we can print some value okay sum of digits is percentage d some value you can display just like this so let's run this code and see the result enter value of n so 123 is the value of n i am entering so its corresponding sum of digits is 6 because 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 okay similarly let us consider another number like 254 okay this will give you sum of digits as 11 2 plus 5 plus 4 is 11 okay just like this and sometimes they will also ask you to find the product of digits in a given number okay suppose if they are asking also to find the product of digits in a given number so in such case you have to similarly consider another variable like uh, product is equal to 1 initially and perform product operation with each digit that is extracted from the given number so product star d and finally you have to display this uh, product result also which is uh, product of digits is percentage d slash n product okay so let's run this code and see the result you can see enter value of n this time and entering uh, 234 you can observe some of the digits is 9 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9 and product of the digits 2 into 3 into 4 which is 24 okay so this is how you can find out sum of digits and product of digits in the given number next one is uh, for loop for loop is also another type of loop under entry control loops where the conditional expression will be evaluated at the entrance itself and if the condition is true then only the block of statements will be evaluated okay so let's see the general syntax uh, or general format of the for loop so we can write like this for initialization then conditional expression and then update statement and inside this for loop you can write list of statements or you can write a statement block here okay so let's see how this uh, execution happens uh, with the help of uh, a flow chart here so similar to the while loop uh, because both these loops are entry control loops uh, so first it will check the initialization or first it will execute the initialization part so 
you can see initialization will be done and after initialization it will check the conditional expression okay if this conditional expression is evaluated to true then block of statements will be executed so which is nothing but uh, statement block and after the statement block it will execute the update statement it will execute update statement and once the update statement is done it will go back to the conditional expression if this conditional expression is evaluated to false then it will come out of this loop let us suppose there is a statement outside the loop called a statement x then uh, once the conditional expression is evaluated to false uh, it will come out of the loop and it will execute this statement x okay just like this so this is how the flow of execution happens for for loop now let us uh, write a simple program in order to just display numbers from uh, 1 to 5 okay so using for loop display numbers from 1 to 5 using for loop okay so first uh, we need to include the header file And then inside this main function, let us uh, consider a loop variable called i. So I'll consider int i. Now using for loop, you can iterate and display value of i. So i is equal to 1, i less than or equal to 5, i plus plus. Okay now you can start displaying value of i so this is going to be percentage d i okay you can make use of tab space uh, to display okay so you can observe we are trying to display the numbers from 1 to 5 isn't it so that's why i have taken initial value as i is equal to 1 i'm iterating i value up to 5 i less than or equal to 5 and displaying it incrementing value of i from one iteration to another iteration okay so this is going to produce the output like this so one two three four five okay now in this video we'll discuss about how to write uh, a program in order to compute factorial of a given number using for loop in c okay so let's get started in order to compute uh, factorial of a number using loops so generally let us suppose if you are computing a uh, 4 factorial okay so you can compute this as simply 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 or you can also compute like this 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 so similarly if I consider n factorial computation so this should be computed as 1 into 2 into so on into n minus 1 into n okay using which you can compute n factorial clear so let us uh, consider a variable here int n so now we need to compute factorial of this particular n okay so for this purpose, uh, we have to prompt the user to enter the value of n. And once uh, user enters the value of n, you can store it inside the variable called n. So it can be written as percentage the address of n. Okay. Now to iterate from 1 to n, we require a variable, which is a loop variable. 
I'm using the loop variable as i and using for loop you can write i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to n i plus plus and start computing factorial of this particular number okay and again to store the result we require another variable let us suppose uh, fact is a variable which I will use to store the result so fact equal to 1 and now we can perform fact equal to fact into i okay so why because uh, every time we are considering uh, i value okay starting from 1 up to n okay we can perform fact equal to fact into i so first time one will be multiplied with fact and the result is stored in this variable again okay and in the next iteration i value 2 will be multiplied and stored inside variable fact and so on like this up to n value it will perform similarly okay and finally once you get the result inside the variable fact you just need to display this result okay factorial result is and you can start displaying this factorial result which is stored inside variable fact so let's execute this enter value of n so i have taken value of n as 5 now the result is factorial result is 120 okay similarly let us compute uh, factorial of 3 so you can see 3 into 2 into 1 is 6 okay so this is how you can write for loop uh, in order to compute factorial of the given number okay now let us suppose this code of computing the factorial of the given number using for loop is given and now they want you to write the same program using while loop okay so what changes that you are going to do here if you want to perform the same action using while loop okay so mainly you have to remove this for loop and start making use of while loop here so in the while loop okay you will write only conditional expression so this initialization must be done earlier right so you can write here i is equal to 1 and then the same condition conditional expression i am copying and pasting here while loop okay and uh, we have to keep this statement inside the while loop okay and to proceed to the next iteration value of i must be incremented by one so it should be i plus plus it will increment value of i by one okay so this is how we are going to make use of this while loop where i value is going to iterate starting from 1 to n okay in every iteration we are multiplying okay by writing fact equal to fact into i and incrementing i value by 1 okay so let's uh, run this code and see the result enter value of n okay so i am entering value of n as 4 and you can see factorial result is 24 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 is 24 okay so that is what we are able to display and solve the same task using while loop instead of for loop now we'll discuss about uh, do while loop and uh, this do while loop is uh, different from the other two loops uh, because this comes under exit control loop it means uh, while exiting the loop it will check the conditional expression okay so let us see the general format or syntax of this uh, do while loop so we can write uh, initialization here this is initialization part do and inside this while loop do while loop we can write uh, sequence of statements okay or we can say multiple statements one by one and one of the statements should be update statement so that it will update the loop variable which is written inside this conditional expression 
okay and clearly this do while loop corresponding uh, flowchart will be different compared to the entry control loops so let us generate its corresponding uh, flowchart here so first uh, initialization will be done this is going to be initialization part and after initialization so it will execute uh, statements okay directly it will in enter inside this do while loop and it will execute the statement or sequence of statements and also it will execute uh, the update statement which is written inside this do while loop and after this update statement now it will check the conditional expression okay now this is going to check the conditional expression so you can observe uh, conditional expression should be evaluated which will produce either true or false suppose if the conditional expression is evaluated to true in that case uh, it will execute entire loop of statements again suppose if this conditional expression is evaluated to false then immediately it will go outside the loop okay so let us suppose we have uh, some statement x here so once the conditional expression is evaluated to false then it will execute this statement x okay this is how it will work okay so let us write uh, a simple program here or just uh, a code snippet which involves do while loop so let me consider like this uh, int i is equal to 1 do i'm trying to print value of i here so this is percentage d slash t i value and then i value is uh, getting incremented by 1 while i less than 4 okay so let us see the corresponding output for this particular code snippet first i value is 1 Yes or no? It will create a variable i and consider its corresponding value as 1. Now, inside this do while loop, it will print value of i which is 1. Then i plus plus i value will become how much? 2. So, you can see here uh, 2 less than 4. It will check the conditional expression 2 less than 4. Condition is true. So again, it will enter into this uh, do while loop and it will print value of i as 2. Then i plus plus, this time i value will become 3. And if you look at this while conditional expression 3 less than 4, condition will become true or not? Condition is true. So again, it will execute the block of statement and it will display i value as 3. Then i plus plus, this time i value will become 4. Okay. 4 less than 4 condition will become false. So the corresponding output will be 1, 2, 3. Okay. This is how do while loop will work. Now consider the next program which is uh, finding the sum of numbers from 1 to n. And let us implement this using do while loop. So first uh, we will consider i is equal to 1. Okay. And then also we have to consider a variable called n and the result should be stored inside a variable like sum equal to 0 initially. Now I will prompt the user to basically enter value of n. Enter value of n. Okay. So once user enters this value of n using scanf statement we can store this value percentage d address of n 
okay so now let us compute this sum of numbers from 1 to n using do while loop so here i'll write the condition do while suppose uh, i value is uh, less than n okay then this action can be performed yes or no so less than or equal to n now sum is equal to sum plus i in every iteration we have to update this i value which is i equal to i plus 1 or you simply you can write uh, i plus plus and finally the sum is available inside a variable called sum you can print the result okay sum is percentage d slash n and you can display the sum value okay so let us run this code and see the result i'll consider n value as 4 and you can observe sum is 10 so this is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 which will give you the sum value as 10 right okay so this is how we can make use of do while loop in order to perform any task so now we'll discuss about uh, concept of uh, functions so in case of uh, functions basically we use function in order to perform one particular task so let us suppose uh, I want to calculate tax so then uh, instead of uh, calculating tax for each and every employee in the organization we are going to implement a function called tax function and we are going to call this tax function whenever it is required or needed okay like for employee one you can use this function for employee two and so on for each and every employee in the organization you can just uh, call this function and obtain the functionality okay so how can we define this function is uh, function is nothing but block of statements uh, which are used to perform a task okay block of statements and you can use this block of statements in order to perform a task okay so when uh, when we write a function okay there are several components inside the function like uh, for example function name okay so these are the different components of the function first one is uh, function prototype declaration second one is uh, function call third one is parameters function parameters And this function parameters are of two types. Uh, first one is actual parameters. And second one is formal parameters. And then function implementation or function definition. And in this function definition, again, we have uh, two parts. One is function header. The other one is function body. And next one is a return statement. So these are the different components of the 
function. So let us uh, consider an example of the function and uh, I'll identify these parts and explain using that example. Okay. So first, uh, starting with uh, header file. Okay. Generally, we include uh, stdio.h header file. And now let us implement a function so which can identify maximum value among two given numbers. So this is a function called find max function. Okay. And I am writing its corresponding function prototype declaration. And this find max function has to take parameters uh, as two integer values and identify the maximum among two given numbers. Okay. And this is considered as function prototype declaration. This is function prototype declaration. Now, I will consider the main function. So inside main function, I am taking two variables like uh, x is equal to 10, y is equal to 7. These are the two different variables. Now I want to print maximum among these two given numbers. Okay. So maximum is and here you can call this function. So name of the function is uh, find max function. So you can write this uh, find max function. So this is considered as function call. And pass these parameters like x comma y. Okay. So now this is the entire implementation of the main function. We need to implement uh, find max function. So here you can observe a function call. I have already done here. This is function call. Now we need to implement the function. And coming to function parameters, uh, actual parameter. So this x and y are considered as actual parameters. So actual parameters means the parameters that are mentioned in the function call are considered as actual parameters and then coming to formal parameters uh, whenever you implement a uh, find max function here you will specify some parameters to hold this actual parameter corresponding values uh, that is considered as formal parameters uh, now if I implement here int find max of so here we can take uh, int x comma int y these variable names can be same or it can be different compared to the actual parameter names so now inside this find max uh, function we are going to implement or identify which number is maximum so i will take a variable called max variable int max now we can check the condition if x is greater than y we can consider max is equal to x otherwise we can take max is equal to y so else we can write max is equal to y and finally we have to return the max value back to the calling function so this is a return statement return of max Now if you observe this uh, function definition part, this is considered as function definition completely from here to here. This is function definition and function header. So this part is considered as a function header and this part is considered as a function body part. And coming to the return statement, this is return statement. Okay, now let's see how this particular code is going to work. First of all, so initially, 
program execution starts from the main function. We have taken x is equal to 10 and y equal to 7. So which means compiler is going to allocate memory for variable x and its value is 10. Also it will allocate memory for variable y which is an integer variable and stores value as 7. Now it is calling a function called findmax function. So immediately control checks the function prototype declaration. According to this function prototype declaration, compiler understands that findmax is a function. It is returning an integer value by taking two integer parameters. Now it will search for this function findmax and it is able to find this function called findmax and passes this actual parameters and stores them into the respective formal parameters based on their position. Okay, So x value will be copied into x here and y value is copied into y here. It means uh, x y values within the main function are clearly 10 and 7. Now inside findmax function also if you consider the x value is 10 and y value is 7. Now int max which means compiler is going to allocate uh, an integer memory location for max variable. If x greater than y, if you look at this condition 10 greater than 7, condition true or false? Condition becomes true. Immediately associated statement will be executed which means max is equal to x. x value is 10. So this 10 will be stored inside variable called max. And finally, we are returning max value that is 10 back to the calling function. Okay. So which means uh, exactly in this place, it is going to display max value. So finally, in the output, uh, it will display maximum is maximum is corresponding value called 10. So corresponding value 10 will be displayed. Okay. Like this. Now, let us uh, implement this function okay, completely to see how this is going to produce the results. Uh, okay. So first, uh, I'm considering the corresponding header file uh, for uh, printing purpose that is printf statement corresponding definition is inside stdio.h header file. Now we will consider the function prototype declaration for find max and it is taking two parameters two parameters are both uh, basically integer type. Now let us consider the main function implementation. So inside the main function, I have taken a couple of variables like x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 7. And simply I am calling a function in order to find the maximum value. Maximum value is percentage %d slash n. Here we have to call the respective function which is find underscore max of pass these values x and y as parameters. Okay. Now we need to implement this find max function. So that is uh, int find max of here you have to consider uh, formal parameters uh, like int x comma int y. Now we need to implement the logic in order to identify the maximum value, let us consider a variable called max to hold the maximum value. So first I am checking the condition if x is greater than y immediately max is equal to x. If this condition is false it will go to the else block and identify max is equal to y. So finally using return statement uh, we are going to return this max value back to the calling function. So let us uh, run this code and see the result. It 
you can see maximum value is 10 so because I have taken x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 7 here it is identifying the maximum value by calling a find max function so here it identifies uh, x greater than y 10 greater than 7 condition true and max is equal to 10 finally it returns max value which is 10 back to the calling function so now here uh, you can also pass values of x and y at uh, run time so in that case uh, you need not take these values uh, here this is a compile time initialization which i have shown right now so now we'll implement uh, runtime implementation okay that is uh, we can collect values of x and y at runtime enter any two values now you need to read those two values into variables x and y respectively percentage d percentage d percentage d use it to read okay that is the control string associated for integer data type address of x comma address of y okay after which you are finding maximum value among these two let's compile and run enter any two values so the first value i am entering as 15 and the second value as 88 and you can see the maximum value is 88 so let us suppose uh, if you are giving same values uh, okay first value is 10 and second value is also 10 then you will get maximum value is 10 because both values are same okay so this is how you need to implement uh, a function by writing its function prototype declaration here before the main function and after this we have implemented the same function another way of implementing is uh, you can skip this uh, function prototype declaration but you have to move the respective function above the main function suppose if you are uh, removing this function prototype declaration but not moving this function above the main function then it is going to throw you an error okay let me show you here so you can see you are calling the function and it says simply find max was not declared in this scope because you are writing the find max function corresponding implementation after the main function so you need to uh, basically remove this code here and implement uh, above the main function okay so now this will execute properly you can see enter any two values 99 77 maximum value is 99 okay so this is how we write a program which contains uh, different components like function prototype declaration function call parameters function definition return statement all these things and if you consider this implementation uh, this implementation comes under function with arguments and written values because uh, clearly we are passing the arguments uh, and also a value is returned back to the calling function hence this implementation is considered as a function with arguments uh, and return values okay so now we can also implement in another way okay so now i'll show you uh, this one under function with arguments and no return values function with arguments and no return values so you need not uh, return a value back to the calling function in this implementation so but you are passing the arguments uh, but you are not returning any value back to the calling function if you are not returning any value then you are not going to store inside variable z so this is going to be just calling a function that's it and you need not take this z value and since z value is not there you are not going to print here so simply calling the function by passing the parameters or arguments so but uh, again since this function is not going to return value as this comes under no return values so its return type should be written as void void represents no return value so finally here 
you should remove this return statement because return statement is used to return a value back to the calling function in this case we are not returning any value so remove this return statement and simply print this maximum value here itself so that is uh, maximum value is percentage d slash n i am printing this max value okay so now let us run this code and see the result enter any two values i am entering two values like 17 and 81 and you can see the maximum value is 81 so this is another way of writing a function and this category comes under function with arguments and no return values so let's uh, move to another type of uh, writing function which is a function with no arguments uh, but return values so in this case uh, the implementation is uh, it is going to return a value so you should use return statement here return max but the problem is uh, here there are no arguments it means you should not pass any arguments to this function so you are not going to pass any arguments so associated formal parameters will also be not there and here again considering these values everything should be done inside this because you are not passing any arguments to this function x y should be declared and uh, taken here only and uh, you can write max here itself uh, as another variable and finally you are returning max value again to store this max value you require a variable here like int z z is equal to find max now we are going to display this z value which is maximum value is maximum value is percentage d and we are displaying this z value and this implementation is function with no arguments but return values clearly you can see we are not passing any arguments to the function but the function is returning a value back to this calling function okay so that is why we call it as function with no arguments but return values let's execute this code and see the result enter any two values i'm entering values like 56 98 you can see the maximum value is 98 it is working properly now let's move on to the another type of uh, writing function so that is the fourth category of writing function which is function with no arguments uh, and no return values so this is function with no arguments and no return values so in this case uh, you should not return any value back to the calling function so which means uh, the return type should be void and also you should not return hence you have to display this max value here only so that is a uh, maximum value is percentage d slash n i'm going to display max value here itself as i'm not returning value back to the calling function since we are not returning any value back to the calling function we need not store here and you just need to call the function that's it inside the main function it is directly calling the find max function without passing any parameters or arguments and uh, find max function contains the complete code and it is not returning value back to the calling function okay so finally this comes under function with no arguments and no return values let's execute this and see the result so enter any two values i'm entering 45 and 34 the answer is uh, 45 okay like this 
is we'll consider a factorial program and we will write a function to perform factorial of a given number. The user has to supply a number and the function must compute a factorial of the given number. So first of all, uh, uh, this is implemented using a uh, iterative processor, which is uh, five factorial. Let us suppose five factorial computation. Okay. So the same thing, uh, you need to call uh, a function like fact of five. You are passing uh, five as the parameter. Okay. So this is a mathematical way of computing five factorial. And now in this uh, fact of five, how do you compute? So this five factorial can be computed as uh, one into two into three into four into five. The result is uh, 120. Now, when you write a program similarly and implement this fact function, so how do you implement is uh, this fact function must be returning a value like 120. Okay. So then uh, you need to take a variable here in order to hold a value. So the corresponding implementation uh, I'm showing here in tn is the variable. Okay. So you need to call this function from the main function by just writing fact of 5. Okay. So then 5 value will be copied into n. And now here you need to implement uh, the respective code. For example, I'll consider a loop variable i and also f is equal to 1 initially because uh, I want to store the entire result into variable f. So using for loop, uh, we'll iterate here for i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to n i plus plus. So we are going to iterate from 1 to n. In every iteration, we are performing f is equal to f into i. So let's see how this is going to work first of all. Okay. When you want to compute fact of 5, initially i is equal to 1, i less than or equal to n. n is clearly 5. So 1 is less than or equal to 5 condition becomes true. So associated statement will be executed which is f is equal to f into i. f is equal to f into 1 will be executed which is nothing but 1 into 1 result is 1. In the next iteration i value will become 2 and this is 2 less than or equal to 5 condition becomes true. Associated statement should be executed f is equal to f into i. So this time i value is 2. So 1 into 2 will be 2. So like this uh, in every iteration you are multiplying uh, just like 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5. In the first iteration you are multiplying with 1. In the next iteration you are multiplying with 2 and so on in the last iteration you are multiplying with 5. Finally the result will be available inside variable f and you need to return this result back to the calling function. For this, we are writing a return statement, a return f can be used to return a value back to the calling function. So now, let us uh, quickly implement this code by writing a program here. So, in this case, uh, you need to prompt the user to basically enter a value. Okay. For which you want to compute factorial. So I'll consider a variable n here. Now I'll prompt the user to enter n value. Okay. So enter any value. And using scanf, uh, I'm going to read this value like percentage d address of n. Now you need to call a function by passing variable n as the parameter. So let us suppose the name of the function is uh, a find factorial or fact function simply. So I'm calling fact function and passing n. And again, uh, I want to store the result by returning value back to the calling function. So in such case, uh, I'll take another variable called res to hold the result. And then you can display the result here inside this main function. Okay. So factorial result is 
percentage d slash n i am displaying result res here okay now we need to implement this fact function here so int fact fact is the name of the function and we are passing a variable okay and we are using variable n here as a formal parameter now i'll take uh, initially a loop variable to iterate and f is equal to 1 the initial result f equal to 1 now let us iterate uh, starting from 1 up to n so each and every number you multiply with f and store the result again in f so you can write it as f is equal to f into i and finally return the result back to the calling function so return f back to the calling function let's run this code and see the result so enter any value i am entering value as 5 and you can see the factorial result is 120 so similarly i'll take another example like uh, enter value is 6 and factorial result is 720 so in this example we are simply calling fact function by passing whatever value for which you want to compute the factorial that is passed as a parameter and once this function is called and the result of f that is factorial is computed inside this function then the result is returned back to the calling function and it will be stored inside a variable res and later your printing factorial result is res okay so this is how we have implemented the entire program which is factorial using function so next one is uh, we need to find the greatest common divisor gcd among two given numbers so let's see how this can be done here okay so you need to implement a function called gcd function and uh, this function has to take two parameters uh, and identify the result let us suppose if you are considering uh, 18 and 24 as two parameters uh, what is the gcd of uh, 18 and 24 greatest common divisor of 18 and 24 is 6 so 6 can commonly divide both 18 and 24 now this implementation you have to use uh, uh, basically gcd function and has to return the value that is a uh, result exact result which is 6 so how this can be done is basically when you consider uh, m is equal to 18 which is one number and n is equal to 24 is another number and we are trying to find out uh, greatest common divisor between these two numbers so which means uh, start dividing these numbers uh, starting with one okay up to the minimum value among two given numbers so what is the minimum value among two given numbers uh, minimum of 18 and 24 is clearly 18 so you have to consider a loop to iterate starting from one up to 18 okay and start checking up uh, this i value can divide m and n both which means uh, whenever a number like i can divide both m and n which means uh, m mod i double equal to zero also n mod i double equal to zero so whenever these conditions are true then only you consider the result so gcd result as uh, i okay so likewise you are going to iterate starting from 1 to 18 up to 18 so whatever largest number that will be stored at the end finally okay because this res value gets updated frequently whenever a new i value can divide both m and n so finally you will get a, a maximum value only okay so this is a logic uh, that we are trying to implement uh, in the function in gcd function and have to return this result back to the calling function so let's get started in the implementation 
now I am taking uh, in this case uh, since we require two values I have to consider uh, m comma n variables uh, and uh, also will consider enter any two values uh, as a print statement now we can read two values like percentage d percentage d address of m comma address of n so these m and n values uh, you are going to read and now result is equal to find gcd is the name of the function for this find gcd function we are passing a m comma n as parameters okay and finally that find gcd function should compute gcd result and we have to display okay so gcd result is percentage d and that value of res should be displayed now let us implement this find gcd function before the main function so that we can skip the function prototype declaration so since it is returning a value back to the calling function i am taking a int as the return type and also these are uh, integer variables we are declaring int m and n now consider uh, res a result variable and also a loop variable i first you have to find out the minimum value between uh, uh, m and n right so i'll write this in a single line using ternary operator if suppose m is less than n then you have to return m otherwise you have to return n into variable called min okay so now using for loop let us iterate starting from 1 up to this min value now we'll check this condition uh, m mod i if this uh, is going to divide m and get the result as 0 which is a uh, reminder is 0 and also n mod i double equal to 0 which means uh, i can divide both m and n in that case we are getting uh, the result as i we are taking i as the result since this loop is uh, iterated in the increasing order starting from 1 to min every time the i value which can divide both m and n will be a updated and placed inside variable res okay so finally the larger value will only be stored inside res and uh, we are going to return this result back to the calling function so which is res will be returned back and it will be stored here and it is displayed so let us uh, run this code and see the result enter any two values i am entering first value as 18 and the second value as 24 and you can see the gcd result is 6 so any value that commonly divides both 8 and 24 and also a greater value which is 6 okay this is how it will work next one is uh, finding uh, sum of digits in a given number so let us suppose uh, the input number is given as uh, n is equal to 123 and the output should be sum of digits of this number so you can observe sum of the digits of this number is 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 and you have to display the output as sum of digits uh, is equal to 6 and this must be done with the help of function implementation completely you have to write a separate function to find sum of digits now in order to basically solve this problem how you can implement the logic is basically consider n equal to 123 extract from the last digit extract digit by digit and add it to the sum so initially you can consider uh, sum is equal to 0 okay but uh, you have to obtain the digit by digit from last to first 
so this is easier because uh, d is equal to n mod 10 can easily give you the last digit of any number so once you get this you have to add this d value to sum sum is equal to sum plus d and later since the digit 3 is already added now you have to consider uh, 12 only because uh, you have to extract the last digit right now to make this 123 to 12 uh, remove the last digit uh, with the help of division operation with 10 n is equal to n divided by 10 okay so this statement will extract the last digit and this statement will remove the last digit that is the difference now you can write this entire inside a loop in order to extract digit by digit and add it to the sum and finally you can return the sum back to the calling function so this is the idea and this loop will be iterated until n value becomes zero which means uh, until all the digits are basically added to the sum okay so let us uh, implement this code so here uh, reading n value okay and here you need to consider another function find some function or sum of digits function so let us uh, basically pass n value as parameter to sum of digits okay or sum digits function pass this n value as parameter and once the result is obtained you can display the result which is uh, sum of digits is percentage d slash n res the result is displayed now let us implement this uh, function here int okay sum digits function since you are passing variable n i am using n only here okay you can also use another variable name that's fine so let us consider variable d to extract the digit and then i'll consider some variable whose value is zero initially and this is enough now using a while loop if the value of n is greater than 0, then only this block of statements will be executed. First, you need to extract the last digit in the number. So that is uh, n mod 10 to extract the last digit from the given number. Now, add this digit uh, to the sum. Sum equal to sum plus d. And later, now remove the last digit from the number. So this is n is equal to n divided by 10 n is equal to n divided by 10 now finally some value should be returned back to the calling function so return sum the sum value should be returned back to the calling function and that should be stored inside variable res and that will be displayed here so let us run this code and see the result enter any value i am entering value as 123 and you can see sum of digits is 6. So let us give uh, another example here. Okay. So consider 158. And you can observe sum of the digits 1 plus 5 plus 8, which will give you 14. Sum of digits is 14. So sum of digits uh, computation is done inside a function called sum digits function. And the value is returned back to the calling function and it is stored inside a variable and that result is clearly displayed here okay yes there are uh, two types of uh, function calling so one is uh, call by value implementation the other one is call by reference implementation so there are uh, two types of uh, function calling one is call by value implementation. The other one is uh, call by reference implementation or address implementation. So first we will be discussing about uh, call by value implementation. 
using a swapping example. So let us uh, implement this call by value. In call by value, you need to understand the difference between call by value and call by reference. In call by value, we are going to pass actual parameters as variable names or expression or constants and formal parameters are uh, variables okay so in this call by value implementation first thing is uh, what are actual parameters in the function call actual parameters will be either uh, you can take uh, directly variables or you can pass expression or you can pass some constants as parameters which are actual parameters and if you go for uh, formal parameters uh, these formal parameters uh, should be variables uh, to hold the values that are passed by the actual parameters okay so these are uh, corresponding parameters uh, actual and formal parameters which you can use in call by value implementation let us consider an example of swapping here for call by value so first uh, let us include the header file now for swapping uh, we will implement uh, a function called void swap and here consider variables like uh, int x and int y these are all formal parameters so in this swap function i am taking uh, another variable called temp so int temp is equal to x x is equal to y y is equal to temp so this is the swap function corresponding implementation now consider main function implementation so inside this uh, main function we will consider here the entire uh, main function corresponding implementation on the right side so in the main function you have to basically take variables uh, and pass parameters by calling this swap function so let us consider i am taking two variables like uh, int x is equal to 10 y is equal to 6 these are the two variables and now before swapping i am going to print these values like uh, printf before swapping or before calling this swap function you can print a x value and also corresponding y value here so where x comma y values are taken and now you need to call this swap function by passing these values x comma y okay and here after swapping now again uh, you're calling this uh, x and val y values are uh, displayed here that is after swapping so you can write uh, after swap x is equal to and y is equal to x y values after swapping so let's see how this is going to work in the according to call by value implementation okay so look at this uh, implementation okay first uh, in the main function clearly x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 6 so this will create uh, two variables uh, both are of integer type and their values are x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 6 okay now this will display this printf statement before swap x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 6 okay so in the output 
you can see clearly it will display before swap what is x value so x value will be displayed and also it will display y value so x is equal to 10 y is equal to 6 and later it is calling swap function by passing x and y as parameters so this same value of x will be copied into x here and this y value will be copied into y here in the swap function now inside this swap function we have a temp variable so this temp variable will be holding x value what is x value here x value is 10 and then uh, x is equal to y so x will be now holding y value which is 6 and then y is equal to temp y will be holding temp value which is uh, 10 and the control comes back to the main function and it will print this statement which is again uh, in the print statement it will display after swap after swap again if you observe uh, within this main function nothing is changed inside this main function x y values are unchanged only the copy of x and y is taken to swap function the interchange happened within this uh, swap function but it is not reflecting back to the main function this is a problem with call by value implementation the swapping is not happening here after swap again x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 6 will be displayed so why because the values of x and y are passed to swap function and interchanged inside this swap function but this swapping or interchanging is not reflected back to the main function this is the problem once the control comes back it will display again x y values inside the main function which is old values of x y are still there that is x equal to 10 and y equal to 6 will be displayed now this problem we can overcome with the help of call by address or call by reference implementation so let's see this call by address or call by reference implementation so in this uh, call by reference implementation what are actual parameters and what are formal parameters so actual parameters are basically address of variables address of variables are considered as actual parameters okay and what are formal parameters okay formal parameters are pointer variables because you require pointer variables to hold the address of uh, actual variables okay so generally what is meant by a pointer pointer is a variable which stores the address of another variable in the actual parameter you, you are passing the address of a variable that will be stored inside the pointer okay so let's see the same example here uh, which is uh, swapping but this time the swapping will be successful because we are using call by reference implementation by passing the address of the variables. Now first uh, include this respective header file which is stdio.h and then consider a swap function corresponding uh, implementation using uh, call by reference so in this swap we are taking a pointer variables here so which is a int star x comma int star y now inside this function i will take a temporary variable like int temp temp is representing temporary variable so temp is equal to star x and star x is equal to star y and then star y is equal to temp so this is the swap function corresponding implementation by using pointers okay 
So let us implement the main function here. In the main function, I'll consider a couple of variables like uh, x and y. Similar to the previous example, let us consider x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 6. Now, let us display these values before swapping and after swapping, like before swap. Okay. So, we are going to display x value and also y value, so which is x comma y. Okay. And uh, here we can call this uh, swap function by passing the address of x and address of y as parameters. And finally, again, we display value of x and y after swapping. So after swap, x is equal to percentage d y equal to percentage d x and y values okay so this is how we can implement this main function now let's see how this is going to work first of all initially you can observe uh, x value and y value so what is x value here the x value inside the main function is uh, clearly 10 and y value inside the main function is uh, 6 and you are displaying x value and y value okay it means in the output uh, clearly you will display before swap x is equal to 10 y is equal to 6 okay now we are calling swap of address of x comma address of y every memory location will have an address let us suppose address of x is a 2000 and address of y is 3000 memory location now this address of x will be copied into x which is a pointer variable inside swap function and address of y will be copied into pointer variable y within this swap function. So which means uh, inside this swap function, you can observe x and y are clearly pointer variables. Uh, okay. X is holding the address of uh, x which is passed in the main function. So address of x is how much here? 2000. So this is clearly a pointer variable which is pointing to 2000 memory location. And similarly, we have another pointer called y here in the swap function, which is a formal parameter. And this y will be holding address of y, which is passed in the main function. Address of y is here 3000. So this is pointing to this memory location. Now we are considering temp. Temp is a variable inside a swap function and it is a variable. Now we are writing temp equal to star x. So star x denotes, x denotes here 2000, star x denotes a content inside 2000 memory location. So what is content inside 2000 memory location? 10 is the content inside 2000 memory location. So temp will be holding 10. And then star x is equal to star y. So x is pointing to this memory location and y is pointing to this memory location. Now star x is equal to star y means x will be pointing to this and it will be holding star y content which is 6 okay so which means uh, this content will become 6 and then star y is equal to temp y is a pointer pointing to this memory location star y represents this content it should be modified with temp value currently temp value is clearly 10 so its corresponding value will be 10 inside variable y now once this swap function is completed control comes back to the main function and in the main function after swap function call we have a printf statement 
and now this printf statement is going to display after swap what is the result of x and y so this should display after swap x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 10 so x y values will be displayed just like this so you can observe uh, before swapping x is 10 y is equal to 6 now after swapping x is equal to 6 and y equal to 10 so this is advantage of call by reference or call by address implementation where values are clearly interchanged so now let us uh, implement this uh, both call by value and call by reference implementation okay so this is uh, first one uh, i'll go for call by value implementation and i'll show you how this is going to produce result in call by value implementation okay so in the call by value implementation first uh, we are implementing the swap function so consider uh, int x uh, int y these are the two variables now make use of a temporary variable like int temp now temp is equal to x x is equal to y and finally y is equal to temp so this is how we interchange here and uh, consider a couple of uh, values okay where you can also read these values at runtime like uh, int x comma y so i'll basically prompt the user to enter values and perform this function call enter any two values so this statement will be displayed and using a scanf statement we can read these values like percentage d percentage d address of x comma address of y so after this we are going to call this function called swap function swap of x comma y now let us first of all print x y values before swapping and after swapping so before calling this swap function what is value of x and what is value of y x is equal to percentage d okay slash t y is equal to percentage d slash n i'll use a x and y values to be displayed okay now i'll use this same statement after the swapping okay you just need to write after swap x value and corresponding y value so let's run this code and see the result enter any two values i'm entering the first value as 10 and second value as 6 and you can see here result is uh, before swap x is equal to 10 y is equal to 6 after swap x is equal to 10 and y equal to 6 because the swapping is not happening here inside the main function even though the swapping is done inside the swap function but the values are not reflected back to the main function so this is a problem with call by value implementation now let's uh, modify this code and implement uh, call by reference implementation and see the result if you go for uh, call by reference implementation you will be passing address of x and address of y as parameters and there is no change here inside the main function except this but if you go for a swap function implementation these are all pointer variables as you need to store the address of another variable so here it is star x then star x is equal to star y and finally star y is equal to temp so this is the call by reference implementation so let's run this code and see the result enter any two values now i am entering two values like 12 and 7 now you look at this before swap x is equal to 12 y is equal to 7 and after swap x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 12 this is how the values gets interchanged because 
the x and y values inside the main function are pointed by the pointers x and y defined inside the swap function and this swapping is happening here with the help of pointers we are accessing the same memory locations and interchanging values of x and y hence it is reflected in the main function and uh, finally you will get after swap uh, the swapped values of x and y okay so this is the fundamental difference between call by value and call by reference implementation yes sir uh, in this example i'll consider uh, x and y variables uh, where i will pass the first value as a variable and the second value which is a uh, address of the variable it means uh, i'm going to show you call by value and call by reference implementations uh, in a single example so there are two parameters uh, that is actual parameters first actual parameter is uh, directly a variable and the second actual parameter is the address of the variable so it means uh, the respective formal parameters uh, you have to consider first one should be a variable and second one should be a point a variable because uh, we are passing the second actual parameter as the address of the variable so let's uh, perform this i'll just consider uh, update as the name of the function and this update function is going to take first parameter as x and second parameter as address of y and uh, here i'm going to display x and y values so after update after update x is equal to percentage d slash t y is equal to percentage d slash n x y values okay and now i will also display initial values of x and y it means uh, i'll use the same statement here so initially initially x is equal to and y equal to i'm displaying x y values uh, before updation and after updation and remember first parameter is called by value implementation and the uh, second parameter is called by reference implementation so now let's uh, implement this uh, update function so where i'm considering the uh, index and the int uh, star y point a variable or you can also consider a different variable names altogether now i'll consider uh, simply x is equal to x plus uh, 100 and here also y is equal to the y is a point a variable so star y is equal to star y plus 100 okay now let us run this code and see the result enter any two values so i'm going to enter the first value as 5 and second value as 9 and you can observe initially x is equal to 5 y equal to 9 after update there is no change in x value but y value gets changed y is 109 right now because that addition operation of 100 we are adding value of 100 right so that is updated clearly using call by reference implementation you can observe uh, even though the x is updated here by incrementing 100 it is not reflected back to the main function whereas using pointer you are able to see there is a change okay value gets incremented by 100 and that is clearly reflected when we are displaying this x and y values so let us consider the same value of x and y here i'll consider the uh, value of x is 3 and value of y is also 3 now you will see the difference uh, initial value of x is 3 y is 3 after update there is no change in x value because you are passing x value as call by value and uh, y value is called by reference so y value is clearly updated see here y equal to 103 so 3 plus 100 which is 103 now i'll slightly modify this example 
so that you can reflect on both the call by value and call by reference implementations. So since uh, in call by value implementation, if the value is updated inside the function and you are not taking, taking this particular update back to the main function, so that is a problem. And the values that are updated inside the function are limited to the function and it is not reflected back to the main function. So to reflect back to the main function, let us do one thing, return the value of x, return x value and modify this return type as an integer. Since you are returning a value back to the calling function, so here you consider x is equal to update of x comma address of y. So whatever function that is returned back, the value will be stored inside x and x gets updated. So let's do like this and see the result. Consider two values as again 3 and 3 and you can observe this initially x is equal to 3, y equal to 3, after update x is equal to 103 and y equal to 103. So which means whenever you are using call by value implementation, the values are going to be updated in the function but they are not reflected directly back to the calling function. You have to return that updated value back to the calling function. Then only it will get reflected. So in our previous example of swap, since you can't return more than one value back to the calling function, in C, generally return statement is allowed to return only single value back to the calling function. So, but you can't return multiple values because uh, in case of swapping, you require two values to be returned back, uh, which is not possible. That is why call by reference is uh, exact implementation that is required to solve such problems. But in this case, you can see only one value is uh, required to be returned back, uh, which is call by value. In that case, uh, you are able to return that updated value back to the calling function and that is clearly stored inside variable x and that is getting displayed. Anyhow, y is passed with the help of address and using pointer you are able to access the address and update its value and the updated value is uh, reflected because you are directly changing the value inside the address. Okay. So that is the difference between call by value and call by reference implementation. Okay. Yes, sir. In this lecture, we'll discuss about uh, storage classes uh, that are available in C programming. So first, uh, you need to understand uh, where we can allocate memory for all these variables that we are using in the programming. So you can either allocate memory, okay, so that is, uh, you can allocate space for the variables inside memory, or you can make use of CPU registers. Uh, Okay, so there are uh, two spaces. Okay, one is uh, memory, the other one is CPU registers. We call them as uh, storage area. This is considered as uh, storage area. Now, whenever we discuss about uh, storage classes, uh, we mainly focus on uh, where is this variable getting stored and what will be the default value or initial value of the variable. Also, we focus on scope of the variable and lifetime of the variable. So let's see here, uh, when I mean where this variable is going to be stored, it represents either memory or CPU registers. And uh, when I mean what is the initial value of the variable, it means uh, we are focusing on what is its corresponding default value. And uh, coming to the scope of the variable, so which means uh, whenever you declare a particular variable, what is its corresponding scope, whether it is available inside the function or uh, it is available in the entire program like this. Next, uh, what is lifetime of the variable? Lifetime represents uh, how long a particular variable is existing. So whenever we focus on one particular storage class, we have to detail, in detail, we have to discuss about uh, these things. So let's start with the types of storage classes. There are uh, four types of storage classes available. 
first one is uh, automatic storage class second one is uh, register storage class third one is static storage class and fourth one is external storage class and the keywords that are used for each of these storage classes is uh, for automatic storage class we go for auto keyword for register storage class register is the keyword used for static storage class we use static keyword and for external storage class we use extern keyword now let us focus on the automatic storage class so when we want to store uh, automatic uh, variables uh, they will be stored inside uh, memory it means they consider storage area as memory and the default value will be a garbage value if you are not initializing any value or if you are not storing any value inside that variable which is under automatic storage class uh, if you try to display its value you will see a garbage value then coming to the scope uh, so whenever you define uh, automatic storage class variable so it is accessible within the block in which it is defined okay so we can say it is completely local to the block where it is defined and next one is lifetime so lifetime of this automatic variables uh, will be within the block where this is defined so the moment control comes out of the block these variables are not accessible so they are no longer accessible because the lifetime is completely within the block where it is defined so let's uh, focus on some examples here so consider this example first uh, i have taken uh, int i so whenever you define a variable without mentioning a storage class so generally whenever uh, you write variable under a storage class uh, the general syntax will be first you have to specify the storage class then specify the data type then specify the variable name semicolon like this this is the general syntax now if you don't specify the storage class and you are defining the variable inside a function then by default it comes under automatic storage class and you can also explicitly write the storage class name like auto car c then float f okay you can observe all these variables are automatic storage class variables defined in different data types here it is integer data type and c is character data type f is floating point type now when you print these values so according to the default value or initial value of the automatic storage class variable will be a garbage value isn't it you can see default value of automatic storage class is garbage value so you will get garbage values here okay next uh, coming to this example so first uh, int a is equal to 10 which means uh, again this variable comes under automatic storage class and uh, this value will be accessible within the block in which it is defined so a is equal to 10 is accessible within this main function and then they have considered a block inside the block they have again created a new variable a and its value is assigned to 20 and then they are immediately printing value of a so within this block you can observe within this block value of a this value of a is accessible and uh, that is why when you print a value you will get result as 20 and later once control comes out of this block and again executing printf statement and printing value of a so this time it is going to access this value of a because uh, a equal to 20 is clearly accessible within this particular block and it is not accessible outside the block so outside the block it will take value of a as 10 so you will get uh, 
10 as the output after printing 20. So next one, uh, consider this example. Here, within the main function, we have considered a block and inside this block I have taken a is equal to 20 and we are printing a value. You can observe uh, within this block uh, it is accessible because by default it comes under automatic storage class uh, and automatic storage class variables are accessible within the block in which it is defined. So immediately it will print value of a as 20 but later again you are using printf statement to print value of a and value of a is not accessible here. It is clearly accessible within this block only. It is not available outside the block. Since a is not visible here or not accessible here, that is why it is going to produce a compilation error. So you can't see any output due to this statement. Okay. So if you comment out this statement, in that case you will get result as 20. But if you are including this statement, in that case it will raise a compilation error. So consider this example for uh, automatic storage class uh, int i and this variable is by default under automatic storage class because it is defined within a function and uh, i value is iterated for 0. You can observe i is a variable which is iterated over 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay int a is equal to 20 and it is printing value of a. So within this loop, within this for loop, we are creating a, another automatic storage class variable called a and its value is assigned to 20 and then we are printing value of a. So 20 will be printed and then a plus plus this will modify a value to 21 which is incremented by 1. Again, coming to the next iteration, okay, for i is equal to 1, you can see again it will create a new variable called a and allocate memory. So, and its value will be 20. So, again, when you print a value, you will get 20 only. And later, a plus plus, it will increment value of a by 1, a value becomes 21. So, again, for next i value, again, this will execute this statement and it will create a new variable called a under automatic storage class and its value is 20. So this way you can see for each iteration every time it is creating a new variable called a under automatic storage class which can be accessible within this particular loop and we are printing that value before incrementation. So as this value of a 20 will be displayed. Next coming to register storage class. So again, if you consider the storage area for register storage class, it is going to be CPU registers and the default value will be garbage value and then scope. So scope of register storage class variables will be similar to automatic storage class variable, both scope and lifetime and even the default value. So it is also local to the block where this register variable is defined and coming to the lifetime the variable corresponding value will be accessible within the block where it is defined. So once the control comes out of the block it is not accessible. So let us consider this example for uh, register storage class int a is equal to 10 register int a is equal to 10 so you can see here uh, variable a which is stored under cpu registers inside cpu registers so the corresponding uh, storage area will be cpu registers and it is holding value of 10 now we are creating a pointer variable called p to hold the address of a so the problem here is uh, a is a variable stored inside CPU registers. If it is stored inside memory, you can access its address. 
but they are stored inside CPU registers, so you can't access the address that will cause a compilation error here. Next, uh, another example for uh, register storage class. So even you can't use a scanf statement while working with register storage class like uh, writing address of A and address of B because these variables will not have any address as they are stored inside CPU registers. So you can directly use them. Okay. So let us suppose uh, you might be wondering in which cases you will use this register storage class. So let me show you an example where you can use this register storage class is uh, let us suppose uh, I'm considering uh, a header file stdio.h. Okay. Now inside the main function let us suppose uh, I am taking a loop variable here okay and this loop variable is frequently accessed okay so that is why I will use this under register storage class by writing register int i semicolon so using for loop uh, we can iterate like this for i equal to 1 i less than or equal to 10 i plus plus so we can start printing this value of i for example here so advantage of uh, using loop variables under uh, register storage class uh, is uh, registers are faster when compared to memory so register access is faster than the memory access so if you are using this loop variable under memory okay like automatic storage class so when compared to that if you are using the same loop variable under register storage class it will be faster because uh, the same access will be done again and again so you can see first i equal to 1 then i less than or equal to 10 and again a printing value of i then updating value of i so this loop variable i is accessed again and again since it is frequently accessed if you store this frequently accessible variable in, inside this uh, register storage class since register access is faster than memory access that will give you in less time okay whole results will be obtained in less time so that is advantage of register storage class next coming to static storage class so again the static storage class variables are stored inside memory and default value of this static storage class is zero if you are considering any variable under static storage class and not initializing its value then by default it is going to store zero and scope coming to the scope of the static storage class variables so they are basically local to the block where it is defined and lifetime so if you observe the lifetime of static storage class variables they are quite different when compared to automatic storage class and register storage class as these values are still persisting across different function calls okay so let us uh, see this uh, int a a is a global variable so here it is under external storage class or we can consider this as a global variable okay and when you print value of a you will get result as zero now i'll show you an example with static storage class so similar to that even if you write a variable under static storage class okay so this will also have a default value of zero okay so the previous example shows the variable under external storage class because uh, they are defined uh, here in the global variable declaration section so it comes under uh, external storage class but here in the same global declaration section uh, they're using static storage class it means uh, 
they are considering variable a under static storage class by default when you are not initializing its value it will be zero and you are printing value of a and you can observe value of a is zero here so let's see this example here we have considered uh, different variables under static storage class one variable is uh, c another variable is i and another variable is f so these are different variables under static storage class now we are printing value of c value of i and value of f so all these values will be like 0 0 and f is representing floating point variable so its value will be 0 0.00000 like this because by default if you are not assigning any value static storage class variables have zero now let us consider this example so here we have defined a static storage class variable called i which is an integer and its value is assigned as 10 i value is currently 10 now inside the main function i is equal to 25 we are assigning i value as 25 right now it means uh, this value will be modified to 25 and now we are printing i value here so i value is an updated value which is 25 will be obtained okay next coming to external storage class so in case of uh, external storage class uh, the storage location will be main memory and then default value will be zero if you are not initializing this uh, external storage class variable its default value will be zero just like we have seen the global variable and the scope will be clearly global variable scope is global as this is accessible throughout the program and then coming to lifetime so these variables under external storage class okay will be accessible throughout the program okay so until uh, like unless uh, you can see uh, the program is terminated till that point you can access uh, anywhere from any function these global variables okay the next uh, consider this uh, example under external storage class when i write int i here so without mentioning the corresponding storage class by default it is considered as external storage class and later we are printing value of i that will give you zero because the default value will be zero here and the moment you write uh, a variable under external storage class like using a keyword extern int i so in this case if you try to display value of i it will produce uh, a compilation error because uh, writing extern int i clearly denotes uh, that this variable i is already declared in some other file is already declared in some other file and don't allocate any memory for this variable i i am going to use the value of i from this file okay and that file name is not mentioned here which means uh, you cannot access uh, i value from another file because the file is not mentioned here okay so that's why it will produce a compilation error the next uh, So whenever you basically try to okay try to initialize this uh, extern variable in the previous case uh, we haven't initialized uh, extern variable but uh, if you want you can initialize the extern variables explicitly here so if you are not initializing in that case you will get compilation error but it represents uh, you are using the uh, i variable okay and uh, its value you are trying to modify to 10 and you are immediately printing i value here so that will display your output as 10 suppose if you are uh, restricting the i value declaration within this main function 
so which means uh, that is not the general uh, property of uh, external storage class or global variables they should be generally accessible throughout the program right if you are restricting uh, this variable inside one particular function again uh, this will produce an error because it cannot initialize this external variable inside a limited scope okay so that is why you can't uh, uh, basically initialize this external variables within a function or within a block okay so these are different types of uh, storage classes is now we'll discuss about uh, the basic difference between uh, automatic storage class and static storage class so let us uh, do this practically with an example and see the results uh, so first uh, i'll consider a header file like stdio.h now consider the main function so inside this main function i am just calling another function like uh, increment function i am calling another function called increment function so i'll call this function basically for three times and now let us implement this increment function here itself so where i'll consider uh, a variable called i and i'll also take a variable value as 10 initially and i'll just perform okay i plus plus after printing value of i so i equal to percentage d slash n i'm printing value of i here and then performing i plus plus incrementing value of i so when you run this code so what happens here is uh, in the main function we are calling increment function so where i value will be 10 and then it will display i value then i plus plus i value will become 11 later control comes back to the main function and again it will call increment function so again the increment function will be executed again it will create a local variable or automatic storage class variable i and its value will be 10 and it will again print i equal to 10 and then increment the value of i to 11 okay like this so it means when i execute this code you will get a result as i equal to 10 i equal to 10 i equal to 10 because for every function call it will newly create a variable i and it will assign value of i to 10 so the same value will be displayed okay and let's uh, run this code and see the result you can see the result as i equal to 10 i equal to 10 i equal to 10 because for every function call of increment every time it is creating a new variable i under automatic storage class and its value is assigned to 10 it will display i value later it will increment i value but that is not getting reflected why because again for the next function call it will newly create another variable i allocate memory and assign value to 10 okay like this now let us consider this under static storage class if you define this variable i under static storage class you will see the result as i is equal to 10 i is equal to 11 i is equal to 12 why because static storage class variables corresponding values are accessible across the function calls and also whenever you define a variable under static storage class they will be initialized only once so only for the first time i value will be assigned to 10 and then it will print i value later i plus plus i value will become 11 for the next function call it is not going to create a new variable i it will use the existing variable which is uh, static variable i and increments uh, that is uh, it will take the incremented value of i which is 11 and it will display i value and again for the subsequent function call by that time i value becomes 12 and you can see i value will be 12 that is displayed so let us run this code and see the result 
you can see i equal to 10 for the first function call and then uh, for the second function call i equal to 11 for this third function call i value becomes 12. So this is how it will work and this is the basic difference between automatic storage class and static storage class. So next concept is uh, a recursion. So what is the definition of recursion? Any function calling itself is called recursion. So we can define it as simply function calling itself is called recursion. Function calling itself is called recursion. And uh, whenever we write uh, recursion, we need to keep two things in mind. So recursion basically contains uh, two parts. One is uh, base case or base condition for termination of the recursive function calling. And the other one is uh, a recursive call. So these two are required for implementing recursion. So one is base condition, the other one is recursive calling. Now, let us uh, consider an example and uh, work and implement uh, using recursion. So consider the example of uh, factorial. So generally, when you go for a iterative process, Okay, so I'll show you here are uh, implementing factorial of a given number like 5 factorial. How do you compute that using iteration? So which means using loops and how do you compute this using recursion? So the formula used for iterative processor is uh, simply 5 factorial is equal to Either you can implement using 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 or you can implement using 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So let us suppose uh, this can be expanded as uh, 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. But if you go for the same problem, okay, we solve using recursion like this. Uh, that is uh, 5 factorial will be solved by writing 5 into... 5 minus 1 factorial which is uh, 4 factorial so this is going to be 5 into 4 factorial now this 4 factorial can be written as 4 into 3 factorial and this 3 factorial can be written as 3 into 2 factorial 2 factorial can be written as 2 into 1 factorial and this 1 factorial can be written as 1 into 0 factorial and finally, the base condition should solve this 0 factorial and return a value like 0 factorial will return value of 1. So 1 is returned back here and then 1 into 1 is 1. So this 1 will be returned back here. Now 2 into 1 is uh, 2 and this 2 will be returned here and 3 into 2 is 6 and value of 6 will be returned here. And 4 into 6 is 24 and this value of 24 is written here. So 5 into 24 is going to be 120 finally. So this is how you will get result as 120 here using recursion. Now the same thing uh, how you can expand or generalize uh, for solving this problem of uh, recursion. Okay that is a uh, factorial of a given number is uh, let me minimize this and show you here when you want to compute uh, n factorial so according to this uh, you can write it as uh, n into n minus 1 factorial n into n minus 1 factorial 
and one more thing is uh, at the end zero factorial should be returning you one this is the base condition okay now let us implement the same here if we want to compute factorial of a given number so like uh, name of the function is fact function and it is taking a parameter called n now first we have to mention the base condition which is required to terminate the recursion so if suppose uh, n value is 0 then 0 factorial should return 1 the corresponding return statement will be return 1 now writing n factorial is equal to n into n minus 1 factorial suppose if this condition is false then it will go to the else block and it has to return n into n minus 1 factorial so this is nothing but n into fact of n minus 1 n into fact of n minus 1 so let's see how this is going to work here this particular function how this is going to give you the results by just calling a function okay so let us suppose in the main function you are simply calling like this uh, okay so printf percentage d and you are uh, calling simply fact of uh, 4 okay fact of 4 now in this case uh, let's see how this is going to work fact of 4 then value of 4 will be copied into n okay so when i mean fact of 4 to be computed it represents clearly n is equal to 4 first you have to check n equal to 0 or not n is not 0 so it will go to the else block and it has to return n into fact of n minus 1 so this is 4 into fact of 4 minus 1 which is 3 now this is the function call right so when I mean uh, fact of uh, 3, n value will become 3. So this fact of 3, again it will check 3 double equal to 0, condition true or false, condition will become false. It will go to the else block and it will compute n into fact of n minus 1, which is nothing but uh, 3 into fact of 3 minus 1 value will be 2. Now for this, function call n value is clearly 2 again you are checking 2 double equal to 0 condition true or false condition becomes false so it will go to the else block and it will return 2 into fact of 2 minus 1 so which is uh, 2 minus 1 will be 1 now we need to compute uh, factorial of 1 which is n equal to 1 currently so 1 double equal to 0 condition will become false and it will go to the else block and it will execute 1 into fact of n minus 1 that is 1 minus 1 will be 0. Now this fact of 0 should be computed here n value is clearly 0 but this time 0 double equal to 0 condition will become true and it will return value of 1. So this is computed and it will return value of 1 now this value of 1 will be returned back to the calling function and it will return 1 into 1 value of 2 will be returned and this value of 2 will be returned back to the calling function and 2 into 2 value of 4 will be returned back to the calling function and here 3 into 4 value of 12 will be returned back to the calling function and finally 4 into 12 okay so 4 into see here uh, uh, 2 into 1 is returned fine okay this is uh, basically factorial of 1 is uh, 1 wait here uh, this is basically 1 into 1 1 will be returned back so 2 into 1 will be how much uh, 2 okay and then uh, 
2 into so this is going to be 2 into 1 value of 2 is returned so 3 into 2 value of 6 will be returned and finally 4 into 6 value will be 24 so 24 will be returned back to the calling function so it means finally the output displayed will be 24 okay so this is how it will work now let us uh, implement uh, and find the factorial of a given number using recursion so first uh, let me include the respective uh, header file and here we are implementing the factorial function using recursion so the base condition is uh, n equal to 0 it has to return 1 if suppose this condition is false then it has to return n into factor of n minus 1 now let us implement this uh, main function and uh, call this fact function from the main function and this fact function is worked recursively so consider variable n and prompt the user to enter value of uh, n at runtime so enter any value and using scanf statement we can read this value of n and we can call this fact function by passing value of n okay so if you want you can also store the result okay res is a variable to store the result of the factorial by calling function fact and passing n as the parameter to fact function so finally we need to print this value that is a result so that is factorial result is so percentage d slash n we are displaying res value so let us uh, run this code and see the result so enter any value first i am entering value as 5 and you can see factorial result is 120 so let us suppose uh, if i am entering value of n as 4 and you will see the factorial result is 24 so this is how you can implement recursively the same function factorial function and solve this problem now in this program uh, we will compute uh, sum of n numbers so you just need to pass the n value as parameter to the function and that function should compute the sum of numbers starting from 1 up to n using recursion so let's solve this program it has to produce the result sum of numbers is the name of the recursive function and you are passing n value as parameter to this function and now let us print the result sum of numbers is and this sum is stored inside variable res and you will see the result now let us uh, compute this sum of n numbers sum of int n as the formal parameter so first uh, sum of n numbers should be done starting from 1 up to this given number n so which means uh, if suppose n value is 1 will return 1 otherwise uh, will recursively call the same function by 
passing n minus 1 after adding n value. So this is uh, n plus sum of numbers of remaining n minus 1 number sum you have to find out. Okay. So whenever you want to find uh, sum of n numbers, first consider the n, n value plus sum of remaining n minus 1 values you have to add. Okay. So let us run this code and see the result. You enter any value. So you are entering value like 5 and you can see sum of numbers is 15 because this is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15 and how this is computed is uh, in the first recursive call it will compute 5 plus sum of numbers of 4 and subsequently sum of numbers of 4 is computed as sum of that is 4 plus sum of numbers of 3 and so on like this and finally whenever n value becomes 1 it will return 1 okay so this way it will compute 5 plus, 4 plus, 3 plus, 2 plus, 1 in recursive fashion. Okay. So this is how it will work. Now we will consider a Fibonacci sequence and solve the problem using recursion. So see here. If you consider Fibonacci sequence or series, you will get result as like 0 is the first term, second term is 1 and the third term is 0 plus 1 equal to 1 and the fourth term is 1 plus 1 equal to 2 and the fifth term is 1 plus 2 equal to 3 and the next term is 2 plus 3 is 5 and the next term is 3 plus 5 is 8. And the next term is 5 plus 8 is equal to 13 and then 21, then uh, 34 and so on like this. These are the terms uh, that you will get in the Fibonacci sequence. And uh, you can observe here, uh, every time if you want to compute the next term that is obtained by some of the previous two terms. So this is a term T1 and this is term T2. Now this term called T3 can be obtained by sum of previous two terms T1 plus T2. And the next term can be obtained by adding the previous two terms. So using functions by concept of recursion, I can write this as if I am trying to compute the nth term in the Fibonacci sequence, nth term in the Fibonacci sequence that can be obtained by adding some of the previous two terms. Now I am representing nth term as t3 and this is nothing but sum of the previous two terms t1 plus t2. So similarly Fib of n is nothing but nth term. Now you can get the nth term by adding the previous two terms. The previous term here is n minus one term and another term is uh, n minus 2. So this is how you can write mathematically using concept of uh, recurrence relations uh, which can be implemented as recursion in programming. So Fib of n can be computed by adding Fib of n minus 1 and Fib of n minus 2. And the other conditions will be when n value, that is if you are referring to very first term, it should be 0. So this is considered as one base condition and another base condition is uh, if n is equal to 2, that is second term, you have to return 1. Okay. So let us uh, implement just Fibonacci sequence function recursively. So based on that formula. It is returning an integer value because you are trying to obtain the nth term in the Fibonacci sequence where you can pass n value, whatever you want. Okay. Now, in this function, so the base condition will be first, if you are referring to the very first term, n equal to 1, you have to return the first term as 0 because 0 is the first term in the Fibonacci sequence. Suppose if this condition is evaluated to false, then we can write another condition 
n double equal to 2 which means you are referring to the second term in the Fibonacci sequence. In this case, it has to return 1. Suppose if these conditions are evaluated to false, it can move to the else block. So which means you are trying to clearly find out the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence where nth term is other than first term and second term. So where you have to return the sum of the previous two terms by recursively calling the same function. So fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. So this can give you sum of the previous two terms. Okay. So let's see how this will be computed here. First, uh, consider if I'm trying to compute uh, the fib of 4, okay, fourth term I am trying to compute. So when we want to compute the fourth term, it can be written as uh, n double equal to 1 condition false, n double equal to 2 condition false, so it will go to the else block. Then it will ask you to compute first fib of 3 plus fib of 2. Fib of 3 plus fib of 2. Now fib of 3 needs to be computed. So in order to compute uh, fib of 3, again you can observe this particular function corresponding expansion will be fib of 3 minus 1 will be 2 plus fib of 3 minus 2 will be 1, fib of 1. And you can observe here what is uh, fib of 2. Fib of 2 is nothing but when n value is 2 it has to return 1. So this will return value of 1. And fib of 1 when n value is 1 it has to return 0. So fib of 1 is going to return 0. And similarly fib of 2. Fib of 2 will be returning 1. So finally when you compute this fib of 4. So this is nothing but uh, sum of fib of 2 plus uh, fib of 1 which is nothing but 1 plus 0 plus 1. So this will give you 1 plus 1 value as 2. So you can observe in the Fibonacci sequence the very first term is 0, second term is 1, third term is uh, 0 plus 1 equal to 1 and the fourth term is 1 plus 1 equal to 2. So that is what we have obtained uh, fib of 4 value as 2 after computing here using recursive function calling. Okay. Now let us uh, uh, basically implement this program by applying this concept of recursion here. So I want to basically find out uh, a Fibonacci term. Okay. So that's why I'll write uh, Fibonacci term is RES and I'll call the respective function as uh, Fib of n. So which will return the result and store it in RES variable and later we are displaying. Okay. And if you want uh, exactly the term. Okay. So you can also so second or like th like this you can write and here you have to mention n so basically nth Fibonacci term is that will display like that now let us implement uh, Fibonacci sequence uh, corresponding function and implement it recursively fib of int n now in this uh, fib function first we are checking whether n value is uh, 1 or not if suppose n value is 1 okay it must be returning uh, a value of 0 because the very first term in the Fibonacci sequence is 0 and uh, coming to the second term n double equal to 2 so the second term is 1 and finally in the else block 
you are clearly computing the Fibonacci sequence term for n. Okay, that is the nth term in Fibonacci sequence is computed where n is other than 1, 2. Okay, so return Fib of n minus 1 plus Fib of n minus 2 using this. Now let us uh, run this code and see the result. Enter any value. I have entered value as 4 because I want 4th term in the Fibonacci sequence and you will get the result as 2. Okay. So that is what uh, we have clearly discussed Fibonacci term. 4th term in the Fibonacci sequence is 2. You can see here. Okay. So this is how you can implement Fibonacci sequence using recursion. So in this lecture, we will discuss about uh, concept of uh, arrays. So first, uh, what is meant by an array? So generally, array is considered as a collection of uh, similar data items under a common name. So this is uh, collection of similar data items under a common name. So this is considered as a definition of array, which means uh, we generally store uh, the elements which are belonging to the same data type uh, contiguously. So whenever the memory is allocated for an array, so all these um, memory locations are contiguous. And what is the advantage or what is the purpose of using this particular array? So generally, uh, whenever uh, I want to score, I want to basically store some data like, for example, marks obtained in five different subjects. Without using arrays, uh, then you have to write like this, uh, int marks obtained in subject 1, marks obtained in subject 2, marks obtained in uh, subject 3, marks obtained in subject 4 and so on like this okay so overall you can observe I have taken five different integer variables uh, in order to store the data of marks belonging to different subjects but instead of uh, taking like this, uh, you can actually take uh, in the form of an array. So where you can just need to declare uh, int marks of 5. So this will store uh, marks belonging to different subjects contiguously one after the array. Oh, okay, one after the other inside the array. So I'll show you the general uh, syntax of uh, one dimensional array so if i classify this uh, arrays corresponding uh, types uh, there are different types like uh, one dimensional arrays second one is uh, two dimensional array and third one is uh, multi dimensional array so any dimension that is uh, more than two dimension is considered as multi dimension okay or sometimes we also consider uh, uh, two dimension under uh, multi dimension so you can do that, that. so first uh, coming to this uh, one dimensional array And this we can also write it as 1D array. 
and the general syntax or general format of declaring this uh, one dimensional array will be like this first we have to consider the data type of the array so mention the data type of the array and after that specify the array name and then in the square brackets you need to mention the size of the array and then followed by semicolon so this uh, actually creates uh, an array with the specified size and its corresponding data type so let me give you an example here so for example i am writing a int a of 10 so here a is considered as the array name and 10 is considered as the size of the array and all these contiguous uh, memory locations are under integer data type okay so let me uh, give you an example here for example i am considering uh, int x of 5 okay so this will create uh, five contiguous memory locations like this so and this is the name of the array is x okay and there will be five contiguous memory locations like this in the first location this is x of 0 second location this is x of 1 third location is x of 2 and this is x of 3 and this is x of 4 like this it will create uh, five contiguous memory locations now how do we initialize this one dimensional array sir so just like uh, there are two types of initializations one is uh, compile time initialization the other one is runtime initialization so here also in case of 1d array you can initialize at compile time and also you can initialize at runtime so first we will work on uh, compile time initialization the general syntax for uh, declaring uh, an array one dimensional array for compile time initialization will be so first you have to specify the data type of the array and then uh, write the name of the array and then uh, so here you have to mention the size of the array is equal to list of values okay so this is the general syntax of the one dimensional array while initializing at compile time okay so let us uh, consider an example for this uh, okay I'll take an example like uh, int a of 5 is equal to okay int a of 5 is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 okay so this is an example where I am using compile time initialization so this will create uh, five contiguous memory locations uh, just like this so one two three four five and this is considered as uh, memory location a of zero so this is a of one a of two a of three a of four all these locations will have an address and a of zero will be holding the very first uh, item that is listed here 1 and this will store 2 this will hold 3 4 and 5 so if you consider the address of this uh, locations uh, let us suppose size of integer is 4 bytes and uh, the starting base address of this array is considered as 2000 
then the next location will be 2004 and the next location is 2008 this is 2012 and this is 2016 like this values will be stored contiguously and their corresponding addresses are like this okay now sometimes we initialize uh, partially in that case how the data will be stored inside the array so let us consider uh, another example like uh, int a of 6 is equal to so i have stored only 1 comma 2 comma 3 okay but there are how many locations there will be six contiguous memory locations so in this case the entire array will have six contiguous memory locations like this one two three four five six and their corresponding indices are like a of zero a of one a of two this is a of three a of four and a of five and it stores these values like first location will be holding one here and next one is two and next one is three and after that since it is a partial initialization compiler will initialize the subsequent memory locations with zero so this will be zero this will be zero and this will be zero suppose if you are not initializing the array at all then it will store all the garbage values uh, if you are declaring the array inside the function okay so where it will consider under uh, automatic storage class and next uh, for example if i am considering uh, array like this suppose a of 5 is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 4 5 6 7 8 like this so you can observe there is only five contiguous memory locations but the list of items there are uh, totally eight items are available so this is illegal basically you can't initialize with more number of uh, elements or items uh, than the memory allocated so this will come under uh, okay too many items in the initializer list okay and next uh, sometimes we make use of static storage class so in such case if you are writing static int a of 5 then it will create five contiguous memory locations and initialize each of the location with zero because for static storage class the default value will be zero so all these five contiguous memory locations will be filled with zeros as the default value or initial value for the static storage class is zero okay so this is how it will work and uh, for example so consider a scenario where you want to uh, basically take or specifically initialize one particular value okay so if you are trying to write like this for example int x of 6 is equal to okay so not initializing with the first value and then if you are writing something like 10 here so this is again illegal you can't uh, uh, clearly initialize one particular location because by default it will start initializing from the first memory location so you can't skip one initialization item and uh, you can't write like this okay so overall i can say here uh, you can't initialize uh, array elements selectively okay is not allowed clear so not only in integer data type you can also write different arrays uh, under different data types like for example so consider character data type okay char ch of 6 so in this case uh, this is going to create an array uh, with the size of 6 6 contiguous memory locations will be created and similarly you can also consider like this uh, 
float x of 6. So this will create uh, 6 contiguous memory locations under floating point type. So each memory location will be equal to size of float in this case. And here it will be size of character data type. Okay. So let us uh, consider a small example of uh, initializing array of elements and displaying those elements uh, one after the other. So first uh, let me write or include the respective header file that is a hash include stdio.h and now consider uh, main function let us suppose uh, in the main function so I am considering uh, an array here i is the index x of 6 is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay. So now we will start printing uh, content inside the array. So let us uh, print this content by writing uh, like this elements of array or you can write array content is so using for loop you can access each and every element inside the array so you have to iterate the for loop starting from the very first index which is uh, array index always starts from 0 so i equal to 0 i less than 6 i plus plus then you can print the content inside the array percentage d slash t x of i okay so you can display the content of the array like this now let's see how this is going to work here when i mean x of 6 is equal to 10 20 30 40 50 60 so this will create uh, and allocate memory contiguously for this array called x and these all elements are stored contiguously one after the other you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this is going to be x of 0 memory location this is a x of 1 similarly so this is a x of 2 x of 3 x of 4 and x of 5 okay now the values are stored one after the other just like this 10 20 this is 30 this is 40 this is 50 and this is 60 and here i is a loop variable which will iterate starting from 0 up to less than 6 so when it considered x is equal i is equal to 0 index i is equal to 0 in the first iteration it will display x of i x of i is representing x of 0 here so it will display the value called 10 in the output screen so you can see in the output screen 10 will be displayed and in the next iteration i plus plus i value gets incremented by 1 so i value becomes 1 and then it will display x of 1 content x of 1 content is 20 and so on like this uh, uh, the final value of i is uh, 5 5 less than 6 condition true so it will print x of 5 content so by that time you can see 30 40 50 60 will be displayed finally x of 5 is 60 and later i value gets incremented by 1 i value becomes 6 6 less than 6 condition will become false so overall this is how you can access the elements inside the array after creating using compile time initialization okay it's now in this lecture we'll discuss about uh, uh, how to display the content of the array using compile time initialization and also using runtime initialization how you are going to read the content inside the array and display it okay so first uh, we will start with uh, header file okay
and then uh, inside the main function okay so we will consider uh, declaring an array so like uh, consider a of 5 is equal to first I'll show you the compiled time initialization like 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 comma 50 like this and after that loop variable is required in order to iterate and display this content so let us uh, write a print statement and now using for loop we will iterate uh, like i is equal to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus and we will print the array content like percentage d comma so a of i this way we can access the content so let us suppose uh, here i am using tab space uh, okay to display the content of the array one after the other separated by tab space so let's run this code and see the result you can see elements of the array are 10 20 30 40 50 and this is uh, how we perform this uh, at compile time now consider runtime initialization so for runtime initialization we are not going to show the values of the array here so and define uh, some size of the array like a of 10 and later you can read the size of the array or length of the array at runtime so first you have to prompt the user asking uh, enter array size or length of the array so this represents the number of elements that you are planning to store inside the array so using uh, scanf you can read this value of n now you have to prompt the user to enter those many elements okay so let enter percentage d elements and uh, exactly the number of elements are n number of elements okay so once user uh, enters uh, those many elements uh, okay then you will start reading those elements inside the array so that is uh, for i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus and you can read these elements inside the array scanf percentage d address of a of i so this way you can store elements inside the array by using runtime initialization here now if i want to display the content of the array here we can write like uh, displaying array okay so now while displaying you have to iterate using for loop and display each and every element with the help of a print statement so printf these elements you have to display percentage d slash t a of i okay now let's uh, run this code and see the result enter array size so consider array size is 5 now immediately it will prompt enter 5 elements so let us suppose those 5 elements are uh, 10 15 20 25 30 then immediately it will display displaying array content 10 15 20 25 30 like this okay so now let us consider uh, another program in order to find sum of elements inside the array so 
you can do this same task using uh, runtime initialization which we have done here so till this point the code will be the same like reading the array everything is same but we are trying to find sum of elements inside the array so i'll consider a variable like sum is equal to zero in order to basically add all these elements inside the array okay so here i'm going to find the sum of elements in array okay so let us iterate and find here for i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus now initially sum equal to 0 i want to add each and every element to variable sum sum equal to sum plus a of i okay so after adding each and every element inside the array to sum so finally the sum is available inside a variable called sum so let us print here sum of array elements is percentage d slash n and display this sum variable value okay so let's run this code and uh, see the result okay yeah so we have to end this main function here enter array size uh, this time entering uh, array size as 5 now it is prompting you to enter uh, 5 elements uh, so let us consider uh, 10 90 20 80 50 okay and you can observe the sum of array of elements is 250 because 1 plus uh, you can see 10 plus 90 is 100 and again 20 plus 80 is another 100 so 200 plus 50 250 so sum of array of elements is clearly 250 here so this is how you can read array content at runtime and then perform summation here and then display the sum of array of elements as output okay now you can observe here uh, in this program i have basically taken value of n and uh, filled n number of locations inside the array and then displaying so most of the time uh, displaying uh, array of elements is uh, commonly used while working with arrays so that's why I want to implement this uh, displaying array content in a separate function. So if that is the case, then how do you implement function and pass this array from the main function to the corresponding function? Okay. So let us suppose uh, I will make use of uh, a function concept called display function. So in this display function, I'm taking uh, two parameters here so one is uh, array size that you can see array name the other one is uh, size of the array or length of the array so these are the two parameters formal parameters we need to make and uh, basically we are trying to display the array content inside this function okay so whatever variable that you have to declare here you have to declare that is the int i is a loop variable which is used to iterate and display content of the array and then you need to call this particular function called display function okay so and you have to pass uh, values as parameter to this function so that is uh, call this display function and pass uh, array name and also the size of the array as parameters so display function is called and I'm passing name of the array is A and size or length of the array is N. Okay. And you can observe uh, A is copied here and N is copied here. Okay. And finally, we are displaying the content of the array inside this function, display function. So let us run this code and see the result. Array size I'm entering as 4. 
and storing elements like uh, 10, 50, 30, 90 and it has to display the same elements uh, displaying array 10, 50, 30, 90 okay so this is how you can basically display the content of the array by calling another function okay so now consider uh, another program so this program is uh, performing some of elements uh, inside the array and everything is computed within the main function right so let us uh, implement a separate function to compute uh, some of elements of array okay so i'll call it as uh, array sum function and this array sum function must take two parameters one parameter is uh, the name of the array and the other one is length of the array okay so you can observe this is the uh, code for computing uh, array corresponding sum right so i'll remove and paste here okay and you can observe uh, sum we are not using here so i'll remove here and uh, within this function you need to declare sum equal to zero and also another loop variable i here okay and we have to call this function that is a uh, array sum function must be called inside this main function and pass the first parameter as the array name and the second parameter as the length or size of the array okay so just like this now let's uh, run this code and see the result enter array size i'm entering array size as 4 enter four elements so 10 20 30 40 these are the four elements i'm entering and you can see sum of array elements is 100 so 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 is 100 okay so like this you can display the sum of array of elements okay and this sum is clearly computed inside this uh, function and one more thing is uh, you can also uh, basically return this sum back to the calling function so here i am writing return sum and here you can uh, take uh, sum variable and store this result here sum is equal to and finally display this result okay printf sum of uh, array elements is I'm displaying this sum okay here after returning this sum back to the calling function so let's run this code and see the result enter array size I'm entering array size as 4 4 elements 10 plus 30 plus 50 plus 60 and you can see sum of array elements is 150 here okay so this is how you can return the sum value back to the calling function and display it in the main function like this okay so now we will consider uh, another program so that is uh, performing linear search of a given element so you just need to check whether the given element is available inside the array or not so I'll implement uh, searching inside another function okay so let us consider uh, this is the name of the function okay void search function and this void search function is taking parameters like uh, name of the array length of the array and also the key element which you are trying to search inside the array okay since we are working on linear search linear search uh, the element will be searched linearly location by location okay one after the other so for this purpose uh, we can consider uh, variable i okay a loop variable now i'll also consider uh, another variable like flag equal to zero okay 
and using for loop we will iterate uh, location by location like i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus now we have to check uh, whether this is matching with the key element or not if suppose a of i is matching with the key element then you have to modify the flag value because the element is found and break from this array okay break from this particular loop okay so which means uh, you are searching location by location inside the array whenever the key element is matching inside any of the elements in the array immediately modify the flag value to one and break this loop now here you can check whether the flag value is right now zero or one so suppose uh, if the flag value is zero in this case uh, you can print element is not found suppose if the flag value is modified which means element is found you can display element is found okay because only when element is available inside the array flag value is getting modified and it is breaking the control out of the loop okay so this is how we can implement the search function okay so rest reading the array okay storing the array content everything is uh, same okay so i'll make use of this code which is uh, using the main function okay and inside main function of uh, you just need to basically search whether this element is available inside the array or not okay so after reading array size and uh, elements inside the array now you have to prompt the user to enter the element uh, which you are searching for okay so using printf uh, first prompt the user to enter element to be searched okay enter element to be searched now using scanf statement we need to read that particular element so address of key okay now you have to call this function in order to search whether the element is available inside the array or not and the name of the function we have implemented is search function which is not returning anything okay so pass the first parameter as array name second parameter as uh, length of the array and uh, third parameter as key which is representing the element to be searched inside the array okay now let's uh, basically run this code and see the result enter array size so this time I'm entering array size as 6 enter elements 6 elements so 10 for example 20 35 41 57 96 okay enter element to be searched suppose i am searching for an element called 41 and immediately it will display element is found so this is how it will work for example if i am trying to search an element which is not available inside the array let us suppose uh, 5 is the array size and uh, the elements are like 100 okay 7 45 23 and then 31 okay these are the five elements now i am searching for an element uh, called 55 which is not available inside these elements uh, then immediately it will display element is not found now sometimes they will also ask you to find the position where the element is found okay so which means uh, you have to make use of uh, another variable called position okay and whenever the element is found immediately mark its corresponding position with the help of index store the same index into position and once the element is found 
you just need to display the position also okay saying that element is found okay at position so percentage d and the position is uh, indicated by pos variable okay so you can display in a single line also okay fine now let us uh, run this code and see the result so array size is 5 now it is asking us to enter five elements uh, consider five elements like uh, 66 55 33 44 11 okay now enter element to be searched i am entering element to be searched as 44 so immediately it will display element is found at position 3 which means index is 3 so 0 1 2 3 so in the third index uh, it is storing element called 44 okay so this is how you can display the position where the element is actually found inside the array after performing the linear search. So next one is uh, finding the frequency of the given element uh, in a sorted array. Okay. So problem statement is find frequency of uh, given element. in a sorted array so for example consider uh, array of elements uh, like this a of is equal to consider array content as 1 2 2 2 3 4 5 5 6 7 9 like this so consider this is the array and also x is the element uh, that you are asked to find the frequency of the element consider given x is equal to 2 and the corresponding output will be frequency of x inside this array okay so you will display frequency is uh, 3 okay so you can observe here uh, uh, x equal to 2 is clearly appearing uh, total of uh, 3 times inside this array and one more thing is this is a sorted array so once you start searching for element 2 and once you obtain any element that is greater than 2 immediately you can stop searching for 2 because uh, in this portion you will never get 2 again because this is already a sorted array okay so this way you can reduce the number of iterations here so let me uh, implement uh, this one okay so first uh, I'm considering a header file and I am writing a find frequency function here. Find frequency function of the given element on an array. So array and its corresponding size. And also the element that they are searching to find frequency. Okay. You have to implement here. And then coming to the main function. So in the main function, first of all, uh, I'll consider uh, an array of some size like 10 comma n comma i okay and after that uh, you need to basically read uh, length of the array and store elements inside this array and pass this array as function or as parameter to the function called find frequency function so printf enter size of array 
okay, which means how many elements you are planning to store inside the array and using scanf uh, we can read like this address of a of okay address of n because uh, n is representing the size of the array now we're printing uh, enter percentage d elements enter n number of elements okay for i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus and using a scan of statement we can read the contents into the array address of a of i okay and we just need to call this uh, function find frequency function okay so here I can write uh, frequency of given element or I can say directly frequency of percentage D is percentage D and here you have to indicate uh, the element for which you are finding the frequency so for that purpose you have to basically read that element okay so printf enter element to be searched okay and using scanf i am reading that particular element like percentage d address of x now we want to find the frequency of that element here so the element is x and the frequency of element can be found by calling this function find frequency function okay and in this find frequency function we have to pass this uh, array name okay and after that uh, size of the array and then the element to be searched for which uh, you want to find frequency here okay So let us implement here uh, for frequency counting. Uh, I'll take a variable count equal to zero, and also to iterate through the entire array, I'll use uh, variable i. And using for loop, uh, we can iterate i equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus. Now we can check uh, whether this element, uh, which is uh, x is available inside the array or not so once uh, if x is available inside the array immediately find the frequency okay so that is uh, uh, count it as part of the frequency count plus plus and whenever you find an element which is uh, greater than x uh, suppose you found an element like a of i which is greater than x since it is a sorted array you don't need to search the remaining part of the array so immediately apply break statement to terminate this loop okay so let's uh, run this code and see the result here we need uh, to keep semicolon yeah enter size of array size of array is uh, 5 I'm entering 1, 2, 2, okay, then 3, 4, and enter element to be searched. 2 is the element, okay. But here the problem is uh, whenever you find uh, the frequency, okay, you're incrementing count value, but uh, the thing is uh, you have to return count here back to the calling function you have to return count okay so and after identifying the count you are going to return the count back to the calling function okay so finally you are printing x and whatever value returned by this particular function okay so let us uh, run this code and see the result enter size of the array this time i'm taking a size like 10 
I'll enter 10 elements uh, which are sorted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5 and then I'm entering 6, 8, 9 so you can observe already 10 elements we have given enter element to be searched element 5 and you can see the frequency of 5 is 3 so 5 is appearing total of 3 times here okay so let us uh, consider another example enter array size which is 6 so now the 6 elements are 1 2 2 2 4 8 enter element to be searched 2 and you can observe the frequency of 2 is 3 here total 3 times it is appearing right so this is how the function can return a value which is count back to the calling function and display the result and we can find frequency and we can uh, avoid some unnecessary iterations here by using break statement because uh, the moment you identify or reach an element which is greater than x then x will not be found because this is completely a sorted array okay like this now in this example we'll see how to perform sorting arranging all the elements of array in the ascending order which is a sorted order so let's do this uh, First, uh, I'm considering or reading the array size and uh, asking the user to enter those many elements, n number of elements, and those elements must be stored inside the array. And after this, uh, using uh, nested loop, uh, you can actually compare uh, two elements and swap. Okay. So let us uh, consider another loop variable like uh, j here. Okay. And also I'll consider uh, a variable called temp which is used for uh, swapping purpose. Now here I am considering element by element using the outer for loop i equal to 0, i less than n, i plus plus. So this is the outer for loop. Now I'll consider the inner for loop uh, where uh, this next element after index i is representing so j must be indicating the element which is after index i okay so which means uh, j equal to i plus 1 okay and the remaining is fine like uh, j less than n j plus plus uh, like this you have to consider now this clearly tells you we are comparing the elements uh, which are stored contiguously okay so if uh, we are considering a of 0 then uh, the inner for loop considers uh, a of 1 and later a of 2 a of 3 like this so every time it will compare the element and uh, perform swapping to bring the smaller element uh, to the starting position okay so temp is equal to first I'll consider for swapping you can see e of i will be placed inside temp variable now e of i is equal to e of j and then e of j is equal to temp okay so this is how we can perform uh, swapping here okay and uh, this swapping must be performed only when the current element is greater than the next element so then only you have to perform this swapping right so here you need to write that clearly whenever the current element a of i is greater than a of j then we will perform this swapping okay so so that uh, the smaller element will come first okay so whenever a of i a of i is representing uh, suppose uh, i equal to 0 whenever a of 0 is greater than a of 1 immediately bring uh, a of 1 into the first position 
that is uh, using swapping you are interchanging a of i and a of j so after performing this uh, sorting okay so we need to display the sorted list okay so if you want uh, we can implement uh, in a separate function in order to display array of elements before sorting and after sorting okay so let me uh, define a function here which is a display function so this is uh, array and using this function we can iterate and display the elements of the array one after the other percentage d slash t a of i okay now we have to call this function before and after okay so printf uh, before sorting array is okay and you just need to call this function which is a display function by passing array name comma length of the array now similarly after performing sorting you have to use these statements after sorting arrays okay so let us uh, run this code and see the result enter size of the array for example i am entering size of the array as 6 now enter elements in random order so that you can uh, sort those elements and bring them in array ascending order okay so like uh, 85 26 7 99 12 1 okay so these are the six elements uh, and you can observe uh, the elements uh, before sorting and the elements after sorting this is the order sorted order if you want me to show uh, in a formatted way uh, just give me a minute I'll basically use a slash n here and also here okay and uh, while displaying uh, instead of tab space uh, I'll give some width like uh, 4d so width is for four characters okay and in those four characters let us suppose it is displaying uh, two characters then the remaining two characters positions will be empty so let's uh, run this code and see the result enter size of the array size of the array is six enter six elements uh, consider uh, 20 33 12 7 99 4 these are the six elements we are entering and you can see the result before sorting array is 20 33 12 7 99 4 after sorting array content is 4 7 12 20 33 99 okay so this is how we can perform sorting of the array of elements so now we'll discuss about uh, two dimensional arrays so first of all, uh, two-dimensional array is also considered as uh, a table or matrix representation. So which contains basically rows and columns, right? So two-dimensional arrays. Also called as a simply 2D arrays. And uh, 
if you consider the syntax or general format of the two dimensional arrays uh, so first uh, you need to mention uh, the data type uh, just like how we have written for uh, one dimensional arrays uh, okay so first it should be data type and then followed by array name so write the name of the array array name and then mention the row size so this represents uh, size of the row and here you have to mention the column size so which represents number of columns okay so row size is representing number of rows and uh, column size is indicating the number of columns so now let me consider an example here so let us suppose i am considering uh, int a of 2 3 okay so this represents uh, a is an integer array which contains uh, two rows and three columns. So we can represent this like this. You can see there are totally two rows and there are three columns. Okay. So A is the name of the array and you can see this is uh, zeroth row and first row. And now we'll represent the columns 0, 1, 2 are the column representation. So which means uh, if you consider this location, this is the A of 0, 0 exactly. So whatever value that is stored inside this will be belonging to A of 0, 0, right? And next, uh, similarly, this is A of 0, 1. This is A of 0, 2. And this is a of 1 0 this is a of 1 1 and this is a of 1 2 so this is how we can represent uh, the corresponding locations uh, inside the two-dimensional array so let me uh, basically show you an example okay so for compile time initialization of the two-dimensional array so let us suppose I am considering a matrix called M here and its size is 4 by 3 matrix and we are storing different values inside this like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay so, if you look at this, uh, totally how many rows and how many columns are there? Four rows and three columns are there. Now, let me represent the same with the help of uh, a matrix. And we'll show here what are the values that are going to be stored inside it. So first, uh, we will represent the rows, number of rows. There are totally four rows. One, two, three, four. There are four rows. And there are uh, totally three columns. One, two, three columns. Now, first, represent these row numbers. And then column numbers like 0, 1, 2. And this value, very first value, okay, you can see it will be stored like this 1, 2, 3, and then uh, 4, 5, 6 will be stored here, then 7, 8, 9 will be stored here, then 10, 11, 12 will be stored here. Okay, so let me represent some of the locations uh, here. So this is uh, representing uh, clearly m of 0 0 corresponding value so we can say m of 0 0 is 1 similarly consider uh, this location so this is representing uh, m of 1 1 okay and i'll consider next this one 
this is representing m of 2 3 you just need to indicate uh, the indices like uh, which row and and this is representing one okay m of 2 1 so this is the second row and first column element which is 8 okay so this is how it will work and now you can also initialize uh, the entire uh, multi two dimensional array or a matrix uh, in the group of elements so i'll show you that initialization here so let us consider uh, int m of 4 3 is equal to this time uh, i'm going for a group of elements initialization so first one is uh, 11 and next one is uh, 12 comma 13 here and next I'm considering 14 comma 15 comma 16 and next one is 17 so if this is the case uh, then you can observe here uh, totally there are four rows and uh, three columns again so first row this is second row this is third row and this is fourth row and after this uh, there are totally three columns okay now you can observe uh, 0 1 2 3 these are row numbers okay and coming to column numbers uh, 0 1 2 so if you observe here uh, clearly in the very first row this is the data given to assign for the first row so the very first element becomes 11 and all the remaining elements will be 0 because this comes under partial initialization of the array so this is nothing but row wise initialization okay in the second row it will store 12 13 and the next element will be 0 in the next row it will be 14 15 16 and in the next row it will be 17 0 0 so this is how it will be stored inside this two dimensional array and uh, now this is clearly compile time initialization now let's uh, see how you can actually read these values at runtime so how you can do for runtime initialization so let me consider a mat uh, a matrix of size uh, 4 by 5 so int a of 4 5 and how we can read this particular matrix at runtime so obviously you will write some print statement uh, asking the user to enter these many values like this okay now let's uh, look for uh, reading the values or reading the input okay so reading values in matrix a or two, di two dimensional array a so this is representing row size and this is representing column size so outer for loop you have to make use of two for loops generally for one dimensional array you are writing a single for loop to access each index okay but here there are two indices right so one is representing the row the other one is indicating the column so i equal to 0 i less than 4 i plus plus and now this is a column for j equal to 0 j less than 5 j plus plus now we can read using scanf statement into this two dimensional array which is percentage d address of a of i j address of a of i j okay so like this you can start reading values into a 
now when i want to display these values uh, similarly just like how we are reading here using scanf uh, so if i want to display the values for the same matrix in ta of 4 5 so we can display it using print statement so now let's see for displaying values of a so again you have to write the outer for loop to iterate through rows so which is i equal to 0 i less than 4 i plus plus and then uh, for column you can see uh, j equal to 0 j less than 5 j plus plus and you have to write the print statement here so instead of scanf scanf is used for reading purpose now you want to display the data so percentage the a of i j with which you can actually display the content okay so one more thing is uh, here generally whenever you want to print the content uh, in the form of uh, matrix okay so in that case you have to do some adjustments here like uh, uh, writing slash t okay and also using uh, a print new line statement uh, exactly here okay or after this loop okay so let us consider your writing like this and then here you can write uh, an printf new line so what it is going to perform is uh, after every row corresponding column elements a row corresponding column elements are printed with the tab space and then it will move to the new line because uh, this is how the matrix uh, representation will be right first it will print the content of the one row containing different uh, column elements and after that it will move to the next line and then it starts printing new elements okay so this is how it will work now uh, let me consider uh, uh, clearly an example here uh, so that uh, practically we'll see how the values of the two-dimensional array can be uh, displayed first of all so in the form of a matrix now I'll consider uh, taking the header file and inside the main function we can consider uh, a sample matrix like uh, 4 by 5 size there are 4 rows and uh, 5 column elements okay and uh, if you want to define uh, here so you can uh, basically write some elements and obviously the remaining elements will be taken as zero because we are doing a partial initialization here and then i comma j i is used to denote the row okay and j for column here so let me display for i equal to zero i less than four which is representing row here i plus plus and then now uh, for j equal to 0 similarly j less than 5 j plus plus so this is representing a column now we can print percentage d slash t so a of i j okay And this is uh, slash n okay so where I'm trying to print in the form of uh, matrix okay so let us uh, run this code and see the result
you can see this is the matrix format that we have printed all the elements 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and all the remaining elements will be 0 because of the partial initialization of the array okay suppose if you don't want uh, tab space uh, okay you can go for uh, something like uh, 3d then you can see uh, a clear matrix format okay just like this now let us suppose so you want to perform a runtime initialization so in case of runtime initialization you can actually take like this uh, a of 10 10 this is the amount of memory allocated initially there are 10 rows and 10 columns uh, so 10 by 10 equal to 100 100 cells of integer memory will be allocated here but out of which you can choose how much you are going to use based on the size of the rows and size of the column okay so for this purpose in order to read the size of the row i am taking variable m and for reading the size of column i am taking variable n i and j are the loop variables here and uh, now let us uh, first of all uh, print enter row and column size enter row and column size so using a scanf statement we can read this row size and column size so address of m comma address of n so row size and column size are taken into variables m and n here now we can prompt the user to enter m into n elements because the number of elements that can be stored inside the two dimensional array is equal to row size into column size so here i am prompting the user to enter percentage d elements and what are those elements you can see m star n so m into n number of elements so once the user started entering those elements we have to store those elements inside this two dimensional array so i equal to 0 i less than m i plus plus to basically iterate through rows and then for columns I'm taking j equal to 0 j less than n j plus plus and you can use this scanf statement to read the values at runtime scanf percentage d address of a of i j okay so after reading up into this array here now we want to basically display these values in the output screen so let me display here uh, displaying a matrix okay so just a printf statement to display okay now again now uh, using this uh, nested for loop uh, will be the same here but this time you have to display in the form of uh, matrix using printf statement uh, instead of scanf so here i will print this content percentage d and while printing we can go like this uh, okay like percentage 4d and a of i j so after this we are going to use a slash and new line so that uh, after printing the row it will go to the next line and print the next row containing column elements okay so this is the general format let us uh, run this code and see the result enter row and column size suppose i am entering row size as uh, 3 and column size as 2 
so immediately it will show you enter uh, six elements three into two is representing six so those six elements i'm entering here one two three four five six and you can observe uh, displaying matrix so the matrix is displayed like this one two three four five six these are the elements of the matrix okay now one more thing is uh, you can also pass this uh, 2d array as a parameter to the function so you can uh, implement a function like uh, void display function and inside this function i'm going to take this code and uh, place it here and one more thing is uh, whenever you are passing okay 2d array as a parameter you have to pass the row size and column size that is m and n values whatever you are using here and also you have to indicate uh, here the column size some column size you have to indicate okay which is uh, greater than this uh, n value or equal to n value okay so that uh, compiler understands uh, how many elements will be stored in each row okay and based on the m into n it will identify number of elements and uh, it will use like that okay so in any dimension like if you are writing any n dimensional then uh, except the first index all the remaining n minus 1 indices you have to mention the size here otherwise it is going to produce uh, an error okay so here we have to declare uh, loop variables i and j we have to declare loop variables i and j here and then this is the loop to display the entire matrix m and n are passed as parameters to this uh, display function now we just need to call this uh, function display function and pass the parameters as uh, array name comma row size comma column size okay so let us uh, run this code and see the result so this time i am going to consider uh, a 2 by 3 matrix there are two rows and three columns so enter six elements 1 2 3 4 5 6 and now you will get in the format of 2 by 3 matrix and you can observe there are two rows and three columns here okay so this is how you can do compile time initialization runtime initialization of the two dimensional array and also you can pass uh, 2d array as a parameter to the function and display it okay just like this yes uh, next one is uh, we will consider uh, displaying the transpose of the matrix so let us consider uh, the transpose of the matrix So transpose of the matrix means uh, interchanging rows and columns, right? So you need to interchange rows and columns. And if you consider uh, a matrix, if you consider any input matrix like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven eight nine now performing the transpose of the matrix so how do we perform transpose of the matrix is we have to interchange the rows and columns so this particular row will become the column here so it should be one two three and this row should become a column so four five six and then seven eight nine this should become the column here 7, 8, 9. Okay. Just like this. So, 
consider this is the input matrix and you have to produce output like this so let us uh, solve this uh, problem statement printing the transpose of a given matrix so for this uh, we have already done uh, displaying the original matrix right okay so also i'll call another function in order to display the transpose of the matrix okay here you can pass okay like uh, display transpose uh, you can implement in uh, another function display transpose and you're passing uh, array name comma row size comma column size here so displaying the transpose of the matrix now here use this uh, function name display transpose and uh, you can observe uh, int a of you have to mention here the column size int m comma int n okay so this is uh, displaying the original matrix corresponding code right so i'll use the same code but a small change is that so in order to display transpose of the matrix you have to interchange rows and columns right okay so you have to write a of j and a of i So you can say here, uh, previously it is A of i, j, right? Now this is A of j, i. Okay. And uh, everything is same except interchanging rows and columns. So A of i, j will become A of j, i here. Okay. So let's uh, run this code and see the result. So I'm considering a 3 by 3 matrix here. So which means 3 into 3 equal to 9 elements uh, it is going to ask you to enter. So the elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now you can observe displaying matrix. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But displaying transpose of the matrix will be 1472583369, which is uh, interchanging of rows and columns. So, this is a uh, concept of displaying transpose of the matrix. Okay. Now, we will consider the next problem statement. Uh, so, this is uh, adding the two given matrices. So, consider. Uh, an example here matrix uh, addition corresponding example so in case of uh, matrix addition let us uh, consider uh, two matrices here so one matrix contains uh, data like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay plus we are trying to add another matrix uh, containing data as 9 okay 8 7 and this is uh, 6 5 4 and later 3 2 1 okay so when you perform this uh, matrix addition between these two matrices here so the first element will be added to the first element okay 1 plus 9 value will be 10 okay and then uh, 2 will be added to 
8, 2 plus 8 is again 10 and 3 plus 7 so which will be 10 here okay similarly 4 plus 6 is 10 5 plus 5 is 10 6 plus 4 is 10 like this so finally you will get uh, a matrix like this after performing matrix addition now we need to perform like this okay let's uh, implement uh, code here to perform the same okay so which is nothing but uh, sum of two given matrices or matrix addition concept so first of all uh, you have to basically read the matrix and no need of transposing the matrix here in this program so how many matrices uh, we are going to take uh, you can observe uh, so this is one matrix and you have to consider another matrix uh, like this so a and b are uh, two matrices and whenever you enter elements into matrix a okay you can display matrix a and similarly you can also uh, basically write similar code for uh, matrix b as well so here you can write for matrix a okay and here you can write for matrix b you're entering uh, those many elements and this is going to be address of b of ij so this is a display of b comma m comma n okay we are displaying matrix a and also matrix b here okay so after performing uh, displaying you need to perform addition matrix addition okay and later again you have to display the new matrix okay so in this case you can observe uh, there are only two matrices you have taken uh, okay the resultant matrix uh, should also you have to consider so c of 10 10 i am considering here okay this is matrix c so i want to perform the sum of two matrices and store the result inside matrix c so for this purpose uh, let us uh, perform the matrix multiplication now sorry matrix addition now and after performing matrix addition the result should be displayed by calling the display matrix okay so which means uh, i'll use the same here but on matrix c so before that you have to basically compute matrix c isn't it so for computing matrix uh, c we can write like this i equal to 0 i less than m i plus plus so similarly for j equal to 0 j less than n j plus plus and here I am using uh, C of i j is equal to A of i j plus B of i j. Okay. So we need to add the respective elements in the respective positions of matrix A with matrix B elements. Okay and store them in matrix C and finally I am calling the resultant matrix okay so you can also write uh, the matrix C corresponding print statement so if you want I can actually remove this here okay only to display the matrix so whenever I am calling uh, matrix A corresponding content to be displayed displaying matrix a i will write okay and uh, here i'll use uh, displaying matrix b and here we can use uh, displaying matrix c okay 
and finally I'm displaying matrix C okay so let us uh, run this code and see the result enter row and column size for example I'm entering uh, 3 3 row size and column size I'm entering uh, nine elements for matrix A as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay so it has displayed matrix A content similarly enter nine elements for matrix B so this time I have taken uh, 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and it will display immediately the matrix B representation and then followed by matrix C it will display the entire matrix C 10 10 10 10 10 like this okay so this is how matrix addition can be performed so now we'll discuss about uh, three dimensional array or multi dimensional array so if you consider uh, multi dimensional array So, this you can consider like uh, an example of a 3D array now we are discussing here. So, you can observe uh, more than two dimensional arrays, uh, we consider or we treat them as uh, multi dimensional arrays. Uh, an example for uh, multi dimensional arrays will be okay, you can consider. Uh, int a of 2 3 4 this is an example for multi dimensional array so what is the general syntax for this okay for this three dimensional array what syntax we are following here is uh, first uh, you have to mention the data type And later array name so this is representing array name and next this is a uh, table size this is row size and this is column size okay so this represents number of tables okay in this example you can observe there are uh, totally two tables and within each table there are uh, three rows and within each row there are four column elements okay now let us uh, consider here in ta of two three four okay so let's see how this will be basically you can observe uh, row size column size and table size so let me represent a table 0 here okay and this is a table 1 now table 0 represents uh, clearly in this table three rows and four columns are there okay three rows and four columns one two three four okay so zero one two this is zero one two three okay and similarly here for uh, table one and you can observe uh, in table one again there are uh, three rows and four columns one two three four so this is zero one two zero one two three okay so 
if you consider uh, one particular location here so let us suppose uh, this one how this can be represented is clearly a of 0 0 is representing the table index and then uh, this is 1 right 1 is the row index and then the column index is 2 here column index similarly let me consider this one this location how do you represent is uh, a of table number is 1 and then row number is uh, 2 and what is the column number column number is 0 so this is how it will get stored internally okay so let us uh, basically initialize this uh, three dimensional array okay and uh, see as an example so i'm considering uh, a header file stdio.h now inside the main function so directly i'm considering a 3d array a of 2 3 4 is equal to so the elements are like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 like this okay so i comma j comma k okay so i2 basically traverse uh, over uh, the table and j for traversing over column and k for traversing over so i for table j for row and uh, k for column here okay so let us uh, use this uh, for loop here i equal to 0 i less than 2 okay for the corresponding table size and then i plus plus so similarly here also for j equal to 0 j less than 3 j plus plus okay for k equal to 0 k less than 4 k plus plus this is for column and here we have to basically display percentage uh, 3d a of i j k okay now i'll use uh, a new line here printf uh, percentage d okay that is a completely a new line just uh, use slash in And after this, uh, you have to use like this slash and slash and for representing uh, completely another table. Okay. So let's run here and uh, see the result. You can observe here uh, the very first. Uh, table is like this and second table is like this okay so as I told uh, this is a partial uh, initialization of the three-dimensional array so only whatever values that you are explicitly initializing they will be stored and the remaining locations will be initialized to zero okay now this is how you can actually display the content okay now let us suppose if you want to read this uh, three-dimensional array okay so consider some size like uh, a bigger size consider 5 here this is 10 this is 10 okay okay now Using a scanf statement, we can read this particular uh, three-dimensional array. 
ओके प्रिंटर एंटर टेबल साइज सो एंड आफ्टर दिस यू नीड टू रीड दिस टेबल साइज ओके सो आई विल टेक वेरिएबल्स लाइक पी क्यू आर पी फॉर रिप्रेजेंटिंग टेबल साइज ओके सिमिलरली रो साइज and column size okay so now using a scanner statement so percentage d percentage d percentage d address of table size is taken into p address of q address of r okay i have taken table size row size and column size into these variables p q r okay now you can uh, basically read this uh, by just printing okay here enter percentage d elements so which is uh, number of elements is equal to p into q into r number of elements you have to enter here so this entering will be like uh, using for loop you can read i equal to 0 since the table size is p i less than p i plus plus and here also for j equal to 0 j less than q j plus plus and here using a scanf statement we can read here percentage d address of a of i j k okay and uh, here for column as uh, k is equal to 0 k less than r k plus plus okay so this way the elements will be stored inside this uh, three dimensional array and later when you want to displaying a uh, 3d array okay printf you can write like this displaying 3d array okay and here you can write uh, p q r so this is p and this is uh, q and this is r okay just like this so this is how you can write and let us uh, run this code and see the result enter table size row size column size i am entering table size as 2 row size as 2 and column size is also 2 so that uh, it will ask me to enter just eight elements so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay and you can see how they are displayed clearly here uh, this is a uh, 3d array you can see first table containing 1 2 3 4 and second table containing 5 6 7 8 okay and uh, one more thing is uh, you can also pass this uh, 3d array as a parameter to the function okay so just like uh, how we have discussed for 2d arrays uh, and here also you can pass uh, as a parameter to the function so let us write this display function okay and take this uh, displaying purpose uh, the entire code here so and this time int i comma j comma k okay 
and also p comma q comma r okay and uh, you don't need to take pqr because uh, anyway you have to pass this pqr values uh, back to the calling function right so you can see when i want to display this three dimensional array a comma you have to pass uh, table size row size and column size okay and here also you can write like this int a of okay and you have to mention some size here like 10 10 and this is representing the table size this is representing uh, row size and then column size okay so and you just need to call this okay so let's run this code and see the result so this time also i'm entering a table size row size and column size as 222 two, two. enter eight elements uh, so this time uh, we are going to enter elements like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and again we are able to see this uh, three dimensional array 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay so this is how as uh, dimension grows uh, the concept will be similar except one more dimension one more dimension okay and correspondingly this syntax and function prototype declaration you have to write clear like this now in this lecture we will discuss about a uh, concept of strings in c programming so first of all uh, what is meant by a string So a string is nothing but a sequence of characters uh, which are enclosed in the double quotes and uh, every string will have the last termination character as null character in C. Okay. Suppose uh, I'm considering a sample string like hello which is enclosed inside double quotes. Okay. And uh, every string will be enclosed uh, with a terminating character called null. So this is a null character which automatically gets appended at the end of the string. Okay. So let me consider uh, a small example here. Uh, so generally you can write like this. Uh, character data type string is a sequence of characters which are enclosed inside double quotes now i am considering f name as the name of the string and the size is 4 so now here we can also write uh, like this uh, after declaring you can write uh, f name equal to character by character you can initialize like uh, 2 okay now let's see how this is going to be stored here so there are totally three characters uh, in this particular string and you can observe uh, all these three characters one two three okay but at the end you will see there is a null character okay the first character is t second character is uh, w third character is o and uh, last one is null character okay so if you observe uh, these characters are stored using uh, ascii code so if you look at uh, here these are all characters that you see but uh, they are internally represented with the help of ascii code 
T corresponding ASCII code is 116. So W ASCII code is 119. O ASCII code is 41. Okay. And null character ASCII code is 0. So this is how the underlying representation okay, will be. Now, if you consider overall uh, the general syntax of uh, writing any string, the general syntax will be like this. General syntax or format of writing a string can be like this. Car str of size okay so you can observe here uh, str is the name of the string and this is representing the size of the string and of course all the characters uh, are stored right so this is under character data type and now if i consider an example here uh, like car message of 10 so this represents uh, message is the name of the string and uh, 10 is the size of the string uh, where you can store maximum of nine characters because uh, uh, you need one space for us uh, it's corresponding null character termination string okay now you can also use uh, basically printf statement to display this particular string after initialization okay suppose uh, uh, for this example okay let us consider uh, i'm considering an array like this okay the f name of six f name of six is equal to I'm writing uh, Tom, Tom as the name. Okay. So if this is the case, uh, you can see how this will be stored inside uh, the string. Okay. So the first character will be T, and the second character will be O, and the third character will be M. And subsequently, you can see there are uh, three contiguous memory locations. Uh, overall, you can observe uh, size is six, right? So this is going to be F name of six memory location. So this is F name of one. This is two, three, four, and five. Now this must be representing a null character here. This is a null character, and this is also a null character this is also a null character okay so if you are initializing uh, only three characters uh, for a string uh, which is capable of storing up to six characters uh, as the size is six uh, so in all the remaining locations it will consider null character okay so now uh, let's consider how to read strings uh, so we generally declare strings and uh, after that we want to store some data into the strings okay when you are uh, required to read this uh, string at runtime so you can make use of these functions like uh, scanf function can be used to read the string and second one is uh, getS function can be used to read the string and third one is uh, you can use uh, get char. So there are other functions which are similar to get char like get ch, uh, okay, like this. But uh, let us go for uh, get char or get ch, okay. So general representation will be similar here. Now, first coming to scanf, how do you basically make use of a scanf statement in order to read this string? Okay, so let's uh, see here. First one is uh, scanf. So to read this, uh, consider an example car str of 10. 
okay now i am prompting the user to basically enter this string so enter any string so once the user enters the string it must be stored inside string str and the string name directly represents the address so scanf percentage s str itself represents address so str representing address which means directly whatever string that you are entering at run time will be stored into this okay and the only drawback of uh, scanf statement while working strings uh, is uh, it will terminate reading the characters if it encounters even space okay it means uh, i'll give you an example here suppose if you are uh, giving input at run time as hello if you are considering hello as input at run time so in this case uh, it can store hello into str but if you are considering input like uh, hello space world this is the string that you are entering at run time in that case uh, it is going to store only hello because whenever it encounters a space like this it will terminate reading the string okay so that is a problem with a scanf statement while working with strings so the solution is you can make use of get s function it will read the entire line okay so which means uh, the this type of uh, drawback will not be seen in the get s function so let's uh, see how this get s can be used in order to uh, read the string okay so consider the same example of uh, car str of uh, 10 now you can prompt the user to basically enter the string okay so enter any string after entering the string now you are storing the string inside str using get s this is the syntax of the get s function so it will read the entire string even if you are giving or supplying uh, input as uh, hello space world okay so it will read the entire string okay and it will get terminated whenever it encounters a null character not space okay so this is how you can make use of uh, get s now let's see how you can make use of uh, get char in order to uh, read the entire string okay so if you consider concept of get char or get ch so since uh, these functions are basically used to read only character only one character if you repeat this same thing inside a loop it will be able to read the entire string or entire line isn't it so let us consider an example where i can use this uh, get char in order to read the entire string so i'll take a loop variable here initially i equal to 0 and then uh, i'll consider uh, character data type okay which is a string here char str of 10 comma ch okay now using uh, get char we are reading into this particular character okay get char of ch so we are reading the character into ch here now using while loop uh, we can iterate like this while this character is not equal to null character so till it reaches null character you can keep on uh, getting the character and storing it into 
str which is a string so i'll store the existing character ch into the string where exactly i index is representing so str of i is equal to ch and after that we will increment i value so i plus plus it will increment i value and then uh, in order to get another character we can uh, use get ch of ch or get char of ch anything is fine so using which you can read another character and one more thing is uh, here after uh, storing the entire character you have to basically store the null character in the ending position explicitly so for this purpose we can use str of i is equal to null character so null character must be stored at the end explicitly because uh, you are storing uh, the character by character into the string right so explicitly i'm assigning null character so that it represents the end of the string okay so this is how you can use get char in order to basically read the string now coming to displaying the string so whenever you want to display the entire string you can make use of uh, these functions so starting with uh, print a function you can use this print a function in order to display the string so second one is uh, put s function using put s also you can display and third one is uh, put char using put char you can actually display character by character okay so let us uh, see this uh, example okay first uh, i'll show you how you can display using uh, printf and then uh, using put s it is simple okay so let me show you here itself uh, whenever you have uh, some string like uh, char str of 10 equal to hello like this then you can display this hello using printf statement or printf function by just writing printf percentage s str so using which you can display the entire string hello next using put s uh, you can display the entire string by writing put s of str okay you can display here and finally when you want to display using uh, put char so you have to basically iterate character by character okay and display here so one way you can do this is uh, you can actually consider uh, some variable like int i okay and using this loop variable i will iterate through the entire string and display character by character here so while str of i not equal to null character str of i is not equal to null character so in this case we are going to display the str of i so which is uh, put char of uh, str of i we are displaying and later increment i value because uh, first character which is located inside index 0 you have already displayed now move to the second character which is located at index 1 that's why we are incrementing i value by 1 and this will be terminated whenever uh, character is not equal to null character you know the character is not equal to null character okay like this so now i'll show you how to basically uh, read and display the string using uh, get s and put s uh, which is uh, commonly used uh, especially while working with strings uh, here in c so first uh, consider the header file std iwo.h now inside the main function we are considering a, a string here char str of 20 okay so 
now i'll prompt the user to basically enter any string okay and once the user enters a string we have to read that string using get s so get s of str can be used to basically read the string and then uh, now you can uh, display the string here so while displaying you can write like this the string is here you can write uh, put s of str to display okay so let's uh, run this code to see the result enter any string i have entered string is uh, hello and that is what we are getting as yes, output the string is hello okay so like this uh, you can also write some programs related to this getters and putters especially in many websites once you log in okay they will greet you like uh, hello user username will be displayed okay so you can write similar chart related programs here enter your name so once user enters the name okay so then you can start uh, displaying okay some message so this time i'll do like this uh, printf hello percentage s how are you in that percentage s i'm going to display this uh, str string okay so let's run this code and see the result enter your name i'm entering name as uh, surendra and you can see immediately it is displaying hello surendra how are you okay so like this you can actually ask questions and uh, get the reply from the user and again use that content to ask another question so this type of uh, applications uh, which are uh, chat related applications you can develop with the help of basic uh, getters putters printf these statements okay so now we'll consider uh, a function uh, that is there are several functions uh, that we use in uh, strings uh, and these uh, are commonly used functions uh, we will start with uh, function by function okay so very first function is uh, string length function okay so see here uh, all the built in functions related to strings are available inside the string dot h header file okay string dot h header file contains all these built in functions so whenever you want to use any built in function then you have to include this header file in the program so there are several functions such as str len function okay so this str len function is used to find the length of the string okay and second one is uh, str cpy function okay so str cpy of s1 comma s2 so this is going to copy string s2 into string s1 okay and then uh, str uh, cmp function of s1 comma s2 so you can't compare two strings directly okay if you want to compare you can make use of str cmp function it will compare whether two given strings s1 and s2 are equal or not so if they are uh, basically equal then it is going to return a uh, uh, zero okay otherwise it will return uh, a non zero value based on the 
ascii difference between the non matching characters in the strings s1 and s2 and then uh, str cat okay of s1 comma s2 so this represents a string concatenation so when you perform this string concatenation s1 will now contain uh, s1 plus s2 that is concatenated string of s1 and s2 and there is no change in string s2 so these are all uh, fundamental okay string functions uh, and fifth one is uh, str rev function okay of a string s this is going to reverse the given string called s okay it will reverse the given string s now let us consider uh, str uh, ln function and now let's see how this str ln function can be used okay while working with the string related programs so first one is uh, you must know the syntax of str ln function so this str ln function is going to return an integer value because uh, it is going to identify the length of the string so here since uh, it is uh, returning length of the string returns string length whatever string name that you are giving its corresponding length will be obtained here and then uh, int str ln of uh, str okay so we are finding the length of the string str and str ln function is going to return the length of the string so let us suppose uh, i am considering an example here so consider uh, a string like this car f name is equal to so i am considering a name like bob okay now i am applying this string length function by using a variable called length so int length is equal to str ln of f name so using which uh, you can identify the length of the string now you can observe how many characters are there inside this uh, string there are three characters so this function is going to return value of 3 to variable length and finally if you print length you will see output as 3 okay so this is how you can make use of uh, str ln function okay so let's work with uh, this particular str ln function now so first uh, you need to make use of uh, string dot h header file here and also after uh, reading the entire string and now we want to basically find length of the string so i'll go for a variable called length okay and using this variable i will find the length of the string using str ln function so length is equal to str ln of string str so where you can identify the length of the string and you can store that inside a variable called length and finally you can display like this uh, length of string length of string is uh, percentage d because uh, length is measured using uh, integer okay length of the string uh, is uh, using this variable length uh, you can display the length of the string here now let us run this code and see the result enter your name okay so let us suppose uh, 
I am entering my name here and you can observe length of the string is 8 because uh, this name contains a total of 8 characters so this will display length of the string as 8 okay and in fact uh, you can write here enter any string you want okay then it will immediately find uh, the length of that particular string so this time I'm going to enter another string like uh, hello world and you can observe length of the string is 11 because hello contains 5 characters and world contains uh, 5 characters total of 5 plus 5 10 and there is one space between this so total 11 characters are there okay and now many times uh, they'll ask you to basically find the length of the string without using a string.h header file okay so which means uh, without using this string.h header file you have to count manually character by character how many characters are there in the string okay so if this is the case uh, then you are not going to use uh, strlen function because uh, without uh, string.h header file strlen function will not work if you want i can give you a try so you can see it is producing an error because uh, strlen was not declared in this scope as string.h header file contains the complete meaning and expansion of uh, strlen function okay so that's why you can't use right now okay now the idea is to identify the length of the string and display so i have taken a variable called length is equal to zero and also i'll consider another variable i in order to write a for loop to iterate through the entire string str and identify the number of characters in this particular string so i equal to zero and we can write str of i not equal to null character and then i plus plus okay so every time you have to basically count how many characters are there inside this string so for this we are considering a variable called length length plus plus using length we have updated okay or identified the length of the string and then we are displaying length as output okay so let us run this code and see the result enter any string so this time we are entering any any string like uh, consider hello is the string and you can display length of the string is 5 here okay and also remember the length of this string is different from size of this string okay so if i observe here okay or i apply the entire uh, concept of uh, strlen so by including the string.h header file and i'll show you that uh, this size of is different from uh, strlen function so string.h header file i have used and consider a sample string like uh, str of 20 is equal to uh, hello okay now i'm considering uh, printf uh, okay str alien okay a result clear so how do you get str alien result simply by applying str alien of str and similarly you can also print okay size of result here we can write size of str okay so uh, we are identifying the size of this string okay so let's uh, run this code and see the result okay oh we have to use here uh, again uh, percentage d 
to display because uh, it is going to return an integer value right yeah. so percentage d has to be used and you can see length of this string str alien result is 5 and size of result is 20 so if you want uh, you can use uh, a new line here and you can see the result str alien result is 5 it represents length of the string in hello is 5 size of result is 20 why because you have allocated 20 contiguous memory locations for this particular string called str that's why size is going to be 20 but length of the string is how many characters are stored okay so there are five characters that are stored here so that's why you will get result as uh, five okay now what happens when i remove this uh, index that is uh, generally whenever you are not specifying the size of this string but you are uh, clearly showing the string which is compile time initialization so in that case it will count number of characters in this string and store the result so here there are totally five characters which means it will allocate five contiguous memory locations uh, to store okay in this case uh, you can observe uh, str alien result is five but size of result is six why because uh, so the total size allocated will be six okay for first five locations for this and there will be null character also that's why the total size allocated for the string str is uh, 6 whereas uh, if you count the number of characters here 1 2 3 4 5 there are clearly 5 characters in the string okay so that is the basic difference between str alien and uh, size of uh, okay like this so now let us consider uh, using uh, str cpy function okay so this function is basically used to copy right okay whenever you want to copy this string you go for str cpy isn't it so consider uh, the general syntax of this uh, str cpy okay general syntax will be you can write like this uh, str cpy of s1 comma s2 so in this case uh, s1 and s2 okay is basically string 1 and string 2 now we are trying to copy the content of string 2 into string 1 okay so which means uh, here consider s1 has got okay some string now i am trying to copy this s2 string into s1 okay so here we can write like this consider an example car s1 of 6 comma s2 of 6 is equal to hello okay now we are trying to copy or use this str cpy function so str cpy of s1 comma s2 so this is going to copy string s2 into string s1 later if you print s1 content like percentage s s1 you will be able to see a same hello now available inside s1 also okay so let us uh, see an example here for uh, string copy operation okay so I'm considering here this is uh, string s2 and now I'll consider another string like uh, string s1 
this is string s2 now s2 contains this uh, hello right now we will copy s2 content into s1 okay so using str cpy you can write uh, s1 comma s2 the entire content in s2 will be copied into s1 here and finally you can display string 1 is percentage s s1 and similarly String 2 is percentage S, S2. So we are displaying S1 content and S2 content here. So let's run this code and see the result. You can see string 1 contains hello right now and string 2 contains hello. Okay. So let us suppose uh, we have. Uh, another string here let us suppose s1 contains another string like uh, water okay now let's run this code and see the result after copying you can see the water content okay so whatever string that we have stored initially in string one is water now that is replaced with hello okay so let us uh, this time we will consider uh, instead of s1 comma s2 i'll go for s2 comma s1 then you can see the result here okay string one is water and string two is water okay like this now many times uh, they want you to perform this uh, operation without using uh, str cpy function so which means uh, without using string dot h header file in that case you have to remove this and start copying the content manually okay so i'll use here for example i want to copy the entire content of string s2 into string s1 okay i don't even initialize here just i want directly to copy character by character into string s1 so in order to access the index position by position i am taking a variable loop variable here i okay and copy using this so for i is equal to zero we are going to iterate using index i so s2 of i is not equal to null character i plus plus okay now we are copying into s1 that is s1 of i is equal to s2 of i we are copying s2 of i content into s1 of i okay so due to which uh, the entire string hello will be copied and after that you have to explicitly assign null character at the end into string s1 okay because we are terminating uh, this particular loop whenever s2 containing null character is encountered okay so that is why you have to explicitly assign here s1 of i equal to null character okay and later you can display s1 content and s2 content here okay so let's run this code and see the result you can see string one is hello and string two is hello so clearly we have copied character by character which is located in string two into string one and finally at the end in string one we have assigned the null character here okay so this is how string copy operation works in c now consider uh, reversing the string so how can we reverse the given string in C? So there is a built-in function which is strrev function. 
in order to reverse the given string so hash include string dot h okay so now we are going to reverse the entire string and display it okay so char str of is equal to hello okay now we need to reverse the string and display it okay see here i am calling str rev function by passing str as parameter okay now i'll display the string here okay so percentage s and uh, str let us execute this and you can see the result here uh, hello is printed in the reverse order o l l e h is obtained here which is the reverse of hello and hello is the original string now if you want to basically print the same without uh, using string dot h header file okay so in this case uh, how you can do this is basically you need to find the length of the string okay and start capturing the items from the last index okay so let us consider n is representing the length of the string here so and this n should be computed and for this i have used the loop variable i also here okay and initially i'll consider uh, n equal to 0 using for loop i equal to 0 str of i not equal to null character i plus plus okay so every time we are incrementing n value here so which is n plus plus and after obtaining the entire result inside n which is counting the number of characters in this string is obtained in variable n okay now we can access the same string in the reverse order where i'll consider uh, another for loop here this time i is equal to n minus 1 okay and i is greater than or equal to 0 i minus minus and i'll start printing character by character here percentage c can be used in order to print character by character so str of i okay so let's run this code and see the result and you can see the result o l l e h is obtained clearly so very simple i have counted the number of characters inside this string and started accessing the string from the last index okay which is n minus 1 if length of the array is n you can access the array from 0 to n minus 1 now i am trying to access the array from n minus 1 to 0 index and display the content okay so this way you can print a reverse of this string okay without using str rev function okay so in this video we'll discuss about uh, how to perform string concatenation so for this purpose uh, start including the respective header files so which is uh, string dot h header file needs to be included here now inside the main function so consider two strings uh, car str1 of okay so here i am taking 20 is equal to hello and i am taking str2 
of size uh, 10 is equal to world okay now we want to perform string concatenation operation so before that i will display string 1 content and string 2 content here so string 1 is uh, using percentage s you can display string 1 content and similarly you can print uh, string 2 corresponding content also here string 2 is percentage s str2 so now let us perform a string concatenation operation here so str cat can be used for string concatenation of str1 comma str2 now string 1 and string 2 will be concatenated and the result will be stored inside string 1 okay so here I will display after concatenation so after concatenation we can actually display here uh, the strings so let us consider here uh, new line and here also new line so after performing the concatenation operation I am going to display the content of string 1 and string 2 okay so let us uh, run this code and see the result so you can observe uh, after concatenation okay so the string 1 content is hello world and string 2 content is world so originally string 1 is hello and string 2 is world after performing concatenation we got string 1 containing hello world and string 2 containing world so there is no space when you apply string concatenation there won't be any space while performing this concatenation operation so if you want to create some space then you can actually store like this very first string and you can observe here so string 1 is uh, hello string 2 is world and now in after performing concatenation operation string 1 contains hello space world okay and there is no change in string 2 clear so this is how string concatenation operation will work now we need to perform a string concatenation operation without using string dot h header file which means uh, if you are removing this string dot h header file so obviously what happens is uh, you can't use a string concatenation operation here <coughs> so for this purpose uh, how you can do this is uh, using loop variable like i and also j so here uh, using uh, loop variable i i want to iterate till the end of this uh, first string and then start copying second string okay so first to reach to the end of the string uh, i have to use uh, loop variable like i str1 of i not equal to null character i plus plus okay so now inside this loop you can see here uh, the last character is not equal to null character okay so it will reach up to this position and then from now onwards uh, you can actually start copying world so till this point uh, we are not going to perform any task so i can write a semicolon here okay so just to move uh, i here so that is the purpose of uh, using it now in order to copy the entire string from now onwards into okay so string 1 whatever content of string 2 you want to copy <clears throat> 
let us perform like this uh, for j equal to 0 str 2 of j is not equal to null character and then j plus plus now we need to copy character by character here okay so let's see how we can copy character by character into string 1 from string 2 is uh, str1 of i is equal to str2 of j and we are iterating this j and now let us increment this i variable i plus plus so after copying the entire string now we can display as str1 content and str2 content okay so and also one more thing is we have to explicitly keep this null character denoting the end of the string for str1 okay so here i will explicitly write null character to denote the end of the string and after concatenation we can display this str1 content and str2 content now let us uh, run this and see the result string 1 is hello string 2 is world after concatenation string 1 contains hello space world and string 2 is world okay so this way we are able to copy the uh, remaining string that is a uh, str2 string after moving to the end of string 1 so that uh, it clearly indicates uh, concatenation operation on this string 1 okay and finally it displays result like this now we'll discuss about uh, concept of pointers so first of all what is meant by a pointer So generally, pointer means uh, a variable which can store the address of another variable. So pointer is a variable which can store address of another variable. So normal variables cannot uh, hold address of another variable. So that's why we require a concept of uh, pointers in order to store the address of another variable. Now I'll show you an example for this uh, pointer variable and its representation. Now consider uh, int variable n is equal to 10. Okay. So this is a normal variable and now let me consider a pointer variable int star p is representing pointer variable and now I am storing the address of n into this pointer variable. Okay. So if you focus on this example here and if I start printing n value. Okay. The same n value can be obtained in multiple ways. So, for example, if I write percentage dn, I will be able to display n value. Similarly, I can also use pointer variable star p in order to display value of n so that it is uh, percentage d star p can be used in order to print value of n. So, if you consider this uh, here n is a variable right so n is a variable and its corresponding value is 10 and then star p is equal to address of n so we are considering address of n as a 2000 and then p is a pointer variable which is holding address of uh, n and it is 2000 so p is a pointer holding address of n now we are Printing n here, so which means uh, this will display output as a 10. And we are using star p to print, which means uh, how this is going to be evaluated. Star p represents uh, 
star of P is containing 2000. So star of 2000, which means content inside 2000 memory location. So this star indicates uh, indirection operator. So which means uh, it is obtaining the contents inside this memory location. So content inside this memory location 2000 is 10. So you can obtain result as 10 here. Now we can write different pointers while declaring let us suppose uh, I am considering different pointers here int star a. So this is a integer pointer. So I can consider this as a pointer which can point an integer location. So this is pointer to an integer memory location. So similarly I am considering a float star b. So this is considered as a pointer to floating point location. So this is pointer to float. And then uh, car star c. So this is a pointer to character data type. Okay. So pointer to car memory location. So like this you can write different pointers. Okay. And you should use uh, integer pointer only to point integer memory location. Similarly floating point pointer to point the floating point location. Okay. And so on like this. Now, let us uh, write a program in order to basically identify the address and uh, display the content inside the pointer. Okay. So, first uh, I will include the header file here. So, this is... Uh, stdio.h and inside the main function I am considering a variable inside the main function we are considering a variable like uh, number so let me consider number is equal to some value like 50 and now we can consider a pointer variable int star p so this is a pointer variable now p is equal to address of number p is a pointer holding address of another variable okay so now we can print address of this variable p okay so let me print this address of p variable is so you can use uh, an unsigned int representation uh, okay percentage uh, u to print this address p and also you can use uh, here value representation so that is uh, value of p so or value pointed by p okay so this is value pointed by ptr pointer p is using percentage d you can print so which is a star p so that will print value that is pointed by pointer p okay so like this you can display address and also value using pointer p okay now let's see what are uh, advantages of using these pointers okay so first of all uh, you can use this pointer okay with other concepts also so advantages of pointer First one is uh, using pointer you can reduce code okay so this will 
reduce the code that we are writing and also it will improve the performance it will improve performance and uh, where you will see this improvement in performance especially in C language while retrieving uh, uh, you know strings uh, or retrieving or accessing trees okay and also one more thing these pointers are used uh, along with other concepts like uh, arrays uh, structures uh, and functions so all these topics uh, will be using these pointers okay so it means uh, whenever you want to access the elements of array one way is to access through its index and the other way is to access with the help of a pointer which is pointing to the base address of the array okay so now another advantage is uh, generally return statement in c can return only a single value whenever you want to return multiple values from a function you can use a pointer so you you can uh, basically return a pointer and using that pointer you can access subsequent memory locations so i can write here whenever you want to return uh, multiple values multiple values from a function okay so you can use concept of pointers so and uh, also whenever you use these pointers uh, it will allow you to access any memory location in the entire computer okay so this will allow us to access uh, any memory location using pointer okay so now let us uh, write a sample program using pointers okay so first uh, i'll perform swapping of two numbers without using third variable but i will use concept of pointers here okay so first uh, include the header file here and inside the main function first you can consider uh, variables like a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 now we will consider pointer variables here star p1 which can hold address of a and star p2 to point address of b okay so now you can actually display the content uh, before the swapping before performing swapping you can uh, display content uh, pointed by p1 and p2 so this can be written as before swap okay star p1 equal to using percentage d okay and also I'm considering a star p2 is equal to percentage d slash n. So here I'm writing star p1 content and star p2 content. Okay. Now let us perform swapping using, okay, without using any third variable directly, you can perform with the help of these pointers. So star p1 is equal to star p1 plus star p2 okay and then uh, here we can write star p2 is equal to star p1 minus star p2 and also star p1 is equal to star p1 minus star p2 and finally after swapping you can display the content like this printf after swapping 
so now you can display this uh, star p1 content and also a uh, star p2 content you can display here so this is going to be star p1 comma star p2 okay so after this sequence of actions clearly the content of a and content of b will be swapped so let me show you how this is going to work here so first uh, you can observe here a is a variable and it is holding value of 10 initially and then b is another variable which is holding value of 20 initially now p1 is a pointer which is holding address of a so let us suppose address of a is 2000 and address of b is 3000 okay so if this is the case then uh, p1 will be a pointer holding address of a which means 2000 memory location so p1 will be pointing to this memory location now p2 is another pointer holding address of b so which is 3000 memory location and p2 is pointing to this one now star p1 is equal to star p1 plus star p2 so which means uh, star p1 is pointing basically this location right now this gets updated by adding star p1 content with the star p2 content star p1 content is 10 and star p2 content is 20 so 10 plus 20 will be 30 and that will be stored inside this location which is pointed by p1 and then star p2 is equal to star p1 minus star p2 so star p1 is contained inside this location which is 30 minus star p2 which is 20 so 30 minus 20 value will be 10 and that will be stored inside this memory location which is pointed by p2 and finally star p1 is equal to star p1 minus star p2 so star p1 is 30 and star p2 is 10 30 minus 10 will be 20 and that will be stored inside this memory location which is pointed by p1 so this should be modified to 20 and finally we are displaying after swapping so star p1 content and then star p2 content so after swapping star p1 content is 20 and star p2 content is 10 so but before swapping you can see star p1 content will be pointing to a and star p2 which means uh, p2 pointer will be pointing to b okay so that is 10 and 20 initially but after performing swapping it is 20 and 10 okay like this next one is uh, double pointer or pointer to a pointer in c okay so you can observe here uh, pointer to a pointer or double pointer so the general definition of pointer to a pointer or a double pointer is uh, any pointer pointing to address of another pointer okay so is considered as pointer to a pointer or double pointer so let me write here pointer holding address of another pointer holding address of another pointer is called pointer to a pointer is called pointer to a pointer or double pointer so what is the general syntax of such double pointer or pointer to a pointer so let me denote the syntax of it so the general syntax will be consider uh, any data type 
it can be integer or character or float or double anything so data type star star okay pointer to a pointer clear so this variable name can be anything but you have to consider two stars which represents double pointer or pointer to a pointer now let's see an example of uh, how to work with variables uh, okay of pointer to a pointer so inside the main function okay so first uh, after including the header file and inside the main function I'm considering like this a is a variable which is holding uh, 10 and also I'm considering uh, a single pointer or normal pointer and this is double pointer or pointer to a pointer okay so first I will store address of a into pointer p and address of p into pointer pp okay now you can display the content using star p or double star p here so i'll show you whenever you want to display the value of a you can write like this or you can also make use of a pointer variable which is a star p or you have another way of accessing the same content with the help of pointer to a pointer that is percentage d double star p okay so using which you can access content inside the memory location a okay so let us see here how this is going to work first of all a is a variable and it is holding a value of 10 okay and p is a pointer holding address of a so which means uh, consider address of a is a 2000 memory location and p is a pointer holding address of a so address of a is a 2000 and p is pointing to this memory location okay now every pointer will also have an address right because uh, that will be stored in some memory location and memory location will have an address so let us suppose uh, 3000 is the address of pointer variable p now this pointer variable corresponding address will be stored inside another pointer which is uh, pointer to a pointer so this is representing pointer to a pointer and will be holding address of p so 3000 you can see pp pointer to a pointer is holding address of p okay now when you start printing value of a so this will give you result as a 10 okay and then when you start printing star p so let's see how this is going to be evaluated star p represents a star of p means 2000 content inside 2000 memory location will be displayed which is 10 again okay now let's see how this pointer to a pointer will be evaluated so here we are printing clearly double star pp so which can be evaluated as a star star of pp content is 3000 so from here to here content inside 3000 memory location so what is the content inside 3000 memory location here so content inside 3000 memory location is clearly 2000 so star of 2000 which means content inside 2000 memory location the answer is 10 so to display the same 10 you can perform these actions okay these are the multiple ways to access the same content which means the same content can be modified either directly using the variable or using a pointer variable or using a double pointer or pointer to a pointer 
Okay. So like this, you can write a program which makes use of a pointer to a pointer and also a single pointer. So now uh, let me uh, show you an example. Okay. For this pointer to a pointer. So first I'll consider uh, the header file and then uh, inside the main function. So let us consider uh, a variable like a is equal to 10 and uh, star p is uh, pointer double star p is pointer to a pointer. Now I'll use p is equal to address of uh, a and uh, another one is uh, pp right so pp is holding address of p okay now in order to display value of a you can access in multiple ways uh, here i'm using new line okay directly you can use variable a okay so here I'll write a is equal to. Now similarly, I want to access with the help of a single pointer, which is a star p. So star p corresponding content I'm going to display here. And after this, uh, we need to print double star p content. So double star p is equal to percentage d slash n double star p. Okay. So now let us uh, run this code and see the result. So here invalid type argument of unary operator okay star have int so let us uh, declare like this uh, okay so consider uh, double star p okay and this is single star p so which means value stored inside this right okay and uh, it is showing in uh, ninth line here okay so one thing i'll do here uh, this is uh, int star p is equal to and this is int star star p equal to invalid type argument of unary star okay sorry here uh, the problem is uh, here we have already taken p as the single pointer and uh, double star p as double star double p okay which is this is the name of the double pointer right so we have written a uh, single p that's why it is showing that error so it's basically pp is the name of the double pointer we have taken we have to use the same name and you can see the result a is equal to 10 star p is equal to 10 double star p is equal to 10 okay so like this you can uh, display the content okay let me consider an example which involves a uh, single pointer and double pointer okay so let us consider x is equal to 10 and i'll consider uh, different variables like uh, star p is a single pointer and double star ptr is a pointer to a pointer okay so here i'll consider p is equal to address of x and ptr is equal to address of p okay so which means uh, if you are performing uh, any action through pointer p or uh, through double pointer ptr so that will affect the memory location which is allocated for variable x 
okay the content inside variable x gets updated so let us suppose uh, i am performing a double star ptr is equal to okay single star p plus 25 okay now finally when you print value of x this will affect value of x original value of x okay so let me show you the result the result should be 35 okay so why 35 is the answer because you can observe double star ptr is actually representing the content inside variable x now this is going to be here star p plus 25 so p is pointing to a memory location x and it contains value 10 so 10 plus 25 10 plus 25 value will be 35 so ptr is the pointer which is pointing to that memory location and its value gets updated to 35 and later we are displaying x value so right now the x value is updated to 35 which means uh, the, this is the same location where we are referring to x and also equal to star p so all these are all equal to 35 x is equal to 35 star p is 35 double star ptr is 35 so this is how you can manipulate the content in a memory location using a single pointer or double pointer like this now we are considering a call by a reference implementation or a passing a address of the variable as a parameter to the function and you can use a pointer to hold the address of the variable okay so let us consider to perform a sum of two given numbers so let us consider a comma b are the two variables so now we can read these variable corresponding values uh, and pass them as parameter to the function okay so now i'll prompt the user here to enter any two values and using scanf function we can read those values like percentage d percentage d address of a comma address of b okay now we need to pass these variables as parameter to a function so that it will compute uh, some of these two numbers so i'll consider find sum as the name of the function and passing two variables address of a comma address of b as parameters and uh, this function i am using return type as uh, void so that i can display the result within this function and using pointer we are performing here uh, star ptr1 comma int star ptr2 so within this function we can compute the uh, result by adding the content which is pointed by ptr1 and ptr2 because uh, ptr1 will be holding uh, address of a and ptr2 will be holding uh, address of b okay now consider another variable called res which is a result variable and now res uh, is equal to star ptr1 plus star ptr2 and finally you can print the result so result after adding is percentage d slash n and you can display res value okay so let's run this code and see the result enter any two values 12 and 23 and you can observe the result after adding is 35 12 plus 23 is 35 so this is how you can pass uh, address of the variable as parameter to the function 
and compute and display the result. So the entire computation is done with the help of these pointer variables which are currently holding the address of the variables which are passed in the main function. Okay. So this is also as an example of call by reference implementation and uh, this is also considered as uh, using pointers as parameter to a function. Okay. Now let us consider a uh, concept of uh, pointer to a function. Okay. So you can also use a uh, pointer in order to point a function. So just like how we have used uh, a pointer to point uh, a variable similar to that you can also use a pointer to point a function in C. Okay. So and also declaring the pointer variable is similar to okay function declaration so let me show you with an example here uh, i want to uh, basically implement uh, main function right now okay so inside this main function i'll consider uh, a variable called a result variable and this pointer I want to point uh, called star PTR. I want to point to another function. So let us suppose uh, the function prototype declaration is addition. Addition is the name of the function. And this is the function prototype declaration. Okay. So now how do you declare a pointer which is pointing to a function? So it should be declared just like how we write a function okay so star ptr okay like this now you can use this ptr to point address of another function which is ptr is equal to address of function name is uh, addition okay now we need to extract the result result is equal to okay so you are basically calling the function generally you will call the function and uh, its corresponding result should be stored inside variable result but right now you can observe uh, ptr is the pointer which is pointing to the function called addition so writing this is nothing but calling a function called addition okay so this is equivalent to calling an addition function here. So now once you get the result, uh, you can display that result. Okay. So the sum is uh, using percentage D, you can display the result. Now let us implement this addition function. Okay. So here as I have already declared the function prototype declaration, I can implement here. Now, inside this function, I'll basically read two variables uh, and their corresponding values, I'm going to perform sum. Okay. So, those two variables are A and B. Okay. And I'll clearly prompt the user to enter any two values. Uh, And using a scanf statement, uh, you can read this uh, percentage D, percentage D, address of A, comma address of B. And finally, you can return A plus B result. Finally, you can return A plus B result. So let's execute and see the result enter any two values i'm entering first value as uh, 10 and next value as 20 and you can see the result the sum is 30 so how this is obtained is clearly instead of uh, calling this addition function directly we are using a pointer to hold the address of the addition function okay and using pointer we are calling this uh, function 
and extracting the result and storing it inside variable called result and then we are displaying that result okay so this is the concept of a pointer to a function in C and it will produce correct results uh, just like this you can enter any two values uh, okay like 2 6 and it will produce the result as 8 okay now we will work on uh, how pointer increment operation and pointer decrement operation is going to work okay so first consider uh, a variable here and its value is uh, 50 and I'm considering another pointer variable star p here so p is equal to address of x okay now you can print uh, here the corresponding address for uh, x which is nothing but p so print f address of p okay or address inside p address which is stored inside uh, p okay so you can display it by writing like this address of x is uh, so you can use uh, percentage u in order to display this address unsigned okay so p you can display now let us run this and see the result first of all you can see this is the current address address of x is uh, so this is the present address okay now i want to increment this uh, p by one location okay so p equal to p plus one represents uh, incrementing by one memory location okay so address is equal to address plus increment by one memory location that memory location is equal to size of integer okay so p gets incremented by size of integer okay or i can say 1 into size of integer is incremented by 1 into size of integer suppose if i am taking uh, p plus 2 then it represents uh, 2 into size of integer it will get incremented so finally when you want to display here uh, after incrementation operation okay after increment address is okay so using percentage u you can display the address here okay and you can start displaying it clear now let's run this code and see the result okay so if you want uh, we can display in a single line you can observe uh, this is the address of x right okay and after performing one increment operation address is exactly incremented by 4 because the 4 is representing size of one integer memory location so that is why it is incremented by 4 now if you consider incremented by 4 for example then this represents uh, p has to be incremented by 4 integer memory locations uh, which is nothing but 4 into size of integer p gets incremented by 4 into size of integer so after incrementation address is uh, you can print here so let's run this code and see the result so initially it is uh, last two digits you can see remaining all are same last two digits 80 and here the last two digits is 96 because the difference is 16 
okay it clearly indicates uh, we are incrementing uh, current address by four memory locations uh, and each memory location is equal to the size of integer okay and size of integer is four bytes so four into four is equal to 16 that is why it gets incremented by 16 okay and now similarly we will consider uh, for decrement operation okay so if you want to consider for decrement operation okay so let us modify here to decrement operation and also here i'll perform p equal to p minus 1 so here p will be decremented by 1 into size of integer yes or no so p is equal to p minus 1 represents p will be decremented by 1 into size of integer and after decrementation the address will be like this okay so let's run this code and see the result you can observe uh, the address of x is uh, last two characters you can see 80 now decrement it by one position which means uh, one memory location equal to the size of integer which is 4 bytes so this should be decremented by 4 so value becomes uh, 76 like this okay at the end now for example if you want to decrement by 4 memory locations then p is equal to p minus 4 which means p will be decremented by 4 into size of integer size of integer is going to be 4 bytes 4 into 4 is equal to 16 so p should be decremented by 16 okay so let's see here so this is 80 and uh, this is 64 last two digits okay remaining all are same so it is clearly getting decremented by 16 okay so this is how uh, pointer increment and uh, decrement operations will take place now in this example we'll see how to access a string using pointer okay so consider the main function inside this main function you are considering a, a character array which is a string so this is a, str of is equal to hello hello is the string now also consider star ptr so ptr is the pointer pointing to the base address of the string okay which means uh, always remember string name is representing the address itself or base address of the entire string so you need to use like this ptr equal to str which means directly str is indicating the address itself so ptr will be holding that address now using ptr you can display the content which is pointed by this ptr okay so using while loop uh, you can display this content uh, while star ptr not equal to null character star ptr not equal to null character then in that case uh, you can print star ptr content so percentage d star ptr and you can use ptr to increment to the next position so this is going to be ptr plus plus incremented by one position and move to the next location and start printing that content and move to the next location like this so let's run this code and see the result okay here uh, you should use percentage c otherwise uh, okay it will display its corresponding uh, ascii value okay so percentage c to get the character exactly so same string hello is displayed let us suppose you have a string like hello space world you will be able to access hello space world using this code you can see the result hello world is displayed so this way you can access the contents of the string with the help of a pointer variable 
Now let us compute uh, length of this string using pointer variable. So you can observe uh, I have taken a string name as hello world and uh, star ptr is the pointer variable. ptr is uh, pointing to the base address uh, which is uh, str. Now you can start counting the number of characters inside this string which is the length of the string. You can consider ln equal to 0 representing the length of the string. Now using while loop you can iterate here. So while star ptr not equal to null character. So if this is the case uh, then you can increment the length of the string okay because you have to count each and every character inside the string so ln plus plus and also move this ptr to the next position after counting the first character it has to move to the second character okay so once all the characters are counted you can display the length of the string here so length of string is percentage d ln using ln a variable you can display the length of the string now let's run this code and see the result length of the string is 11 so clearly there are uh, total 11 characters in this string including space total 11 characters are there so this is how you can find the length of this string okay and uh, you can also try passing this uh, str as parameter to the function and identify the length of the string in another function so let me show you here uh, so ptr is equal to str and uh, we are going to implement a separate function to find the length of the string so I'll write uh, my own function which is my str alien and here I'll use the pointer variable like star ptr pointer okay and you can see ptr is equal to str and here uh, since we are passing character pointer this must be character pointer as well okay so the idea is to just consider uh, a variable called uh, n okay to find the length of the string n is equal to call this function my str len function and pass this uh, str as parameter okay because everything we are computing in the other function so you don't need to take this uh, pointer at all in this function so n is equal to my str alien of str i am passing uh, str as parameter to my str alien function and finally you can display the length of the string here print f uh, string length string length is uh, and here you can display length of the string using variable n okay and you have to implement this my str alien function so with the help of pointers that is character pointer so let us consider uh, another character pointer like uh, char star temp okay and initially i'll consider uh, temp is equal to ptr both this uh, ptr and temp are pointing to the base address of the string str now i will iterate only the temp pointer so while this uh, star temp is not equal to null character we can iterate here so you can move this uh, temp pointer to the next position okay so since uh, only one line you can skip this temp plus plus okay 
once a star temp is pointing to null character then finally you can uh, return here temp minus ptr as we know character location is going to occupy only a one byte okay so temp is now pointing to the last location in the string and ptr is already pointing to the first location in the string so it will give you the difference right and that will become the length of the string okay so let's run this code and see the result string length is 11 so this is a string right hello space world total 11 characters are there and we are able to get the same result okay so this is how you can pass uh, string name as parameter to the function and use character pointer to point to that string and compute the length of the string here okay now in this video i'll show you how to perform a string concatenation operation with the help of pointers so i'll use concept of pointers to perform this string concatenation operation so also i'll perform this string concatenation in a separate function okay so let me write here uh, string concatenation using pointers so first i will uh, include the header file stdio.h now inside the main function i'll consider a couple of strings here so consider str1 equal to hello and str2 equal to world so consider a bigger size for str1 because i want to concatenate inside str1 so that's why we can consider str1 as uh, 20 for example and then uh, i'm concatenating the content of str2 to str1 so let me call a function here which is uh, my str cat function and i'll pass str1 comma str2 as parameters to this function and later we can display str1 content okay so string one is percentage yes you can display str1 content now let us implement this uh, my str cat function so let us consider this function implementation where i'll consider a couple of pointers let's uh, let us suppose i'm considering a star s2 and star s1 here inside uh, my str cat now i want to move to the end of the string you can observe for str1 i am using a s2 as the pointer okay so first you have to use this s2 to iterate to the end of this string so using while loop you can iterate this star s2 is not equal to null character so in that case you simply increment this s2 by 1 And now you need to check whether this uh, s1 is okay so first uh, s1 is already pointing to string 2 right so you have to access character by character and uh, append it to this string okay str1 string which is pointed by s2 so this can be done like this uh, using while loop I'm going to check like this star s1 
is not equal to null character if this condition is true then we can copy and also increment uh, in a single statement so i'm copying uh, like this s star s2 plus plus is equal to star s1 plus plus okay and finally after entire copying is completed then you just need to explicitly place a null character so which can be star s2 is equal to null character okay like this now let us run this code and see the result and you can see the updated string is hello world that is string one is hello world so initially string one contains only hello string two contains world now after performing string concatenation operation which is implemented using pointers where string one is pointed by character pointer s2 and string two is pointed by character pointer s1 first we have moved to the end of string one with the help of uh, s2 pointer and later we started copying with the help of uh, s1 pointer character by character into the location where s2 is pointing so finally we are assigning a star s2 equal to null character which means uh, we are indicating the null character at the end of the string after concatenation so now we are able to access the content of str1 which contains uh, you know concatenated result of str1 and str2 so this is how it will work is now we will implement a string comparison using a concept of pointers so let us consider str1 contains hello and str2 contains world now i want to perform a comparison between these two strings with the help of pointers so let me consider an integer variable which can hold the comparative result and i'll call the function which is uh, my str cmp function by passing str1 and str2 as parameters to this function and finally i will display here result string comparison result is percentage d so we are going to display a result here okay now let us implement this function which is uh, my str cmp function so using pointers let me consider uh, s1 as the pointer to point string 1 and uh, s2 as the pointer to point string 2 okay so how will you get the string comparison result so it is simple where you have to basically compare two strings and uh, identify the ascii value difference between the first non matching character okay so for this purpose, uh, I'll compare the two strings as long as they are equal with the help of while loop. Uh, okay. First, uh, let us suppose uh, star s1 is equal to star s2. Okay. Star s1 is equal to star s2. And uh, also, you need to check here star s1 should be not equal to null okay so this is not equal to null or i can say null character anything is fine so either this is not null or star s2 is not equal to null okay so 
the first condition is uh, the character located inside str1 is equal to character located in str2 okay which is pointed by s1 pointer and s2 pointer and also consider s1 whatever s1 pointer is pointing is not equal to null or s2 pointing is not equal to null so in that case only we will proceed further okay so in that case we will increment s1 to the next position and also s2 to the next position so s1 will be incremented and s2 will be incremented now here i will return the difference between s1 and s2 so here return star s1 minus star s2 so that will give you the difference between star s1 and star s2 which is nothing but uh, non matching characters corresponding difference okay so either s1 is not null or s2 is not null then only this will this particular loop is run running okay so overall uh, you can see when this condition is true then only it will work right so this must be true and also this this must be true so which means uh, the characters should be matching at the same time any one of the string is uh, not reaching null okay so till that point you can see s1 pointer and s2 pointer are incrementing to the next positions and whenever you find there is a non matching character or both are uh, reaching to null in such cases you have to immediately find the difference between these characters okay so those non matching characters let's run this code and see the result you can see string comparison result is minus 15 because uh, we are comparing uh, hello with world first non matching character is uh, directly h and w itself okay so h minus w the difference is clearly 15 characters difference and this h comes first when compared to w that's why h minus w will lead to minus 15 so the result is shown as minus 15 okay so let us suppose i want to modify this string like uh, x y z and also this as uh, x x z now let's run this code and see the result y minus x is going to produce 1 okay like this suppose if i am giving this as x x z and this is uh, x y z in such case you will get uh, result as minus 1 suppose if the both the strings are uh, equal basically x y z and x y z in such case you will get result as 0 okay now we'll discuss about uh, pointers and one dimensional arrays so if you observe this concept of pointers and uh, one dimensional arrays first i'll show you how this pointer can be used to access the content inside this one dimensional array okay so whenever i declare uh, an array let us suppose uh, int a of 5 okay so you can observe there will be uh, five contiguous memory locations so you can see this is uh, an array called a okay and this is indicating uh, the very first location then a of 1 this is a of 2 this is a of 3 this is a of 4 like this now using pointer you can access uh, content inside each of these locations okay so let us suppose i want to store at compile time the list of values uh, inside this array suppose if i store like this 10 20 30 40 50 
So in this case, uh, these are the values that are stored. 10 will be stored here, 20 is stored here, 30 is stored here, 40 is stored here, and 50 will be stored here. Now, consider the base address. Let us suppose this is the base address of the array, which is 2000. And this is uh, 2004, as integer is occupying 4 bytes. This is 2008, this is 2012, and this is 2016. These are the corresponding addresses. Now, using pointer, we can actually point to the base address of the entire array. Okay. So this can be indicated, let us suppose, uh, using uh, a pointer variable. So consider uh, int star ptr. So ptr is the pointer variable I'm using. And uh, this ptr can point uh, to the base address of the array address of a of 0 for example you can store like this address of a of 0 or simply a itself a is representing the base address okay so now when you perform this action ptr equal to address of a of 0 it is going to consider this pointer variable called a ptr okay and it will store the address of the base address of the entire array a or a of 0 corresponding address which is 2000 this will store 2000 and ptr will be pointing to this memory location okay now using ptr you can access each and every element inside the array okay so for this purpose i will take another loop variable called i so I'll write a sample for loop to iterate and access each and every element inside this array with the help of a pointer. So i is equal to 0 and then consider i less than 5 because there are 5 elements inside the array. Now using printf statement we can display each of this element printf percentage d slash t. Now I'll display ptr is pointing to this location how can i get the element so when i mean ptr i'll get 2000 when i write a star ptr i'll get content inside 2000 memory location which is 10 and after that i want to access this content called 20 then 30 then 40 then 50 like this so in such case uh, i value we are going to use that updated i value and write star of ptr plus i star of ptr plus i so this i value will be iterated starting from i equal to 0 up to i is equal to 4 and this is a star of ptr plus i so when i mean uh, star of ptr plus i this is actually equivalent to okay so you can observe uh, star of ptr plus 0 so this is uh, equivalent to writing a of 0 okay and when you consider i is equal to 1 this will become star of ptr plus 1 and this will be equivalent to a of 1 okay and uh, writing star of ptr plus 2 where i is equal to 2 in this case, it is equivalent to A of 2 and so on. Similarly, you can see here uh, star of PTR plus 4. This is nothing but uh, A of 4. Okay. Like this. And uh, if there are n number of elements stored inside the array, so in that case, uh, you can simply write star of ptr plus n is equal to a of n okay or it can be k simply ptr plus k is equal to a of k like that okay so now let me basically read the entire content of the array with the help of pointers itself and display the content of the one dimensional array so first uh, take the header file
and inside the main function I'm going to consider uh, an array here okay so consider array is uh, a of 20 for example and I'm using two variables n and i so inside n you can store the number of elements or length of the array for this purpose uh, you can print the statement enter number of elements or simply enter array size so using scanf statement you can read that particular size into variable called n address of n now we can prompt the user basically to read okay or enter those many elements so here you can ask enter percentage d elements so which means uh, n elements uh, we are asking the user to enter now using for loop uh, i'm going to access okay so directly here i'm not even taking any pointer so using array only i'm accessing here i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus now we can store using scanf statement so this is scanf percentage d a plus i okay so we are storing inside the array and now when you want to display similarly using uh, printf you can just say displaying elements of array and after that uh, you can uh, simply use this uh, for loop i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus and uh, using printf statement uh, you can display like this percentage d star of a plus i content inside that particular address is obtained and you can close this uh, main function so this code is basically for uh, reading with the concept of pointers and uh, this is using uh, okay concept of pointers we are displaying the content of one dimensional array or you can directly take another pointer and point to this base address of the array and start iterating okay so either the way you can do it so let me show you with an example okay where i will uh, modify and show you different ways uh, so let us uh, consider uh, accessing the content of the array here. So in the main function, I'm considering a array here that is a of 20 comma. Okay. n comma i now i'll prompt the user to basically enter n value so once you enter n value using scanf statement you can uh, read it into variable n okay so later you can prompt the user to enter percentage d values and uh, exactly you need to get uh, n number of values okay then using for loop uh, you can start storing these values inside this array with the notation of pointer notation so using scanf statement you can write like this percentage d simply a plus i this denotes 
here a plus i is nothing but uh, address of a of i address of a of i so you can see here a plus i is uh, equivalent to address of a of i okay just like this now here similarly i want to display this content so using printf uh, you can just display array elements and again uh, using for loop here okay and instead of scanf you have to use printf statement to display the content printf percentage d star of a plus i this will give you the content inside that memory location okay and uh, if i write like this this represents uh, a of i means uh, it is equivalent to star of a plus i star of a plus y is equivalent to a of i so let's run this code and see the result okay so here we have to use a semicolon yeah enter n value i'm entering n value as 5 now it will ask you to enter five values let us suppose 10 20 30 40 and 50 are the values i have given so you can see the same values are getting printed okay so i'll use here a percentage 4d so that there will be some space while displaying the elements so this time i have entered 6 as n value so consider different values like 12 34 23 56 63 42 okay these are the six elements i have given now you can see displaying array elements 12 34 23 56 63 42 same so instead of writing star of a plus i okay you can directly write a of i this is a general notation where we have used it till now while working with arrays okay so address of a of i let me show you here in arrays this is the notation we have used suppose n value is 4 12 23 45 and 56 you can see the same values are displayed okay and now instead of uh, using the array name directly you can also use uh, a pointer separate pointer an integer pointer okay where you can use this ptr to point address of a of 0 okay now using pointer you can access everything here uh, simply write ptr plus i and here instead of writing a of i you can write uh, star of ptr plus i okay so this will also work and this time i have given uh, n value as 5 so elements are 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And you can see displaying array elements 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Like this. Okay. Now in this video, we'll discuss about uh, how to access a two-dimensional array using concept of pointers. So this is uh, pointers and 2D arrays that is two dimensional arrays. Okay. Now, if you consider here uh, generally in array, let us suppose uh, I'm considering an array which is a two dimensional array like uh, A of 2, 3 this denotes uh, basically an array called a which contains how many rows uh, 
So there are two rows and three columns. There are two rows and three columns. So row number and then these are all column numbers, right? Okay. So, if you look at these locations, uh, this is representing A of 0, 0. Okay. And this is representing A of 0, 1. This is A of 0, 2. This is representing A of 1, 0. And this is A of 1, 1. This is A of 1, 2. Like this. Now, when I want to store a value in this particular location, we generally write address of A of 0, 0. Okay. And this is clearly equivalent to writing star of A plus 0 plus 0 using pointers. Okay. And suppose uh, if you want to display this content, that is A of 0, 0 content you want to display, okay, using print of statement, then its equivalent is uh, in pointers, it is a star of, star of A plus 0 plus 0. Okay. So these two are equivalent. Similarly, these two are equivalent. Now, let me show you here clearly. When I mean the representation as, uh, suppose uh, A is the array, okay. Int A of uh, 2, 3, the same array. What does this A represent, sir? Okay. So, when I mean A, it actually represents a pointer to the first row. Okay. So this is representing pointer to first row directly. So when I write A plus I, it represents pointer to the ith row. Okay. Pointer to ith row. Now, for example, if I write uh, star of A plus I, and this is representing pointer to the first element in the ith row, okay, pointer to very first element in ith row. Suppose if I write uh, star of A plus I plus J, so this represents a pointer to the ith element in the ith row. Okay. Pointer to ith element. Okay. So in the ith row. Now when I mean now uh, star of star of a plus i plus j this represents the value that is stored inside ij location okay so which is nothing but uh, value stored at okay in array representation you can see value stored at a of ij location so this is the meaning here okay so now whenever we want to basically read the elements into a two-dimensional array, okay, and also display the elements from the two-dimensional array, so we can uh, write like this. Uh, first, uh, I will include the respective header file, stdio.h. Now, using this uh, main function, Okay, so first I'll consider uh, an array called X and uh, its size as 5 by 5. Okay, and also I'll consider PQ for uh, indicating row size and column size. 
i and j are the loop variables here so now first we will print okay or display the user to enter the order of matrix enter the order of matrix so you need to read this order of the matrix percentage d percentage d address of p and address of q because p is representing the row size and q is representing the column size here and then you can prompt the user to enter order of matrix that the corresponding elements number of elements is equal to uh, p into q right so i can write uh, enter percentage d elements here and the number of elements should be p into q number of elements okay so once user started entering those many elements uh, you can read them inside the array okay using uh, for loop i equal to 0 to iterate through the row so i less than p i plus plus and similarly for j equal to 0 j less than q j plus plus now using this scan of statement we can read by writing like this percentage d so generally in arrays you will write address of a of or uh, whatever array name is uh, here i have considered array name as uh, x so you have to write address of x of i j and we have already discussed here address of uh, x of i j is nothing but uh, you have to write like this okay that is a star of uh, x plus i plus j so using pointers its equivalent is uh, star of x plus i plus j clear like this now this is using a scan of statement we are reading and later we are going to display the content here so in the form of a matrix so which is a two dimensional array there is matrix content you can display like this so while displaying uh, again you can use this for loop i equal to 0 i less than p i plus plus this is indicating the row and then uh, column wise uh, for j equal to 0 j less than q j plus plus okay now you can print like this print f uh, percentage d this is uh, printing purpose you have to write star of star of x plus i plus j okay because uh, this is equivalent to writing uh, simply x of i j okay so for two dimensions you require two stars to access the content inside that location okay and then uh, you have to use new line so that uh, after every row it will move to the new line to print the next line and then close this so this is the format that we use here in order to basically read and write contents of the two dimensional array with the help of pointers okay now let us uh, implement this and see if there are any changes needed so here first i'll include uh, the respective header file stdio.h and inside this main function I'll consider uh, a sample array which is a two-dimensional array okay 
consider there are uh, two rows and three columns uh, and I'll go for compile time initialization for the first time okay four five six and I'll just uh, display these elements using pointers uh, okay i is a loop variable and j is a loop variable now using for loop uh, we can i treat like this i equal to 0 i less than 2 i plus plus okay because uh, 2 is representing the row size now consider column size 3 so j equal to 0 j less than 3 j plus plus and you can print this here print f usually you will write percentage d okay a of i j notation right in order to display the content in the form of uh, a matrix so line by line okay so if you want, uh, I can write a message uh, matrix uh, is uh, here. You can display the matrix content. Now let's execute this and uh, see the result. So in order to display basically elements with some space after it, you have to write percentage wd format okay where w is representing the width so i have used uh, three characters width so one character will be printed and remaining two characters will act as spaces okay so this is how we generally print a two-dimensional array now i'll replace this with its corresponding uh, notation using pointers that is a star of star of a plus i plus j okay now let's run this code and see the result you can see matrix is uh, there are two rows and three columns okay the same matrix is displayed using this yes or no so as I told, there are two indices because this is a two-dimensional array. To access the content, you have to use a double star here. That is a one star and then another star. Suppose if you are writing only a single star, then I'll show you what happens here. If you are not writing two stars and writing a single star like this, then you will end up printing all the addresses okay suppose uh, there are since it is address you can see the result is this one these are all addresses that are allocated for uh, this particular matrix okay so if you want to access the content inside it you have to use another star here okay So it is completely closed, right? Yeah. Now let's run and see the result. You can see like this you will get. Now let us suppose uh, if I wanted to basically read the entire content of the matrix, uh, then in that case uh, at runtime, you can store like this. For example, this is uh, uh, something like 10 here. Okay and uh, also this is another 10 10 by 10 uh, two dimensional array i'm taking but you can prompt the user to basically enter the order of the matrix okay so printf enter order of matrix okay now you have to read that particular matrix that is percentage d percentage d address of p comma address of q okay 
later you need to prompt the user to enter those many elements like enter percentage d elements okay so which means exactly p into q elements and once the user starts entering those many elements you can start reading them okay i less than p because p is representing the row size and uh, j equal to 0 j less than q j plus plus because j is representing the column that is a uh, okay so q is representing the size of the column and uh, now i'll use this scanner statement in order to read these elements so percentage d okay as the address i have already shown you this is uh, representing clearly the address right so you have to store the element inside that address and then you can access it so again uh, since we have taken uh, p by q as the order you have to use that p by q order in order to display these elements so let's uh, run this code and see the result enter order of the matrix for example order of the matrix is 3 by 3 it will prompt you to enter nine elements the elements are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay and you can now see the matrix is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 like this okay so this is how you can use concept of pointers to access and store content uh, in the two-dimensional array okay yes uh, in this session uh, we will discuss about uh, dynamic memory management okay so this is also termed as uh, dynamic memory allocation so generally what is the problem with this static memory allocation okay so if you consider uh, in c language uh, we often use uh, this uh, static memory location an example for a uh, static or fixed memory location is uh, let us suppose you have declared int a of 5 and then semicolon so this actually represents uh, it is going to allocate five contiguous memory locations it will allocate five contiguous memory locations just like this one two three four and five now this location is representing a of zero so this is a of one this is a of two a of three and this is a of four like this there will be five contiguous memory locations now the problem with uh, static memory location so this is considered as a static or fixed way of allocating memory so the problem here is uh, if you want to store uh, 10 elements uh, you cannot store because uh, the memory is allocated only for five contiguous elements okay suppose if you are using only two elements then uh, remaining memory location will be wasted that is uh, 5 minus uh, 2 equal to 3 locations will be clearly wasted. Memory is wasted for 3 locations. Okay. So this is a problem with uh, static or uh, fi fixed memory location. Okay. Now to overcome this, uh, in C we have dynamic memory location where you supply value dynamically and the memory is allocated based on the value that you have supplied. Okay. So, for example, you are taking n value at runtime and it can create n contiguous memory locations as per your requirement. Okay. So, that is considered as a dynamic memory allocation. And here, there are different uh, dynamic memory allocation functions available in C. Okay. So, those functions are, first one is uh, malloc function. So, this is... Uh, malloc function okay and uh, 
using malloc generally we allocate uh, whatever requested size of bytes uh, by the user those many bytes of memory will be allocated and the pointer will be pointing to the first byte of the memory so which we will be discussing shortly in detail next another one is uh, calloc so this is another dynamic memory management function so where it is going to allocate space for uh, an array of elements and uh, it will also initialize all these elements to zero okay and it will return the pointer of the first location okay and then coming to free so this is used to basically deallocate the memory space which is allocated previously so you might have already allocated some memory space using malloc or calloc but using free you are going to deallocate the memory that is allocated using malloc calloc okay so next coming to realloc so according to realloc uh, whenever the dynamically allocated memory space is not sufficient then you have a chance to reallocate how much you want okay so for that purpose uh, reallocation function will be useful that is realloc function so it will basically help you to modify the uh, size of whatever allocated space you have done previously okay so these four are the dynamic memory management functions okay so let's discuss in detail about the uh, very first function which is malloc function okay so as this malloc function is going to allocate a block of memory right it will allocate whatever uh, block that you specify how many blocks you want okay so those many blocks of memory it will allocate okay and uh, consider how you are going to allocate this and uh, how the pointer will be pointing to the first location so the general syntax of the malloc is uh, ptr is equal to okay data type star you have to specify it like this data type star and then malloc of byte size so this is the general syntax of uh, using malloc okay now let us uh, consider an example here so here i'm going to consider uh, a pointer variable called int star p now p is equal to int star okay i'm applying malloc here int star malloc of byte size okay let us suppose i am writing like this 5 into size of int 5 into size of int so this is going to basically allocate uh, 5 into size of integer how many bytes it will return the byte size right so size of integer is uh, basically 4 bytes then 5 into 4 is equal to 20 so this will allocate 20 bytes of memory space and this will be pointed by the pointer p okay pointer p will be pointing to this very first location so let me show you how this is going to be done okay so first of all uh, it is creating five contiguous integer memory locations so five contiguous integer memory locations so this is 1 2 3 4 5 like this okay 
and uh, consider the very first one is uh, a location called thousand for example and this will be thousand four and this is thousand eight okay this is uh, 1012 and this is 1016. So like this, five contiguous memory locations will be created. And uh, P will be a pointer holding the base address of this particular array. So P is a pointer, okay. And this is pointing to the base address just like this, okay. So, now you can observe five contiguous memory locations are created okay and uh, p is a pointer which is pointing to the base address of the entire array okay so this is done with the help of malloc suppose if memory is not allocated in that case uh, p will be pointing to null okay suppose uh, there is no memory space of uh, five contiguous memory locations uh, in that case it has to return null so generally, okay, five is a small number, so it will allocate, but uh, let us suppose you are given very large number, okay, and that contiguous uh, memory space, uh, okay, so it doesn't have that, that much of memory space. In that case, uh, it is going to return uh, null, okay. So this is about uh, malloc. Now quickly, we will see about uh, one more function okay in order to write any program we require uh, another function which is uh, free function okay so i'll first discuss about free function why because you have to deallocate whatever memory that is allocated by you right so it is used to deallocate memory which is allocated using pointer deallocate memory and if you look at the general syntax of uh, free here so you can write it as uh, free of ptr writing free of ptr so it will free the memory allocated by the pointer ptr okay so now let us consider the same example which you have considered already that is the int star p p is equal to in star malloc of 5 into size of int now after this you want to deallocate whatever memory that is allocated so you can do this with the help of uh, free by writing free of p okay so this will deallocate the memory which is allocated using pointer p here okay and uh, in order to make use of this uh, functions uh, okay which are part of uh, dynamic memory management so you need to include its corresponding header file which is uh, malloc.h okay so you can include malloc.h so let us uh, consider writing a program here so where you are going to allocate memory with the help of malloc okay so first include uh, the standard header file which is a stdio.h now you want to use this malloc functionality so for this purpose include malloc.h so this is uh, malloc.h okay now using main function okay First, I am taking a pointer because you need pointer to point to the base address of the memory allocated. So, int star iptr, okay. And uh, n is a variable and i is another variable. I am using i for uh, uh, basically iteration purpose and uh, n is representing how many elements uh, you want to store, okay. So, let us allocate uh, memory based on n value using malloc so first we can prompt the user to basically enter n value okay or ask the user to enter number of elements so how many elements are there you have to enter 
so after entering the number of elements uh, then using scanf statement we can read that value into variable n so that is percentage d address of n percentage d address of n okay so using this n value okay so we can allocate using uh, malloc where iptr is pointing to the base address uh, of the memory allocated so iptr is equal to now it has to typecast to integer pointer because uh, we are trying to store all integer values here okay and uh, allocate using malloc how much of bytes you are allocating so which is nothing but n into size of integer size of integer so this will allocate memory for uh, n integers right okay and after this uh, using n value you can start storing elements uh, with the help of scanf statement okay so let's see how this can be done is uh, first of all i'll prompt the user to enter these many elements because uh, you have already taken n value so you have to supply n number of elements so i am writing enter percentage d elements then user starts entering those many elements okay and uh, once those elements are entered okay then you have to start storing it uh, into the memory allocated using malloc so this can be done with the help of uh, a loop variable i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus okay and using scanf statement you can store right uh, so that is a scanf percentage d so this is a iptr plus i iptr plus i so the base address is pointed by iptr okay when i value is 0 first it will store the element in that location then it is incremented by i it means it will go to the next location and store the next element so this is how scanf works here now we want to display all the elements which are stored here right now so you can write a printf statement uh, saying the list of elements okay the list of elements okay now using for loop you can uh, iterate and display all these elements like i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus now start displaying these elements with the help of printf statement uh, okay so where you want content inside the memory location so use a star because uh, you are trying to access with the help of pointer variable iptr so star of iptr plus i using which you can access the content inside each of this memory location which is pointed by iptr okay so once the accessing is done you just need to deallocate the memory which is already allocated using malloc so for this purpose you have to use uh, free of iptr we are deallocating the memory which is allocated using iptr that is using malloc okay so this is the entire uh, program okay so let's see how this program is going to work first of all so in the output screen uh, generally it will ask you to first uh, enter number of elements because program execution starts from the main function and uh, here it is uh, printing this statement right uh, which is enter number of elements so let us suppose you have entered a number of elements as 5 okay then what happens here it will create 5 contiguous memory locations okay so consider here how this creation happens is uh, using iptr okay 
IPTR will be the pointer which will be pointing to whatever memory that is allocated using malloc okay and here we are considering n is equal to 5 which means uh, it will create uh, 5 contiguous uh, integer locations like this okay now malloc has to typecast after that uh, we are performing typecasting into integer okay by default uh, it will be a void pointer okay or generic pointer so that's why you need to type convert it into its corresponding data type as iptr is uh, an integer pointer okay you have to type convert into integer so once the memory is allocated like this for n value equal to 5 okay then if you look at the next statement here enter percentage d elements uh, which means uh, it will prompt in the output screen saying that enter five elements because n value is five here okay now you can start entering those five elements let us suppose uh, you have entered 10 20 30 40 and 50 these elements are entered so then these elements will be stored one after the other here 10 20 30 40 and 50 so why because uh, since i value is 0 okay so iptr plus 0 will be representing this location okay so consider uh, this is address 1000 this will be 1004 this is 1008 this is 1012 this is 1016 okay now using iptr we are pointing to the base address okay now we are going to display the list of elements here okay so finally it is going to display the list of elements the list of elements so what are the elements that you are displaying is using star you are trying to access each and every element here so the same elements will be displayed when i equal to zero this element will be displayed in the next iteration when i equal to one okay iptr will be incremented by one memory location so this element of 20 will be displayed and so on like this you are able to display all these elements okay and finally free of iptr okay so which means uh, it is going to basically deallocate the memory which is allocated using iptr so you are no longer will be able to access that content okay so this is how the malloc works and also free works okay so this is how you can allocate memory using malloc and deallocate the memory using uh, free in dynamic memory management so now in this program i'll show you uh, how to basically use this uh, malloc in order to allocate memory dynamically so first uh, include the header file okay and also include uh, malloc dot h header file okay in the main function so first consider uh, the pointer called uh, star iptr okay and then uh, i is a loop variable then n is representing a uh, number of elements that you want to store okay so i'll just prompt the user to basically enter the elements so enter number of elements okay and uh, using scanf statement we can read n value here address of n 
now using this printf statement uh, we can prompt like this uh, enter percentage d elements okay so that is a uh, n number of elements you have to enter okay so now using a uh, for loop uh, you can read those elements like i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus and using scan of statement okay so once you want to basically enter and store okay so what is required is you have to allocate memory isn't it so once user starts entering n number of elements uh, so you have to allocate memory so which is using uh, malloc you are allocating here iptr is equal to okay so type conversion here and then uh, using malloc of i am allocating uh, n locations uh, and each location is of integer data type uh, so this is size of integer okay so once the memory is allocated now we are able to store here so that is a iptr plus i okay so this is how you can store here and then now we want to display these elements uh, which are stored here so I can just uh, write a printf statement saying uh, displaying uh, elements so in order to display elements you require uh, again this for loop to iterate okay but printf statement to display the content so percentage d okay to access the content inside it using star you can access here iptr plus i and finally we will deallocate the memory which is allocated using uh, iptr okay so let's run this code and see the result and you can see it is asking you to enter number of elements I'm entering value as 5 now I'm entering 10 20 30 40 50 okay so the same elements are getting displayed here if you want uh, them to be displayed in some format okay then you can use this percentage 40 so let us uh, enter this time uh, only three elements okay and those three elements are like 10 20 30 so you can observe we are displaying those three elements 10 20 30 so whatever n value that you are giving uh, those many continuously allocated memory is created with the help of dynamic memory management function which is malloc and the pointer will be pointing to the first location okay suppose this time i am entering a uh, enter number of elements as a 10 so let us suppose those uh, 10 elements are like this okay now you can see here displaying elements 1 2 3 4 up to 10 all these elements are displayed here okay now what happens when you are trying to deallocate first and then trying to access the content let us suppose i am replacing the statement i am removing here and uh, placing here okay then what happens is uh, you are not able to access that content you can see because the memory is allocated but later you have deallocated the memory right so whatever content some garbage values that are stored in those locations will get printed here okay because you have allocated memory using malloc here and later stored the content 
using pointer you have stored and later immediately you have deallocated memory now you are trying to display the content okay so in this case what happens since it is already deallocated okay now you are trying to display in those locations there will be some garbage values so they will get printed okay so that's why you must do this deallocation after your uses is completed okay like this now we'll discuss about uh, next function which is uh, dynamic memory management function called calloc so generally in this calloc function it will actually allocate uh, just like uh, malloc it will also allocate memory so but here we are going to allocate uh, mostly this blocks of memory so in malloc you can say it is kind of bytes of memory that you are allocating but in calloc you are allocating uh, blocks of memory like uh, n number of blocks you want to allocate you can allocate it so it allocates uh, blocks of memory okay now let us consider this syntax of calloc okay so calloc syntax can be ptr is equal to data type star okay so you have to write uh, calloc so generally in malloc you will write n into size of data type but here it is n comma size of data type there will be two arguments for calloc function one is number of blocks followed by size of each block okay so here you have to supply size of data type okay so this is the general syntax here okay so now once you allocate uh, memory using calloc uh, so the entire uh, memory containing different locations uh, okay so they will be automatically initialized to zero okay each of the memory block will be filled with zero so let me show you here uh, how this is going to work so consider uh, an example like int star p so p is the pointer now p is equal to so using a calloc we are allocating memory here so int star calloc of let us suppose i am writing a 10 comma size of integer so here it is going to allocate uh, memory which is a 10 locations of memory okay and each location or block is of size of integer type and it will fill automatically each block containing data as zero okay so let us uh, consider here p is the pointer okay pointing to the base address of the memory which is allocated so this is first one second one and so on like this okay suppose you are considering this location as 2000 and size of integer is 4 bytes okay so you will see like this and so on now p will be holding the base address of this memory and each location will be automatically filled with zero initially according to calloc 
and the primary difference between calloc and malloc is uh, in calloc we are passing two arguments okay whereas in case of malloc we are passing uh, a single argument and in case of calloc uh, we are allocating blocks of memory whereas uh, in malloc we are allocating bytes of memory so now this is how the entire memory is allocated and, and another difference is uh, in calloc each of these locations uh, will be initialized to zero whereas in case of malloc uh, they will be garbage values okay there will be garbage values so let us uh, write a program which makes use of this uh, calloc function in order to create uh, memory dynamically okay so first let us uh, include the header file which is uh, stdio.h okay and also include uh, malloc.h header file okay now consider the main function okay so inside this main function i'll take a pointer variable that is just like uh, previously we have considered iptr similarly here also i'm considering a pointer variable star iptr now we need to prompt uh, the user to enter uh, number of elements so here enter number of elements okay so once the user enters a number of elements then using scanf we can read this number of elements like uh, percentage d address of n okay now using iptr we can allocate uh, n locations okay so we call it as uh, n blocks of memory can be allocated using calloc all integer blocks i am using here so in star calloc of n comma size of integer n comma size of int okay now we need to prompt the user to enter those many elements okay so that is uh, enter percentage d elements okay so once you enter those many elements uh, okay they have to be stored right uh, so whatever memory that is allocated using calloc using which you can store these elements uh, i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus and uh, using scanf uh, okay you can uh, store here that is uh, percentage d iptr plus i okay so you can store the elements uh, here and now you can display the elements uh, okay just like this printf uh, the list of elements okay so you can write like this the list of elements okay now you can observe here uh, i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus okay now let's print uh, these elements using the pointer we can access okay like uh, star of iptr plus i okay you can access so finally you are able to uh, basically read the elements into it and also display the elements now we can deallocate the memory which is allocated so again write free of iptr 
so that whatever memory is allocated will be deallocated okay so if you look at this program okay compared to the malloc uh, program this is quite similar except this particular line is varying where you have allocated memory using calloc here and the syntax for the calloc is uh, calloc of n comma size of data type okay so this is the only change here okay so let us uh, work on it and display the content whatever is taken now here let us uh, read this iptr pointer okay and the n also i so here we will prompt the user to enter number of elements enter number of elements okay so using scanf statement uh, we can read it so percentage d address of n okay now using iptr we are going to allocate memory using calloc so here in star calloc of n comma size of integer okay so now let us uh, enter those many elements uh, so we can ask the user to enter those many elements which is n number of elements uh, okay so once you start uh, entering those many elements uh, using for loop you can read it i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus using scanf statement we can read it percentage d okay iptr plus i okay now we can start displaying uh, those elements here uh, printf okay the list of uh, elements you can display okay so using for loop uh, for i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus okay using printf statement we can display printf percentage uh, d okay suppose uh, i want some spaces while displaying you can write star of iptr plus i okay and finally you can uh, deallocate whatever memory that is allocated using the pointer iptr okay with the help of calloc you have allocated okay so let's run this code and see the result enter number of elements i have entered number of elements as uh, five here okay so the elements are 10 20 30 40 50 okay you can see it is uh, displaying those elements exactly so what happens uh, when I remove this uh, free of IPTR here and uh, use here. Okay. So let's run this and uh, see the result. Five elements 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay. Again, you can see here uh, you are uh, deallocating the memory. Okay. So after deallocating the memory, you are trying to access, right? That is a problem. Okay. So in that case, you will get uh, uh, some garbage values.
okay so that's why you should always uh, use this uh, free of iptr here after deallocating the memory that is uh, after accessing all the elements and then start deallocating memory and one more thing is suppose uh, you are not going to use these lines like uh, entering uh, elements uh, okay and storing those elements into this uh, memory so in that case what will be the result okay so let us suppose i have entered value as 5 and you can see the list of elements are 0 0 0 0 0 why because uh, according to calloc once the memory is allocated okay it will place all zeros uh, in those memory locations by default so that's why you are getting uh, default values as uh, zeros okay so this is how calloc works so next one is uh, real lock okay so in case of uh, real lock we are going to reallocate the memory if the currently allocated memory is uh, insufficient okay so the original memory allocation can be done using uh, malloc or calloc you will start allocating memory later you want to expand memory okay so you can start using realloc okay using realloc you can reallocate memory so general syntax for this uh, realloc will be you can write like this new ptr is equal to data type star real lock data type star real lock of old ptr comma new size old ptr comma new size okay so this is uh, real lock corresponding syntax so what is meant by old ptr here okay so here i can write uh, where old ptr is actually representing the pointer that is pointing to the block of memory which is already allocated using either malloc or calloc as i told uh, originally you will be allocating some memory using uh, malloc or calloc right and this old pointer is actually representing the pointer pointing to the old memory to memory and this memory is uh, allocated using uh, malloc or calloc okay so that is representing this uh, old memory now what is new size so new size will be representing uh, updated size that you want to allocate using real lock so i can write here as a size of the new block okay or size of the block to be reallocated clear so again here also once you reallocate memory new pointer will be now pointing to that newly allocated memory using uh, real lock so let me show you an example here okay so consider uh, an example using real lock first i am considering a pointer int is a pointer here int star p now i am allocating uh, memory using malloc for this int is a pointer so this is a uh, int star malloc of we can write uh, okay for example i want to allocate 10 memory locations so 10 into size of int 10 into size of int okay so it will allocate uh, 10 locations and each is of uh, size of integer 
Now we can allocate using uh, realloc. So if already allocated memory is uh, not sufficient, okay. So you can allocate using real lock. Let us suppose I want uh, 20 locations. Okay, new size is 20 for example. So in that case I can write int star real lock of. So what is the old pointer? Here I am using the old pointer and new pointer both as same P only. So old pointer comma new size. Right now I am allocating new size as 20. Earlier 10 locations or 10 blocks are allocated. Now it is 20 blocks we are reallocating. So the old pointer and new pointer both are same. Okay. Which means the new pointer will be okay. The same pointer P will be pointing to the newly allocated memory. Okay. So previously here you can see there are 10 blocks of memory. 10 into 4 is equal to 40 bytes of memory is allocated. But using this uh, this is going to be 20 right 20 into 4 which will be 80 bytes of memory will be allocated so for both of this we are using a same pointer to point so p will be now pointing to the updated memory which is 80 bytes of memory okay so now let us uh, consider an example here uh, for uh, real lock Okay, so first I will uh, basically consider uh, allocating for character pointer. Let me implement uh, directly. Okay, so I'm using a character pointer here. I'm using a character pointer. So where I can write it as a car star name, for example. Okay, car star name. So this is my character pointer using which I am allocating memory. So that is uh, name is equal to, okay. So char star malloc of, okay. So here let us suppose I am allocating uh, 10 contiguous locations uh, and each is of character data type. So which means, uh, size of char is 1 byte 10 into 1 is 10 bytes of memory i am allocating using malloc okay so now i want to copy some content into this uh, you can make use of uh, strcpy for copying but for that purpose you have to include uh, another header file which is a string.h header file string.h header file okay so once I have included, now we are free to use this uh, strcpy. Okay. So I am writing uh, or placing a string called Hyderabad. Okay. So after copying uh, this, now we are trying to print name which is uh, located at that particular address okay let us suppose uh, i will try to print the name which i am storing which is hyderabad and that is stored is at address okay so the address is a uh, percentage p okay so we can write it as name comma name so you can observe uh, first time name will be printed in the exact string format okay but second time you can see the same name but percentage p is used which means the address will be displayed okay now this is using uh, malloc we have allocated let us suppose i want to store a bigger string okay so in that case, uh, this is not sufficient, right? So I'll make use of real lock. Let us suppose uh, char star. Okay. So I use uh, real lock and allocate here. Let us suppose uh, 
some 15 characters okay i'm trying to store so this is a size of character type okay so here also semicolon here also semicolon okay now i am trying to copy another string okay let us suppose uh, name comma so we just need to take uh, a bigger string okay so i'll take uh, a string like uh, minneapolis okay so the number of characters are greater than number of characters in hyderabad okay so now let us uh, print similarly here also right now the name corresponding uh, address also i am trying to display along with the name okay so once your usage is completed you can just uh, deallocate whatever memory that is allocated here so free of name using which you can deallocate memory which is allocated here so let us run this code and see the result okay so i'll i'll try to use here okay so already we are printing in a different line only okay so i'll i'll write here slash n and here also slash n now you can see name is hyderabad is at address okay you can observe uh, the corresponding address allocated for this and now name is minneapolis and uh, it is now at address this particular address okay yes sir uh, in this video we'll discuss about uh, basics of structures so what is meant by a structure what is meant by a structure so you can observe uh, generally a structure is considered as a collection of uh, different data items under a common name okay so here we mainly collect uh, different data items so all these data items will be belonging to different type okay so let us uh, consider the general syntax of this structure okay so if you observe the general uh, syntax of structure we have to start with a keyword called struct so struct is the keyword used to write a structure followed by structure name you have to specify the structure corresponding name here and after that inside this structure you have to specify different members of the structure and these members can be belonging to different uh, data types like for example i'm considering a data type and then member 1 so this member 1 is belonging to one particular data type and similarly we can define uh, another member belonging to another data type so this is member 2 okay and so on now data type member n you can consider uh, member n okay so like this uh, different different data members uh, okay belonging to different data types uh, can be defined here so let me show you an example for a structure declaration so here uh, consider uh, an example of a employee structure okay so i am going to define uh, the structure for employee 
so let us uh, define here employee corresponding structure like uh, struct followed by structure name so consider name of the structure as uh, employee employee is representing the name of the structure okay and there are different data items like uh, employee number is representing uh, one data member okay so next also every employee will have a name right and you have to define that name like uh, car name okay so let us suppose i am using 50 here car name of 50 okay and similarly every employee receives salary so that can be defined as uh, another uh, data item okay which is uh, member inside this structure so like this uh, we can actually define the employee corresponding structure now once you define the structure of the employee okay you can create a variable for this particular structure so how can you create a variable for this structure is uh, so use this uh, struct employee and start defining a variable so just like uh, for integer data type you write index similarly i want uh, a variable which is of struct employee type that's why you have to define struct employee x okay so now let's see how this memory will be allocated for this particular variable x which is of structure employee type okay so let's see here uh, the memory occupied will be like this first if you look at uh, employee number okay so this employee number is belonging to integer data type okay this is employee number let us suppose a integer data type is occupying four bytes of memory okay and then uh, so this is uh, character type which is a string right and it is going to occupy a uh, total uh, 50 characters which means uh, each character will be occupying one byte so this is going to take uh, 50 bytes of memory okay so and then coming to floating point uh, variable called salary so here floating point type will be occupying four bytes of memory okay so overall if you observe uh, x uh, how much memory this is going to occupy is uh, nothing but size of x right so i can write uh, size of x is equal to okay 4 plus 50 plus 4 which is going to be 58 bytes so this is uh, representing the size of uh, a structure variable called x okay now whenever you want to basically declare uh, multiple variables under the same structure okay so you can also write for example if I want to declare multiple variables uh, instead of single variable like X so I can write struct employee okay here you can start declaring X comma Y comma Z X comma Y comma Z just like this okay so another way of uh, declaring this uh, structure variable will be right after defining the structure you can specify the variable name okay so let me show you here for example again uh, we are considering uh, the same structure like uh, employee structure so in this employee structure considering a uh, different uh, data members like uh, employee number then considering the uh, name of the employee 
and then salary of the employee like float salary and here we have to specify x okay so this represents uh, here you can specify anything like it can be any variable name so struct employee x represents axis of uh, type called employee structure okay so just like this now whenever you want to access any member inside this structure so so this is another way of declaring and uh, no matter where you declare whether you are declaring here or writing again struct employee x semicolon so anyway you want to access ultimately the members of the structure so these are all members of the structure right so how can we access the member of the structure so this can be done with the help of uh, the corresponding uh, syntax which is a structure name okay the syntax will be structure name dot member name structure name dot member name okay so this is the general syntax for uh, accessing the member inside the structure now let us consider this example okay since uh, x is the variable under this employee structure you can access its corresponding members like uh, x dot e number you can write in order to access the employee number okay and similarly x dot uh, name you can write in order to access this uh, name inside the employee structure and similarly x dot salary so overall you can observe the operator which is used to access the member inside the structure is dot operator okay just like this now coming to initialization okay so how do we initialize this structure so coming to compile time initialization so you can initialize all the list of values belonging to that structure so this is going to be compile time initialization okay now consider this compile time initialization like uh, struct employee so under this employee we have taken total of three members like employee number and then uh, name of the employee followed by salary of the employee okay so now you can observe uh, we are considering a variable under this type and start initializing uh, this at compile time struct employee x is equal to what are the list of values uh, that you can assign here first one is employee number let us suppose employee number is one okay and uh, what is the name of the employee consider john is name of the employee okay so float salary so consider uh, twelve thousand uh, dollars as the salary of john per month okay just like this now this is clearly a compile time initialization right so which means uh, x is the member x is the variable and uh, you can observe all the members of this structure are initialized like this one john 12000 okay so let's see here uh, this is going to be a structure okay and it contains uh, different like uh, e number employee number okay next one is name okay and next one is salary so you can observe uh, the name of the employee okay employee number and salary all these members are belonging to the 
structure variable x so one will be stored here okay and john will be stored here and then 12000 will be stored here okay this is how these values get stored inside the members of the structure variable okay and uh, let me show you different operations that you can perform uh, when you are working with structures okay so if you are considering the same structure here okay so what are the different operations that you can perform on this structure is uh, first one is uh, i will consider a variable of this struct employee type so this is going to be struct employee space x okay now this is going to be employee number right so you can access its corresponding uh, member with the help of dot operator so this is going to be x dot e number is equal to 1 for example okay so immediately what happens uh, employee number becomes 1 here suppose i want to store name of the employee okay so you can use uh, str cpy in order to copy the name like uh, x dot name you can use x dot name comma you can specify the name just like john you can specify the name here and store it okay and similarly you can also assign the salary of the employee by writing x dot salary is equal to 12000 okay clear so this is one way of uh, initialization or storing values okay now i'll show you another operation here so another operation is you can copy the structure okay into another variable so let us consider here uh, i'm taking a struct employee okay variable is uh, x and initializing its corresponding values like 1 comma john comma 12000 and i'm taking another structure variable called y now you can store this x into y y is equal to x so this will copy the entire structure content that is stored here inside x variable into variable y which is of struct employee type okay and whenever you want to basically obtain the size of a structure variable you can still get okay so i'll show you with an example here uh, consider the same structure of uh, employee okay i'm using uh, struct employee x okay and also we are using a variable called size int size now i want to compute the size of this structure so you can write size is equal to with the help of size of operator size of x you can find and store it inside variable size okay so this is one operation and next whenever you want to basically get the address of this structure you can access the address of this structure variable so you can get it by writing the address of x okay just like this so now let us consider uh, an example and we'll start uh, initializing the structure in any of these ways uh, and start displaying the content by accessing the members of this structure okay 
So let us consider here in the program, I'm going to consider a main function. So inside this uh, main function, okay, you can actually declare uh, a structure here or if you want you can declare structure above this. So let me declare here struct. So for example, I'm using uh, a different structure here like struct student, student corresponding structure and uh, student will have roll number. So this is one variable and then uh, name of 50 okay and then percentage so percentage of marks obtained by the student so these are the different uh, members of the structure I have taken in this example okay now let us uh, consider a variable called x under this student structure so we can start initializing here okay so starting with the uh, roll number okay and name percentage now you can access uh, each member of this structure with the help of uh, dot operator okay so let me display here roll number is percentage d here you are trying to display student corresponding details right uh, roll number is accessible with the help of uh, x dot roll number okay x dot roll number okay now similarly we can display the name okay student name is percentage s you can display the student corresponding name by writing so x dot name isn't it now similarly we can access percentage of marks obtained by the student okay percentage of marks is percentage f you can use and display like this x dot percentage okay so let's run this code and see the result so you can observe here clearly roll number is one student name is Alex and percentage of marks is 99 like this so now we'll discuss about uh, array of structures uh, why because uh, in general uh, whenever you want to basically store uh, details of one particular student then you can simply write uh, one variable okay like uh, struct student x suppose you want to store details of uh, two students then you can write like this struct student x comma y but what happens when you want to basically store details of 20 students okay so then you can write uh, x of 20 like this okay clear now let us consider uh, a variable here okay i comma n in order to basically 
access the members of this structure okay with the help of a loop variable so different different students are there right uh, there are 20 students so for each student you have to access uh, okay so for this purpose uh, we can consider a loop variable i and n must be representing a number of students let us suppose out of 20 students you want to store details of uh, only 10 students then you can take that n value at runtime isn't it okay so let us uh, implement this code here okay so first uh, i'll prompt the user basically to enter number of students okay you can prompt the user to enter number of students okay so once the number of students uh, okay data you have entered then you have to store that inside a variable so let us suppose uh, n is the variable so you can store that inside a variable n okay now we can prompt the user to basically enter details of uh, students so enter percentage d student details okay so it means whatever n value you have taken the same number of students corresponding details you have to enter here okay so using for loop uh, we can actually read details of uh, each member for one particular student okay which means uh, for one particular i value i less than n i plus plus now you can start reading here using scanf statement uh, okay so very first detail is related to roll number right you can use percentage d for this okay and then percentage uh, s can be used for uh, name and percentage f can be used for uh, floating point type percentage okay so let's use here uh, address of uh, x of i dot roll number okay dot roll number comma okay x of i dot name and then uh, percentage so this can be denoted as uh, address of x of i dot percentage okay so now we need to uh, display the student corresponding details here uh, okay so printf student details you have to display here okay so in order to read you are using scanf statement but in order to display you have to use printf statement here right so let's uh, use here instead of scanf printf statement and to display the content you have to use uh, without address symbol because address will give you the location corresponding address if you remove it the content inside this location will be displayed okay so let us uh, compile and run this code now it is prompting you to enter number of students for example number of students are entered as three now you are asked to enter three student corresponding details okay so first corresponding to one student you start entering like roll number okay and percentage next similarly for the second student you can enter okay similarly for uh, third student okay 
now you just need to basically use the the slash and when you are iterating and displaying the content here okay and also i'll use a slash t here between uh, roll number name and also for between name and percentage uh, so let's uh, run this now enter number of students i have entered number of students as three so first student details and then uh, second student details okay and third student details uh, like this now you can see the details here student details uh, okay as it is we are able to get the result so similarly you can also give more students corresponding details uh, here okay for example if you want to give uh, 10 students corresponding details you can give similarly up to 20 students uh, you can allocate right okay so this is how you can start uh, using uh, array in order to uh, represent the structure that is uh, this is a concept of array of structures okay so now let us consider uh, for the same example I want to search uh, one particular student corresponding name whether that student is available in the list of student details or not okay so how can I search here is uh, I'm not going to disturb this code first of all uh, this is clearly student details uh, reading and this is student details displaying right so anyhow we require this code of uh, reading the data of students and also displaying the data of the students okay now we need to prompt the user to basically enter name of the student to be searched okay so let us consider uh, a string here so yes name of okay i'm considering a student name here okay and uh, you start reading student corresponding name and then you start searching uh, that name inside this given uh, list of details of the students so for this purpose uh, first we require uh, a printf statement uh, to basically read the name of the student okay so enter student name to be searched okay now using scanf statement scanf percentages you can start reading the name of this student that you want to search for so once the name of the student is taken now we need to write uh, a for loop so that you can uh, search name by name okay and check whether the given name is available or not so initially i will consider a variable called flag so initial value of flag is zero so whenever this flag value is modified to one immediately we can uh, display that the name is found okay so let's write a for loop here i equal to zero i less than n because there are n number of students corresponding details available now within this for loop uh, you can start checking by comparing here str cmp of uh, so first you need to compare uh, x of i dot name okay so compare this with the uh, s name which you have taken at runtime if suppose this is going to return a value of zero which means uh, the name is found yes or no so when the name is found you can immediately modify this flag value okay when the name is found you can modify flag value to one and uh, writing the break statement to move the control out of this particular loop okay so 
Now, we can actually check here uh, whether the student name is found or not. Okay. So, we don't need this code right now to display student details. Okay. So, if you want, uh, I can use here the student corresponding details uh, displaying. Okay. And finally, we will check whether this flag value is 0 or 1. If suppose this uh, flag value is 1, in this case, uh, we can display clearly student name is found. Okay. So that is uh, percentage S is found. Okay. And name of the student is uh, stored in S name. Suppose if this condition is false, then using the else block, uh, we can start printing uh, student name is not found. That is percentage S is not found. Okay. Just like this. Okay. Now let's run this code and see the result. Uh, for strcmp, yeah, we need to include its corresponding header file, right? Uh, which is uh, hash include string dot h header file. Yeah. So enter number of students. Uh, this time I have entered number of students as three. Okay. So Alex and percentage is 99, 2, name is Bob, percentage is 98, 3, okay. So, I'll consider John and percentage is 97. Now, you want to search for a student name like Bob. I want to search whether Bob is available in the list of student details or not. And you can observe uh, clearly, okay. It finally displays Bob is found. So what happens when the student name is not available in the list of student details? In such case, it will display a student name is not found. Okay. So consider the same example. Uh, 1 LX 99. Okay. 2 Bob 98. 3 John 97. Now I want to search a student name called Clark. Okay. So you can observe Clark is not found. Okay. So this is how you can apply search operation by checking each and every name in the entire array of structures. Okay. This is how it will work. So consider uh, here, next concept is uh, array within structures. Array within structures. You can also use uh, an array inside the structure. Okay. So let us suppose uh, I am considering uh, a sample structure of a student where we want to store uh, marks obtained by the student in six different subjects uh, where you have to consider writing a array within the structure. So the example will be like writing a student corresponding structure. So this is a struct student. Okay. Inside this consider uh, roll number which is of integer type okay and then uh, name of this student which is a string here next uh, consider uh, marks obtained by the student in uh, different subjects like consider there are six different subjects so marks of six so this is how you can actually declare a structure of a student which contains an array.
so that is why array within structures okay so now let us uh, implement a program related to it uh, where i will make use of uh, an array inside the structure okay so let me uh, take a different members inside this structure also remove this code okay now consider marks obtained by student in different subjects like uh, marks of six okay and also some of the marks okay int sum okay and also consider uh, percentage of marks obtained by the student uh, so float percentage uh, okay now inside this main function i'll consider uh, an array of this structure called a student structure so struct student x of 20 okay also consider uh, loop variables uh, i and j okay so i is used to iterate uh, here and j to iterate uh, within this structure containing member like marks okay so first i will uh, read the value of n representing the number of students uh, okay so this is uh, enter number of students okay so once you enter the number of students uh, using scanf statement uh, you have to store it inside a variable like n okay now using for loop uh, we can iterate okay and read also display so for i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus okay now let us uh, print here so i'll prompt the user to enter some details like uh, roll number okay name of the student like this and after that you have to read uh, marks obtained by the student in six subjects six different subjects okay so let's do this uh, enter roll number and also the name of student okay so first thing is uh, a reading roll number which is of uh, percentage d okay so i'll use here so using scanf statement we can start reading this values right uh, percentage d can be used for roll number and percentage s can be used for uh, name of the student okay so this is going to be address of x of i dot roll number and also x of i dot name okay now once the name of the student and roll number of the student is taken you can ask the user to enter marks obtained in six different subjects okay enter marks obtained in six subjects okay So here first consider uh, displaying the name okay that student corresponding marks you want to enter right okay 
now using a for loop here j equal to 0 j less than 6 j plus plus okay now using scanf statement we can read right scanf percentage d okay address of x of i dot okay you need to read this marks so this is marks of j okay so this is how we can implement for loop in order to read roll number name of the student and also marks obtained in the six subjects so here i am using j loop to iterate for marks of six subjects you can see marks of j because already we have declared a marks as an integer array inside the structure called student okay so now we want to find the total marks obtained by the student okay and also how much uh, percentage uh, is obtained by the student so this you can calculate and also store a respective total marks in a variable called sum and percentage of marks obtained in a variable called PR okay so let us start uh, sum and percentage calculation okay so let us implement here uh, what will be the outer loop you can see okay so again it is going to be a for loop right okay to iterate from i equal to 0 to i less than n so because working with uh, each student corresponding marks okay so initially the student total marks i am taking as 0 okay but later we have to compute uh, by adding all the marks obtained in six different subject for one particular student so for this we require this loop right j equal to 0 j less than 6 j plus plus now using uh, x of i corresponding sum here so x of i dot sum is equal to x of i dot sum plus okay or you can write like this so marks obtained in each subject uh, this is going to be marks of j x of i dot marks of j okay now once you obtain our total marks uh, summation for all the six subjects we got uh, total marks into sum here then we need to find out or calculate this uh, percentage uh, obtained so x of i dot percentage so you can see which is a floating point type where you can actually type convert the x of i corresponding sum and divided by 6 okay so x of i dot sum And this is going to be divided with 6. Okay. Now, finally, we need to display the total marks obtained by the student and also the percentage of marks obtained by the student. So, where we have already calculated with the help of this, right? okay sum of marks and also percentage of marks so let us suppose i want to display uh, directly these values like roll number i'll display okay and after the roll number i'll display name of the student and after the name i'll display percentage obtained by the student okay now using for loop uh, we can iterate right for i equal to 0 i less than n 
I plus plus okay so you can start uh, printing these details like roll number name and percentage uh, so consider here percentage uh, D for the roll number and uh, percentage uh, yes for the name and uh, percentage uh, F for the amount of percentage obtained by the student okay so let's write each of this here uh, x of i dot roll number okay and uh, also x of i dot name okay and finally percentage x of i dot percentage okay we can display so let us uh, run this code and see the result enter number of students uh, for example I am taking details of two students uh, enter roll number and name of student one okay roll number is one name of student is Alex okay so marks in six uh, total six subjects uh, obtained by Alex okay so let us enter the marks obtained by Alex across these six subjects. Okay. So consider three different total six subjects, right? So corresponding marks are like this. And then enter roll number and name of the student too. Okay. So this is uh, two and then Bob I'm entering enter marks in six subjects of Bob okay so you have to enter uh, marks obtained by Bob in six subjects okay so consider 99 89 79 69 okay 81 95 now you can observe here uh, roll number name percentage we are printing First roll number is uh, 1, okay, and the name is Alex. Percentage of marks obtained by Alex is 83.66, okay. And uh, if you consider another student, Bob, he has got 85.33. So this is how we are calculating the percentage of marks obtained by each student after reading marks of each student across six different subjects okay and this is how it will work yes let us discuss about uh, structure within another structure so this concept is uh, structure within a structure So many times uh, we want to write uh, a structure inside another structure. This is also known as a uh, nested structure. So let me show you an example. For example, if you are trying to write uh, student corresponding structure, student corresponding structure, and uh, you start writing different members of this structure, like uh, roll number of this student is one mem one member and second member is a uh, name of the student and similarly third member is a uh, percentage of marks obtained by the student and then fourth member is a uh, DOA that is a uh, date of admission of the student okay date of admission of the student so now if you consider uh, again this uh, corresponding structure okay so you need to include its corresponding members okay 
so let me show you here uh, there are different members of this structure like what is the date date of admission contains a uh, day details and also in which month okay also what is the year so this is representing a uh, date of admission containing different uh, members like day month year and it is part of another structure called student so how you can actually implement this in the form of a structure let's see now so first uh, you have to specify the date corresponding structure because you are using this uh, date structure as part of student structure so struct date and inside this date structure we include uh, different members like uh, int day okay also int month then int year okay so this is the date structure now consider a student structure so inside this student structure consider a role number of the student this is one member and also consider uh, name of the student so this is uh, car name of uh, 80 for example and then uh, percentage of the student so this is a uh, float percentage and finally date of admission for the student which can be represented as a struct date corresponding variable like doa okay and uh, here we'll write uh, like this okay so now let us consider uh, how to access the members of the innermost structure so you can observe student structure contains a date structure now this date structure has got different uh, members right okay so how can you access this is uh, first you have to specify the external structure specify the external structure corresponding variable external structure corresponding variable dot now specify the internal structure corresponding variable internal structure variable okay so dot write down the variable name okay so for example uh, you can see let us suppose i have taken a struct student x okay so x represents the external structure corresponding variable dot internal structure corresponding variable is doa so this can be written as a doa dot and i want to access day so x dot doa dot day so this is how you can start accessing here okay so let us uh, implement uh, an example related to this okay so first uh, i will consider uh, a date structure so this is a struct date and inside this date structure consider a day okay also another member called month and then year these are the different members of the date structure okay now also consider a student structure So this student structure has got uh, different members like uh, role number, okay. Also name, okay. 
and what is the percentage uh, float percentage uh, okay then struct date DOA okay so this is a date of admission for the student okay so now let us consider uh, creating a variable for this student structure inside the main function so you can write uh, struct student x okay now you can prompt this uh, user to enter the details uh, like enter roll number okay also name also percentage and then date of admission the, these particular details uh, you must enter okay now using scanf statement we can read these details percentage d percentage s okay so we are reading a roll number then name and also percentage okay so before reading percentage uh, uh, let us suppose uh, you started reading uh, yeah fine we'll read percentage first and then you can start reading uh, the date of admission details like day month year okay so again those details will be integer so percentage d percentage d percentage d okay so first you are reading a roll number right so x dot roll number which means you have to use address x dot roll number okay and after this you have to read name so this is going to be x dot name okay and then floating point value which is percentage this is a address of x dot percentage right okay and then uh, date of uh, admission so like uh, day month year okay these details right so this is going to be roll number okay uh, already we have taken roll number name and percentage now you have to read day month and year okay so this will give like this address of x dot okay doa dot okay so first one is uh, day and similarly you start reading uh, address of x dot doa dot month okay and also address of x dot doa dot year so these details we are reading here and finally you just need to print okay the details so let us suppose i want to print uh, each detail one by one like roll number of the student so roll number can be accessed with percentage d right so you can use percentage d and then uh, start displaying the roll number okay x dot roll number and then similarly you can display name of the student so this is going to be percentage uh, yes and here uh, x dot name you have to display and then percentage so this will display percentage okay so x dot percentage okay now we need to display corresponding uh, date of uh, admission so i'll write doa is equal to i want to display that in the form of a date format so where i can write percentage d 
slash percentage d slash another percentage d and here in the first percentage d you have to display x dot doa dot okay day similarly next percentage d you have to display x dot doa dot month and later x dot doa dot year okay just like this so let us uh, run this code and see the result enter roll number name percentage and date of admission for example i am entering roll number as one name as uh, alex and the percentage as uh, 97 and date of admission as uh, suppose 12 5 20 22 okay so you can observe here uh, roll number is 1 name is alex and then percentage is 97 date of admission is clearly displayed in the form of date okay so this is how you can implement so in this lecture uh, we will discuss about uh, how we can pass the structure from one function to another function okay so let us discuss here clearly there are totally three methods uh, where you can actually pass the entire structure from one function to the another function so there are three methods where you can pass a uh, structure from one function to another function and the very first method is uh, passing individual members of the structure as parameter to the function okay so where you can call this as uh, passing members of the structure individually passing members of a structure individually And second one is uh, we can pass the entire structure at a time. Passing entire structure. And third method is uh, here you will pass the address of the structure. Okay. So passing address of the structure so where you will basically consider the address of the structure variable as the parameter okay now let us focus on the first one that is uh, passing members of the structure individually so for this purpose i will consider uh, first example that is uh, considering a point structure okay and in that point structure uh, we can actually pass the individual members of the point structure as parameter to the function so let me first uh, define the header file now inside the main function so we can create a structure variable first we need to create a structure of type point struct point and here i'm considering uh, two points one is int x the other one is int y okay so struct point i'm considering p here now p is equal to let us suppose uh, 
we want to consider here point P is equal to a list of values like 10 comma 15 okay now the idea is to display this uh, point corresponding values okay that is a uh, point corresponding x value and point corresponding y value okay so usually if you want to print inside this main function you can print like this x is equal to percentage d slash n y is equal to percentage d slash n p dot x comma p dot y okay now let us run this code and see the result x equal to 10 and y equal to 15 this is how we generally print within the main function now i want to pass this to another function let us suppose uh, function name is uh, display function for this display function according to the first method so you can see here you have to pass the members of the structure individually it means for this structure there are two members uh, one is uh, x the other one is y so let us uh, take two parameters uh, int x comma int y here now inside this uh, function we can display x and y values uh, so i'm just uh, using here display x value and also display y value okay now let us call this function display function so display of first we can pass p dot x and then you can pass p dot y okay so these are all individual members of this structure right one is p dot x the other one is p dot y we are passing them into variables x and y and then printing x y values isn't it now let us run this code and see the result you can see x equal to 10 and y equal to 15 so only the thing is we have used the first mechanism that is uh, passing the individual members of this structure as parameters so the structure contains uh, individual members like uh, x and y now those uh, individual members uh, p dot x and p dot y are passed as parameters and they are stored inside uh, x and y for the display function and later i am displaying x y values okay so this is the first method now let us uh, consider another method that is second method so according to the second method you can see we are asked to pass the entire structure as parameter if you are passing the entire structure as parameter you have to pass the corresponding uh, structure variable name as parameter okay so let us uh, create here okay So first uh, you can see here uh, this is my display function okay now display of okay this time you can pass the structure variable as parameter to the function and the name of the function is display function and the parameter is uh, structure variable name called p p is passed as parameter now let us define this display function okay so display function and let us uh, create a structure variable and this must be of the same type so struct point p okay and now we can start accessing the content inside this particular structure so using printf uh, you can actually display here x equal to percentage d slash n 
and then y is equal to percentage d slash n okay so this is going to be p dot x comma p dot y okay so let's run this code and see the result x equal to 10 and y is equal to 15 okay so if you observe here i have used struct point corresponding variable p and its values are 10 and 15 now we are calling the function display and passing p as parameter okay now for this display function the same p is copied here and then we are accessing its content with help of uh, dot operator p dot x and p dot y so if you observe this way of uh, passing the entire structure okay so you can observe entire structure corresponding variable is passed as parameter to the display function and now you are accessing uh, its content uh, with help of dot operator p dot x and p dot y okay so this comes under second method now let us focus on the third method so the third method is passing address of the structure variable how do you pass address of the structure variable okay so this can be done uh, here for example instead of passing the structure variable name you can pass the address of the structure as parameter okay address of this structure so consider uh, display function and uh, in order to hold the address the variable must be pointer variable and the data type should be equal to this data type right so which means uh, struct point star ptr so that is capable of pointing to the structure variable p okay so now let us print this value here uh, first x is equal to percentage d slash n y is equal to percentage d slash n okay ptr arrow x ptr arrow y so x equal to 10 y is equal to 15 you can see using pointer you are accessing the content ptr arrow x and ptr arrow y okay just like this so like this there are three different ways where you can access the entire members of this structure as parameters like uh, you can see here so in the very first method what happened uh, we have passed the members of the structure individually in the second method we have passed the entire structure variable in the third method we have taken the address of the structure variable okay so when you are passing the address of the structure variable you can access with the help of pointer variable okay like this now consider the concept of uh, pointers and structures uh, so first we will consider uh, pointer to a structure so using pointer you can access the members of the structure okay so in the same way here how do you access the members of this structure using pointer okay so generally you can declare uh, a pointer under one particular structure okay using this syntax here uh, syntax can be written as uh, structure name you can write uh, structure name and then followed by pointer variables uh, like ptr1 star ptr1 star ptr2 and so on like this 
and uh, you can also access the members of this structure using the pointer variable okay so like struct pointer variable using which you can access the members of the structure where you can write the member name here okay so using arrow operator you can access uh, the members of the structure with the help of pointer variable okay so let me consider uh, an example for this uh, so first uh, i'll include the header file here and also we'll consider uh, an employee structure so this can be defined as a struct employee and inside this uh, members of the structure are uh, employee number then name of the employee okay you can define it as uh, name of 80 and then define the float salary okay so this is the employee structure now we can access the content of this structure with the help of a pointer by first creating a variable for this structure type and then creating a pointer in order to access the content okay so in the main function i am considering uh, the employee structure corresponding variable struct employee x is equal to 1 comma okay so i am considering a name and also salary okay and now let us consider uh, the pointer variable okay i'll consider uh, xp as the pointer variable in order to access this uh, structure okay so how can we assign this uh, pointer to this particular structure variable is simple here uh, xp is equal to address of x you can access the address of x uh, using this xp pointer now you can display each of this uh, with the help of xp pointer okay so that is uh, you can write employee number is equal to percentage d okay so you can actually access this employee number like uh, xpro e number okay and similarly if you want to display let us suppose uh, employee name so employee name is equal to similarly percentage yes and use this pointer to access the content which is name of the employee xpro name and similarly salary of the employee can be displayed salary is equal to percentage uh, okay so if you are taking a floating point type this is uh, percentage f and you can access this uh, xpro sal okay so using which you can access the content now if you look at this example clearly you are first creating a, a variable x which is of uh, type structure struct employee type and it contains total of uh, three parts so very first one is integer location this is representing a e number and the second one is name of the employee which is represented as name and third one is salary of the employee now you can observe the number is one and name is uh, rama and then salary is 
okay now the entire structure will have a base address let us suppose the base address of the structure is 2000 okay now we are passing this base address as uh, okay and you are just taking the address of x into a pointer variable called xp so you can consider xp being the pointer variable which can hold address of x that is uh, 2000 okay just like this now you can access employee number e number you can access and you can display xp ro e number xp ro e number represents uh, one here and later xp ro name so it will access rama and then xp ro salary so this will access this uh, two lakhs okay so everything will be displayed one after the other here so this is concept of uh, using pointer to access the content of this structure okay now let us discuss about uh, accessing or placing pointer inside this structure okay you can also consider it as a structure containing pointers structure containing pointers okay so how can we write this structure containing pointers is a struct so let us define the character as a structure struct character okay and inside this character structure i will take uh, one character variable like char c and another one is pointer so char star cp okay which is representing the character pointer okay now what you can do is uh, you can inside the main function you can start creating a variable for this particular structure and initialize the content okay so let me uh, consider uh, the main function respectively okay so for this example i'll take uh, main function and inside this main function we can take a variable which is of uh, struct character type so struct character x i am considering now let us take a variable of type character so you can take char ch is equal to a okay so x dot c you can initialize x dot c equal to ch okay and also you can initialize a x dot cp x dot cp is equal to address of ch okay now let us uh, print this uh, ch value let us suppose you want to print uh, ch value using a uh, percentage c okay so you can see ch value is currently stored inside x dot c so you can display x dot c content and similarly address you can display the address here so address is percentage u okay x dot cp x dot cp because x dot cp is currently holding the address okay now let's see how this is going to work here first of all uh, we have created a character structure and this character structure has got uh, two parts so this is character structure okay and it contains two parts one is c the other one is pointer called cp okay yes or no? 
then this is of type uh, you can see the corresponding variable is x and this is of type struct character and this is going to represent uh, x dot c and this is representing x dot cp so we are storing ch content you can observe ch is currently holding a character a and x dot c equal to ch represents here also there will be a okay and ch will have some address for example 3000 is the address so x dot cp is equal to address of ch so x dot cp will be holding address of ch which is 3000 okay and finally you can observe uh, we are displaying x dot c content and x dot cp content okay just like this so this is how you can actually make use of a pointer by declaring inside this structure okay so next coming to self referential structure and this is very important especially we often use this self referential concept uh, while working with the data structures uh, so what is meant by self referential structure any structure that contains the pointer which is pointing to the same structure okay or similar structure variable so in that case we go for uh, self referential structure so i can say here there is a structure and it contains a pointer which is uh, pointing to the same type okay structure containing pointer pointing to same type okay pointing to same type so this is considered as a self referential structure okay now let us consider uh, the example for this self referential structure okay so we can take uh, a node structure let us suppose a uh, struct node and in this node structure we can consider uh, two parts uh, one is uh, data part which is of integer type and the other one is uh, struct node okay star next for example okay so you can observe here uh, this is the node structure okay and it contains total of uh, two parts one is data part okay and it is of integer type the other one is next part which is a pointer pointing to similar node okay so this is known as a self referential structure okay so next one is uh, concept of unions uh, so the general syntax uh, or the concept of union okay or definition of the union is uh, somewhat similar to structure but there is a difference in memory allocation with structure and union okay so let's see here uh, how do you define a union union is representing a collection of uh, different data items under a common name okay or we can write uh, grouping of uh, different data items different data items under a common name okay and it is considered as a union okay so if you consider the general uh, syntax of the union you can write uh, simply union followed by 
union name or some tag name okay and inside this union uh, you can define the members of the union like uh, data type member one okay this is uh, member one similarly data type member two and so on okay you can see data type member n so these are the different uh, members uh, inside this union okay and now whenever you want to create uh, a variable under this particular union type so you can create such variable okay so where you can write uh, union space uh, union name so whatever union name that you are considering okay and then followed by variable suppose you have multiple variables in that case uh, you can start creating multiple variables like uh, variable 1 variable 2 and so on like this okay so this is how you can define now let us consider uh, how we can define uh, a sample union here example so consider uh, union demo i'm just giving you a demo of union so there are uh, totally three members here car ch is one member then int i is representing one member and then float f is representing another member okay just like this so here you can observe uh, how much memory will be allocated for this union so union follows uh, sharing of memory unlike uh, structures in structures each member will be occupied or placed in a separate memory whereas in case of uh, union each member okay will be sharing the memory with other members uh, in the union so consider uh, demo union demo x so if you consider uh, x is the union variable okay and this is going to occupy a total size of four bytes okay so let us consider character is occupying one byte okay integer is occupying two bytes and uh, floating point type is occupying four bytes okay so you can see here uh, if you are considering uh, this union f is going to occupy this four bytes okay and uh, ch or i is occupying uh, basically this two bytes and ch is occupying uh, one byte okay so you can observe uh, this is occupying uh, clearly four bytes of memory okay and this is occupying uh, two bytes of memory and this is occupying one byte of memory okay just like this now the entire content is shared here okay so that is why since it is sharing only one data member can be stored and accessed okay at a time so you can't uh, initialize uh, all the elements at a time even though you are successful in initializing uh, you won't be able to get the desired results that is a problem with uh, this as they are sharing the common memory okay so i'll show you with the example okay so let us consider uh, i am taking a point union okay union point
so in this union point i am taking uh, two points here one is uh, x the other one is y okay now in the main function you can consider uh, a variable of type uh, union so consider uh, union point p so let us uh, initialize p dot x is equal to 10 and then p dot y is equal to 20 now if you are trying to display the content here printf uh, percentage d percentage d p dot x comma p dot y so in that case what will be the output that is going to be generated here okay so here p is the point union right okay p is the point union and this point union will have uh, two fields okay but the problem is this is a union so which means uh, it will share the memory so x should be stored here and also y is stored here okay so they both will be sharing the same memory common memory which is equal to size of integer suppose if you are considering size of integer as two bytes or four bytes whatever it is uh, then this x will be stored first and then y will be stored next okay so here that is what we are doing right p dot x is equal to 10 okay so when you store p dot x is equal to 10 then after this statement immediately you will see 10 is stored here and then p dot y is equal to 20 so which means uh, now in the same position p dot y that is 20 will be stored now when you are printing p dot x uh, it will access 20 and even p dot y it will be 20 here because uh, the latest value is overriding the previous result okay as both the members are occupying the same size both these members are occupying the same size and uh, within the same size uh, one after the other their x are using that particular location okay so let me show you with this example here so first uh, we will include the respective header file okay and also consider union and this uh, point is the name of the union int x and then int y okay so inside this main function inside this main function let us create a variable union point p okay and initialize here p dot x is equal to 10 and then p dot y is equal to 20 now if you start printing here x value and y value okay so x can be displayed like this and then uh, y can be displayed like this so this is going to be p dot x comma p dot y okay so let's print this particular output you can see x is equal to 20 and y equal to 20 why because uh, even though you have initialized p dot x is equal to 10 so since x and y both are sharing the common memory and only one can be stored at a time so the latest value of uh, p dot y which is 20 will be stored over there and when you print you will get 20 and 20 suppose uh, in the next statement uh, 
again uh, if you are initializing p dot x is equal to 30 okay then in this case uh, when you run this code you will get result as uh, x is equal to 30 and y equal to 30 okay just like this okay suppose if you want to access the content uh, of the union correctly then first uh, initialize the member and immediately access its content for example like this x is equal to percentage d slash n and immediately print p dot x okay and after that uh, similarly consider p dot y is equal to 20 and then immediately display this y value y is equal to percentage d slash n p dot y content okay so that uh, you can always uh, initialize one member at a time and then display it okay and then initialize another member and then display it okay so in this case you will be able to see the result right x is equal to 10 and then y is equal to 20 okay now let us uh, discuss about uh, enumerated data type okay so if you consider uh, enumerated data type so how can we basically consider and what is the purpose of this enumerated type so usually whenever you want to consider some list of values okay so you can go for enumerated type let us suppose uh, i want to consider list of values for uh, days then i can consider the list of values like monday tuesday like this okay so in the same way for example i want to consider colors list of colors then you can use this enumerated type okay and uh, consider different colors like uh, blue yellow red and so on okay so what is the general syntax of enumerated type if you consider enumerated type syntax enum and then space consider this identifier and here you start giving different values so this is value 1 this is value 2 and this is so on value n okay clear so now let us consider uh, an example for this so I'll take uh, enum and example is colors okay and here you can define different colors for example black red yellow white green like this these are the different colors okay so by default since you are not assigning any value for black it will take value as zero very first item in the list of items for enum will consider zero if you are not explicitly assigning any value in that case and the next items will be a value which is incremented by one compared to the previous item so here this is going to be 0 plus 1 which is 1 and here it is 1 plus 1 which is 2 and this is 2 plus 1 it will be 3 and then this is going to be 3 plus 1 which is 4 okay so when you start displaying the values like uh, let us suppose I want to simply print 
so printf percentage d red so in that case the output produced will be simply one okay just like this now let us consider uh, another example okay you can also define uh, variables under this uh, enumerated data type so let us consider uh, enum okay for boolean what are the boolean values uh, one is true the other one is false okay boolean this is true and the next one is false okay now we can create variables uh, under this particular type enum boolean so this is uh, enum boolean consider those variables as a t comma f okay so t is for representing true and f is representing false okay so i want to assign t is equal to true okay and similarly f is equal to false i want to assign okay so since by default uh, you can observe uh, the very first value will take zero so that's why it is going to consider zero and then plus one it will consider one okay yes or no now similarly when you want to assign a different value that is also possible so let me consider i don't want to assign a zero for true in that case explicitly you can assign a value here so that value will be like true is equal to one you can assign then you can write false here so this represents a true will be given a value of one and false will be given a value of two okay just like this now let us uh, implement a sample program related to this uh, okay so first uh, we will consider uh, different colors example okay so in the main function suppose uh, int main and here i am considering enumerated type colors okay and what are different list of colors yes or no so those list of colors are uh, for example black red yellow white green okay like this now i'll define uh, variables okay under this particular type enum colors okay so i'll consider variable called favorite color okay now we can start initializing the favorite color okay let us suppose uh, i'm initializing favorite color is equal to green okay now printf we can write uh, like my favorite color is percentage d slash n okay now you can display favorite color okay here you can display favorite color content so let's run this code and see the result okay you can observe my favorite color is 4 okay because uh, green is occupying how much okay green is occupying value of 4 okay so if you want you can write the same here okay because it starts from 0 0 here 1 2 3 and then 4 okay so let's run this code and see the result okay my favorite color is green and its corresponding value is 4 
okay just like this so this is how you can define uh, enumerated type okay and the next one is uh, type def okay so whenever you want to assign a new name to the existing data type so you can go for type def okay so the general syntax of type def will be this is how you will write type def space whatever data type for which you want to assign a new name okay you can write the corresponding new name type def data type new name semicolon okay so let us suppose i want to uh, consider uh, integer data type uh, new name as number then i can write like this uh, type def int and i'll give a new name as number so from next time onwards you don't need to consider uh, int x comma y instead you can write simply number x comma y because you already defined type okay that is a uh, integer name is replaced with now number okay so the same thing will happen here number is considered as uh, integer okay so let us suppose uh, x is equal to 10 and then y is equal to 12 now i want to display here the content okay so which is going to be x is equal to percentage d slash n y is equal to percentage d slash n x comma y okay so let's execute this code and see the result you can see x equal to 10 and y equal to 12 why because uh, x and y are of type number number is representing integer type okay yes or no because uh, according to the syntax uh, we have defined a type defined a data type as new name so int is defined with a new name called number okay so number x equal to 10 and y equal to 12 clear and then we are displaying x y values okay so this is how it will work similarly you can also make use of it uh, while working with uh, structures okay so especially let us suppose i am considering a point structure okay so then i can write uh, struct point okay and here int x and then int y so this is the point structure okay so in this point structure we can create like this a struct point p okay so usually this is how we write isn't it now instead of considering like this you can also make use of a type def and define this uh, struct point with another name type def struct point okay pt so now i am defining pt is equal to p okay that is a uh, pt space p which is representing uh, p is of type struct point okay p is of type struct point so p is equal to 10 comma 12 okay now we can display printf percentage d okay so x is equal to percentage d slash n okay p dot x and similarly printf so y value we are displaying here y equal to percentage uh, d slash n okay p dot y clear then let's uh, execute this and see the result you can see x is equal to 10 y is equal to 12 because uh, once you define uh, type def struct point okay 
the destruct point is now called as pt okay now you just need to use pt space some variable name okay and initialize that variable okay because the structure contains uh, x and y both are of integer type so you can initialize like this and then start displaying x y values p dot x and p dot y okay so this is how you can make use of type def and enum